Oh, sorry about that, Vera. I thought you were a burglar. Oh, sorry. Where have you been? Any road? Well, I've been for a walk, haven't I, with Monica. Well, it's only seven o'clock. And look, I thought exercise was supposed to do you good. You look half dead. Oh, no, no, I'm fine, mate. Fine. Well, at least it wasn't howling all night. See, I told you to get used to being in that shed on its own. Yeah. Well, what do you reckon? I reckon it's lovely. <laughs> Still not too late to tell Rita. Oh, Sal. Don't you think I've gone over it in my head a million times? Well, as long as you're sure. Yeah, I am. About everything. And once me and Ina together properly, What's the matter? Well, what if it's Ian? I'll get it, shall I? Hello? It's Sally. It's Ian. Oh, it's unlucky. Not seeing him before the wedding. Can I take a message? <laughs> he says he loves you and he can't wait to call you Mrs. Bentley. Well, tell him me too. She's. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> All right, see you later. Bye. Oh. oh, he sounds dead excited, like a little boy. Oh, it's going to be all right, Sal. Isn't it? Of course it is. It's going to be fantastic. <laughs> you don't mind if I eat while you smoke? No, not at all. Mm. With no bread. Why do you think I'm having my breakfast in here? What about me? Huh? Sorry, love. I'm skint. Well, you won't want this then, will you? A gas bill? No, I fucking don't. I'll see you over there. Move. <laughs> oh. Curly, can you spare me a minute? I need a favour. Ask and it shall be granted. A fortnight off. Eh? Well, I've got the days owed to me. Starting when? Mm, as soon as. My uncle's died in Bombay. Oh, sorry. My dad wants me to look after the shop for him while he goes to the funeral. Oh, that's a bit rough, isn't it? I mean, your dad taking your brother. No, oh, Vikram's staying here. Well, why can't he look after the shop? Oh, I don't know. Don't you think I'd rather be lying on a beach somewhere in Greece, which is what I'd actually plan for my holiday? Oh, I see, I see. Yeah, I mean, I have to teach you all the fresco know-how so you can steal my business. Am I to take that as a yes? Did I have a choice? Oh, you're a star. Listen, don't be late, all right? Thanks. I don't know. How do we spend so much money on gas? I mean, we're both out at work all day. Hey, is she nipping home in a dinner or something? Yeah, yeah, she does. She goes in and she turns things on just to cost you money. Flaming Nora. Oh, I. Who's this Nora, then? Bit on side? It's from a mate of mine. Yeah, he's had a letter from the benefits agency. Calling him in for an interview. What's my advice like? Well, I hope this uh, mate hasn't been trying to fiddle him. Uh, no, no, he's not like that. Sorry. If he's claiming for something he shouldn't, it'll be a mistake. Accident. Well, they're still doing for fraud, mistake or not. I knew this bloke once. He got six months for working in the bar while he was claiming. Get out of it. Mm. And if your mate's got a track record like yours, he's looking at two years minimum. That's what you do for fun, is it? No, listen, just don't tell my dad. You might think I'm happy. Well, I'll tell you what would make you happy. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you're going to tell me. The chance to make a small fortune. What, you mean I start off with a large one and you turn it into a small one? We are two months away from the biggest party in history, not to mention Christmas, right? Go on. And what, the party's run on? Booze. And you want to buy some? I'm going to take the van over to Cali. I'm going to fill it up, I'm going to bring it back, and I'm, uh, I'm going to make a bomb. Yeah, and as a result, my profits go down the pan. Yours or your dad's, Vink. This is me and you, mate. 50-50. Steve, you can stop right there. Oh, come on. <laughs> no, listen, my dad's going away. All the more reason. Leaving me it? in charge of the shop. Well, even better, then. You can shift the stuff through here, can't you? Just don't put it through the box. I'll never get away with it. Sorry. All right, see yourself. I'll just uh, get somebody else. Hmm. Shame that would have been a laugh. Is it somebody's birthday? Not exactly. Why? 
Well, it's only Monday and you're both having the works. I mean, it's normally Friday, isn't it? Girls' night out on the razzle. <sighs> yeah, but we're trendsetters, me and our Sal, aren't we? <laughs> Something like that. You know, new month, new hairdo. Uh, there's a fella involved somewhere. Now, what makes you think that? I don't know why you even bother with men. I don't live on planet La La. Oh, hello. The honeymoon is well and truly over, isn't it? Yeah. Younger or older or stupid. If there was exams on how to look after a woman, I tell you, they wouldn't even be able to write the name at the top of the page. Oh, talk of the devil. Find you at work. You're not still mad about what I said to your dad, are you? Well, anyway, I'll just come see if you want to give us some lunch. Where have you got in mind? Rovers. <gasps> see? Not a little Italian or a wine bar, the Rovers. Not a clue. I thought you liked Rovers. Actually, I'm... It's my dad! What are you two up to now? No, Johnny. Oh, it's just coincident he turns up the same time as you, is it? Yeah, it really is. What the heck does he think he's playing at? <sighs> Doreen Heavey! Doreen! <laughs> what the hell's going on? Don't try and stop me, our Maxine. I've come for my wife. M Mr. Hay, then. And you can shut it. When it comes to matters of the heart, you're about as much use as a windscreen wiper on a submarine. No, but... Excuse me, Derek. I'm a counsellor. And excuse me, but you're interfering. This is between me and my wife. Dad, will you listen? I'll listen to my wife only. And only then when she says she's coming home with me. On. Keep your nose out, short house. Who is he? Maxime's dad. Doreen, come home! Mr. Heavey! I told you to mind your own. Please. Oh, what? She's at work. Oh. Just like that scene in Pretty Woman. You are. You know, at the end when Richard Gere goes round to Julia Roberts' flat. Oh yeah, in that chauffeur driven limo, when he's waving his brolly like night on his WhatsApp. <laughs> yeah, and she comes to the window with a big smile on her face, like she's got a coat hanger in her mouth. Oh, he's dead romantic. Yeah, now like a lorry driver in Weatherfield in his juggernaut, making a complete pillock of himself. No, no blanket at all, really. Well, at least he's trying. Bless him. Well, if she's got anything about her, she'll milk it for all it's worth. <laughs> What's going on? Oh, um, Maxine's mum and dad, they've had a row or something. I meant with you, dressed like that. You're not sick at all, are you? Well, I was just doing it to make myself feel better. You're going to see that Ian, aren't you? You're even dafter than I thought, and that's saying something. Oh, did you tell her? She was cross enough just thinking I was starving. If she knew where I was going. Oh, Sharon. Hmm. Register of this map of the street, please. What am I doing, Sal? If you're not sure, you don't have to go through with this. What? And where's the good air do a manicure? <laughs> There's no like a man making a fool of himself. Sure a woman is in love. Hey, my les once did some of that, Dan. It was lovely. He sang to me. You don't feel like making me a very happy man, do you? Hey? You don't have to sing to me. Just get him to move his truck. Persuade him. Get oh, yeah. Hey, you. Uh, how much? Uh, just you leave him where he is, let's back to there. Maxine, your mother. He's supposed to be in Clitheroe. Oh, Mum, I'm so pleased to see you. He's got deliveries. 
Clitheroe, Rortenstall and Accrington. Always as of a Monday. Doreen, I love you. Well, can't you talk to me? I won't listen to much. I will not. The man's making an utter fool of himself. Hey, lady, it takes a special blow to make a gesture like that. I'll give him a flaming gesture. Doreen, come on, love. I'm lost without you. Tell him I'm not listening, so we might as well drive that stupid lorry straight into the canal. Remember I proposed to you, Doreen. You liked it then. I'll stay here all night if we have to. I'm going nowhere without you. That was Dad. He's got his flight sorted. Great. Two weeks of freedom. I suppose that's one way of looking at the death of your uncle. Oh, come on, Neats. We hardly knew him. Yeah, even so, Vic. Look, I've got a few things to sort out at work. I'll be back later and give you a hand, all right? She did tell me, you know, Sharon. Told you. About you and her. Ah. Had a good time, you know, mates. Had a laugh. Just mates. Why? What did she say? That you kicked her into touch. For Sally. Oh, it wasn't just for Sally. Oh. So you didn't like Sharon then? Didn't get on? No, no. Liked her. A lot. She's a great girl. You'll be happy, I'm sure. So, um... Did you and her, uh, Get very close? Close? Oh, um... Not really. Didn't she say? Well, I didn't like to ask. I think we both knew really deep down there was always someone else. Hmm. Sally. No, no, you. For Sharon. I think that's why... why it didn't work out. What did she say? Nothing exactly, but... But you know what happened to us before? Yeah, um, Sally said. That Natalie... Big mistake. Still history, eh? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. Keep you warm, Dad. Thanks, Sir Maxine. Should have been in the army. You're only encouraging him. Mum, it's freezing out here. Then tell him to go home. Tell her I'm going nowhere. Yes, sir. Tell him I'm not deaf. Look, what is this about when he proposed? Go on. Tell her. I'm not talking to him. It was different then. He only had a van. Went all over in it when we were caught in. Had a mattress in the back. Rill, Blundell Sands. Remember that weekend at Lytham St Anne's? We walked on the beach for miles, couldn't find the sea. Tide were that far out. What's that got to do with him proposing? Silly beggar turned up outside your nans one day with Marry Me, Doreen Althway, written on the outside. <laughs> all the neighbours were laughing at him. Yeah, but you did. More fool me, eh? Oi! You still here? I've got a delivery coming. I've told you once, Shorthouse. Sling your hook. Right. I'm calling the police. Uh. Dad, why don't you come inside? Here's where I'm staying, love. And if your mother doesn't want me arrested, she knows what to do. Ian, I'm sorry, taxi couldn't get through for flipping great lorry parked in street. Hi, Danny. And traffic were awful. Well, well, don't worry, you're here now, all right? Sorry. Problem? Don't ask. Everything all right here? I can get the third degree about me and Sharon, yeah. What? I'll tell you later. Mr Bentley, Miss Gaskell, I'm Diana Rowley, the registrar. If you'd like to come through. Are these your witnesses? Witnesses? Sounds like a crime, doesn't it? Are you two still not speaking? Tell him I've nothing to say. Tell her. Oh, shut up! Pair of you. Mummy, you know you can sort this out in a second. I don't know, love. I feel like a budgie let out of its cage. Instead of looking at the birds outside the window, I can get out to join them. 
Yeah, and within ten minutes, next door's cat will have eaten you. Look, I've got somebody under the dryer. Will you just sort this out, Mum? I've moved on, Maxine. I've been waiting years to do this. I'm still not moving. Ian and Sharon, I now pronounce you husband and wife. Do you need me to say it? You may kiss the bride. <laughs> Congratulations, Sharon. Oh, thanks, <laughs> Sally. Cheers. <laughs> thanks. Well done. Oh, hey, thank you. Man. <laughs> oh. Fuck you. Hey, you better watch it. Married lady, now you know. Yeah, you, man handling me wife like that. <laughs> now, I've got a table booked at Regent, so I hope you're all hungry. Oh, beggar hungry. Let's get that champagne flowing. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, oh sorry. Oh. I hope you're not skiving. I'll tell that nice Mr. Watts. Actually, he's giving me the time off so I can help out here while Dad's away. Who wants me in charge? What? Oh, you can stuff that. Oh, come on, Vikram. It's not a big deal. We can work together. No, we can't. Why didn't he trust me? It's not a question of trust. He knows that I've run the corner shop on my own before, and you haven't. It's a corner shop, Nita. It's not brain surgery. What are you doing? I'm going out for lunch, if that's OK. I was hoping I'd bump into you. Yeah? Uh, Nita's taking some time off, rather at short notice. And uh, you want me as a trainee manager? <laughs> well, you do better than some of the Muppets I have to deal with, and it is management, in a way. In a way? It's the Weatherfield Firework Display. It's being sponsored by Freshco, you know that? I should do. I put the notices all around the store. Uh, well, Nita, she was going to be a, a, a steward, you see. No. no, no, no. I hate fireworks, and I only do well what can happen. That is why you're ideal. Sorry? Well, I can't ask Mad Malcolm from Wet Fish. I need someone who's sensible, mature. And who'll do it for the double time that you'll be paying. I'm sorry. Take it or leave it. I thought you were a man of principle. So did I, and I suddenly realised I could be bought for four hours at double time. Three. Done. I have been. <laughs> oh, no, no, but even the most rudimentary knowledge can be useful. Well, I mean, look, take Jack, for instance. A few months ago, he might have needed mouth to mouth. Are you saying I should have kissed him? To save his life. Well, if I had time to practice on them, maybe. <laughs> right, Jack, what can I get for you? Uh, a cup of tea would be nice, right? Mm -hmm. <sighs> Out for your evening, Shrop. Sort of, <laughs> I. I thought a nice little walk might help me puzzle something out, you know. Oh, yeah. Mm. The dog. Monica. Mm. <laughs> Slept in the shed last night. Didn't yeah, she did. How come she didn't bark at the tramp? Because there were a tramp. You know. Oh, because she would have barked, wouldn't she? I mean, like you say, she's a great guard dog. Well, then explain to me why there was a sleeping bag in the shed, yet there was no tramp. She was frightened, Jack. I had to keep her company. It's November, son. You can't sleep in the shed. Yeah, but... But you're looking for the owner, aren't you? So it won't be a problem for much longer. I love her, Jack. I love the way she looks at me and everything. I want to keep her. So, if I were you, I'd find the owner. Because come weekend, how Vera's going to take it to the RSPCA. Your choice. Brandy? I think so, yeah. Two brandies, please. Oh, I'm glad that's over. I thought we weren't going to make it when Shine gets a taxi driver to pull over at the pub on the way there. You what? No. Well, I had ears. Asked if me and Sharon had got close. <laughs> I didn't know what she told him. <laughs> I would have loved to have seen your face. <laughs> Everybody's dressed up today. So what's going on? No, I need to just day off. We both wear scruffs for work. Yeah, so we decided we'd go out for a posh lunch. And the uh, after dinner brandies are cheaper, innit? Shall we sit down? Vinny, uh, vodka and tonic, please. Uh, make it a large one. She knows something's going on. Not our problem. One thing worried me. You lied so flipping well, I almost believed you myself. I think I should go and say something to her. 
Well, they'll sort it out between themselves. Believe you me, you do not want to get caught in the crossfire. <laughs> something like that for me? In a word, no. In a word, good. Dad, don't think it's time to come down now. Can you come down, sir? I'd like a chat. No. You're causing an obstruction. Not to mention behaviour likely to cause a breach of the peace. Are you married, Ossifer? No, I'm not. Well, get lost, cos you wouldn't understand. Look, if you don't shift this thing in the next two minutes, I'll have no alternative but to arrest you. Derek. What? He means it. You'll go to prison. Good. Without you, love, I'm serving a life sentence of loneliness anyway. Really? I can't sleep. I'll just lie there, hugging that pillow. You know, that one you made a mess of with the night cream. I'll wait for another day of hell to begin. Derek, come down. Why? We've got deliveries to do. We can still make Clitheroe. We? Oui? You mean you'll come with me? And if we don't get to Accrington and Rawtonstall? We we'll just have to find a nice little B&B for the night. Hey, stuff the deliveries. Let's find that B&B. <laughs> Something. We're going to clear the room. Both of them. Mm. You think what Nice. Thought it would surprise you. Croissants? I went out specially this morning to a bakery. Yeah, but you don't like them. Oh, but you do. Oh, Ashley, you've been out in the cold for me. Well, it's first breakfast we've had here since we was married. On our own, I mean. Thought we'd celebrate. Mm, I'm so happy. I mm know. -hmm. <laughs> I can't believe she's gone. Just thinking when we come back tonight, she won't be here. Ah, oh, she won't be through well when we go to bed, neither. Well, now they're getting on. As long as they're under their own roof, I don't care. And if that's her... <laughs> Hello? Oh, hi, Mum. Oh, no, that's all right. It's a pleasure. Really? Hmm, great. Well, have a nice time, then. <laughs> all right, bye-bye. Going on a second honeymoon. I've nearly had a heart attack there. <laughs> that was just to thank us. I need a drink after that. Where's that rum we got off on in home? Well, you can't drink it this time. Why not? Just a nip in our coffee, just this once. You need it in this weather. What, to keep us warm? Well, we can have it in bed if you want. Shall we? You go upstairs. I'll go and find a tray. <laughs> then I used to think you were boring. I should have learnt that from Derek. <laughs> Those quiet ones at worst. Oh, thanks, Ken, ever so much. Well, I knew there was something wrong when my paper didn't turn up. Well, I can't think where she's got to. I'm very sorry about this. Well, it's not your fault, thanks. Well, the paper lad must have been and gone. I'm surprised they didn't knock me up. Oh, Mrs Dixon, I'm sorry about this. We're all over the place today. Yours is an express, isn't it? Don't worry, I'll knock it off your bill. OK, thanks. Thank you. She had the day off yesterday as well. What, Sharon? I don't know what she's up to lately. Well, I'm sure it'll all sort itself out. Well, it had better. I mean, she was supposed to lighten the load for me in here. I'm working harder than ever these days. Oh, oh I'm a... oh, uh, We didn't get our paper. Oh, I'm sorry, love. Sharon let me down. It's a mail for Audrey, isn't well, it? Well, anyway, I'd better be off. I'm going to be late. Nice all to see you. Right. Bye. 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 Bye, love. Bye. Oh, dear, just can't get the stuff these days, can you? Oh, tell me about it. No, I think uh, Robbie's finding the same problem. Oh, when's he off today? 
Well, I need to know I take him to the airport. Oh, well, give him my regards. Uh, so, uh, where is Sharon? I wish I knew. Here. Yeah. Good job. There's still been no calls about that dog. I thought somebody had rung by now. Well, maybe they've gone away, yeah? What, in November? Oh, I'm well known for the travelling the dog fraternity. Oh, I... Where? All over. Um, Walthamstow, Exeter, Cork. Cork? In Ireland? I don't know. Ooh, the Gold of Shamrock Award is one of the biggest they have. Yeah, yeah, the, 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 the Dublin Whelp invitation. Oh, you're making it up now. No, I'm not. Well, wherever they are, they'd better get that furry back quick and get the dog, cos I'm fed up of it now. Morning. Morning, Morning love. <laughs> Been out, have you? Yeah, I took Monica for a walk. Oh, you look frozen. Oh, look, your little hands are like ice. <laughs> Ooh, what's that smell? God, you stink. Do I? Yes, where have you been? It's like creosote and dog's breath. Well, I can't think why. Well, you've never smelled like that before. I think you better come clean, son. About what? I've been sleeping in the shed. Now, look, Tyrone, this has got to stop. Well, you said she was disturbing everyone. Well, that's not going to help, is it? Hey, keeping outside like a street urchin. Well, I don't mind. Well, the guests will when they smell you. Yeah, well, I'll get changed and have a bath and that. Oh, aye, and what if you get cold? I won't. Look, Tyrone, that dog's got to go. No, I'm sorry, Vera. If she goes, I go. Oh, now, come on, son, you don't mean that now. Yeah, I do. Well, I don't care if he does mean it. Look, that dog's going, and that's final. Blimey. What? You? Dressed up. Well, it's, it's, it's work, innit? What kind of work, though? You don't go tarted up like that for dredging canal. Yeah, well, I'm a cut above that today, aren't I? You're very smart, Les. Oh, thank you, mate. You in court? Oh, very funny. <laughs> You're not, are you? Honestly, you moan when I'm scruffy, you moan when I'm smart. Are you in trouble? No. So what's this job, then? Me and Pat, uh, we're flogging some of Charlie's gear off at auction for him. We have to look smart or people won't trust us. If you're seeing another woman... Oh, come with us if you don't believe me. Right, I'm off or I'll be late. I'll see you tonight. Did he get off OK? Yeah, he was fine. Any problems while I was out? No, surprisingly enough. I mean, I've only been running this place since you went off to Freshco's. Well, it's not my fault if he can't trust you. Well, how does he know I can't do it if he never gives me the chance? It might help if you didn't keep disappearing. I haven't done that for ages. Well, now's your chance to show you've reformed. And no doubt when he gets back, he'll be wanting a progress report. So keep up the good work and I'll tell him you got a gold star. I arrived this morning. Ooh, what? Oh. Yeah, it's called me old-fashioned, but epaulets and a few brass buttons are more my idea of a uniform. And why this mania for a sport we don't even play in this country? Well, at least I'll see you in that, um, bright colour. Yeah, yeah, the functional way. I mean, at the end of the day, that's what's important. Well, I hope you can treat blindness if you're wearing those. <laughs> I'll have uh, a BLT and a coffee, please, Gail. I was wondering if we should have name tags so we don't mix them up. And if we're called out in the middle of the night in an emergency and we're getting dressed, running around half asleep... Might save valuable seconds, yeah. Emergency? Oh, well, you never know, Gail. I mean, a major disaster, they might need auxiliary help at times like that. Like a motorway pile-up, for example. Or a preemptive nuclear strike on Bessie Street. Or a fire in a nightclub. You spend a lot of time in them, don't you, Steve? We have to be prepared. What, like Boy Scout, you mean? Like you could have been that time your dad fell off the yeah. scaffolding. OK, all right. I think I might go on iron these sweatshirts. We don't want to be looking shabby on our first night out. Cappuccino to go, please. Cat's away, then. Hmm? Your dad? Oh, look, if you're still on about this booze run. Oh, of course, yeah, you've uh, got to keep your nose clean for him, haven't you? So is he uh, put in charge of the shop, then? No, not exactly. So what's the problem, then? We're going to make a bomb. Look, think about it. You know where I am. They want, they want a damn good sorting out, I should answer. Oh. We'll just want another signal, that's all. Oh, do you reckon? Yeah. No to worry about them, mate. You're laughing. 
Want me to check up? You know, come round in that. No, I doubt it. You haven't the manpower. Let's give it the old sob story about making ends meet. Have you got dodgy physical? Well, I've got a bad back, but they know about that. Oh, don't forget that, then. Hey, I'm laid on thick. Mr Battersby. Thanks for the tips, pal. Oh, me back! Ooh. Oh, it's me back. It always plays up when I have to walk far. I didn't have the money for the bus fare, you see, and It's all right, Jill. I'll deal with this. Uh, if you'd like to come with me, Mr Battersby. About you, Tyrone? All right. Still got Monica then, I see. Yeah, not for long, though. Vera wants shut. No animals in the bed and breakfast. <laughs> oh, well, you got a bit of a problem there, then, haven't you? Trying to find her a new home. Hey, you don't want her, do you? No, I certainly do not. I was never a dog man myself, tell you the truth. Yeah, but I mean, she'll scare burglars off. And if you get a guard dog, your insurance goes down. Oh, is that right? Oh, well, that's news to me. No, it's true. Yeah, sorry, Tyrone. I'll see you later. See you later, Jim. Don't you worry. I'll find a good old thing. So, Mrs. Bentley, how was wedding night? Perfect. No regrets? Mm, only that it won't last longer. What are you talking about? We got rest up lives together. Yeah, but the minute we walk through that door, honeymoon stops. Yeah. Come on, let's get it over with. No, no, no. One more kiss before it all ends. Right. Now let's do it. Where the hell have you been? I'm sorry, Rita. I might have known you'd be behind this. I can't explain. It's been chaos in here. I've had people on the phone all day asking where their papers are, and I have been in here on my own trying to cope. And you stroll in, gone lunchtime, and all you can say is you're sorry. I said I can explain. This had better be good, Sharon. You spent the night with him, didn't you? Yeah, I did. It was our wedding night, after all. Your what? <laughs> Tell me this is a joke, Sharon. Please. We went to the registry office and then spent the night at the Regent. I knew you were up to summit. But this... Have you forgotten what he did to you? That is all in the past. Oh, that's what you've told her, is it? Oh, me and Ian have been through all this, Rita. That lousy trick you played nearly killed her. She's just getting over it, then you come back into her life. Rita, I've done nought that Sharon hasn't wanted. She doesn't know her own mind where you're concerned. Yes, I do. How long have you been plotting this? We decided a few days ago. Yeah. Huh. I noticed you didn't invite me. Oh, come on, Reet. You want to come if we had. Well, that's one thing we agree on. We did it like this because we knew how you'd react. Cos you feel guilty, you mean. Cos you know you're doing something wrong. You must be out of your mind. No, Rita. I've done what I've wanted to do. I've married the man I love. I will. Marry in haste, repent at leisure. You'll have plenty of time for that. I said, what's going on? No need to shout. Hang on, hang on. You don't work here, do you? Well, what else would I be doing here? Since when? Since I had a girlfriend to support. You can't sit around on your backside when you've got responsibilities. I know that, but... Good. Let's get down to business, then, shall we? It seems some discrepancies have come to light in your claim. Oh, I get it. What? You got wind of this, didn't you? So you're dealing with it so I don't have to take the rap. Nice one, spider lad. Cool as a cucumber you was out there. No, I'm sorry, I don't follow you. Uh, sorry, how are you? Are we being booked? I don't think you understand, Mr Battersby. It was me who called you in. You? To discuss your long and very interesting case history. We'll take it from the top, shall we? 
was with you all night, was he? Didn't disappear for an hour and come back smelling of some cocktail waitress? Cos that's what you've got to look forward to. It's not going to be like that. Well, you would say that, wouldn't you? If I didn't think he changed, I wouldn't have done this. You little fool. <laughs> You're a good con man, I'll give you that. Rita, I really don't need this. Well, I'm sorry, you're going to get it. Should be the proudest day of your life, your wedding day. Not some hole-in-the-corner affair behind people's backs. It was the proudest day of my life. And mine. So why can't you just forgive and forget and be happy for us? Nobody in their right mind could do that. Well, Sally did. Sally knew? We asked her to keep it quiet. And she didn't try and talk you out of it? Well, not everyone sees it like you. Not everyone saw the damage he did like I have. Look, anyway, there's just no point in going on, is there? We've told you now. If you want to go, I'll stay here and look after the shop for the rest of the day. Well, good luck to you, love. You're going to need it. Just don't come crying back to me again when it all goes wrong. I take it you're still unemployed, Mr. Battersby, if you're claiming income support? That's right. So no jobs in the last six months? No. Bad back still playing up? Oh, not half. I did it on the old rigs. So physical work is out? This is it. Only I've been sifting through your files, or should I say dredging. And there's one or two questions I'd like to ask you. You've recently put a claim in for invalid care allowance for your 93-year-old mother, Janice Battersby. In a wheelchair, poor woman. Must be in a lot of pain. You've also recently put in a child benefit claim for four children by a previous marriage who've recently moved back in with you. Quite a family in a two-bedroom house. Dread to think what the sleeping arrangements are. Must affect your recreational life. You're back. How do you mean? Well, no dancing. No going down the disco, getting carried away with yourself, doing your David Bowie impersonation. All right, all right. What, what do you want? You could go down for this. You can't get sent down for a few scams. Believe me, Les, it's my job. You wouldn't. Wouldn't I? Stay off mine and Toya's backs. Drop your claim. I'll destroy these, and I won't tell the social or Janice, because I take it she doesn't know. You're lucky it's only me who's seen these recent applications. You really would go down if they rumbled you. So, uh, so you won't tell? You let me live my life. I'll let you live yours. How about it? Hiya, what can I do for you, Steve? Uh, well, it's more what I can do for you, actually. Hi. I couldn't help over here in the pub the other night. Um, you want some of Alex's furniture shifting? Yeah, that's right. Only I'm going down this weekend, so I could give you a hand if you like. What, to Brighton? Yeah, yeah, it's no problem. Oh, well, if you're sure. Positive. Great. Oh, cheers. You're a big mate of his, are you? Could have to buy a drink. Me and Alec go back a long way. Mm. Is he expecting you, then? Not exactly. He's, um, in for a surprise. Should have seen his face. So he agreed? No choice, eh? And he won't go to prison? Not because of me, he won't. But he needs to watch his step. He could get in trouble. Speak of the devil. Spider-Man! Let me get you another cup of tea. Ain't that too. What? She knows? Everything. Oh, great. Harold! Two teas over here. The lady's name is Hayley. That is no lady. Oh, now, OK, Spider-Man. There was nothing in that deal that says you have to be nice to weirdos in drag. <laughs> Hayley, love. Three teas over here, please. So, what have you been doing with all this money, then? It was only a few quid. No, it wasn't. We've just been adding it up. Why didn't you tell me, Mum? She's the one who pays all the bills. I was saving it up for a rainy day. Well, it's just arrived. Oh, you're not going to tell her, are you, Toya? I don't know. We'll just have to see, won't we? Well, if you worry about getting nicked, it doesn't happen. We've got too many drug dealers and immigrants to worry about. But then, back in the day. Yeah? Max. Look, well, it's such a doddle, why do you need me? Go on your own, make twice the money. Out of work, though. It's more fun with two. Go on, we'll have a laugh. Pull a couple of birds on the way. Go on, give yourself a break, man. You've earned it. Ken, now I hear you've been press-ganged into fireworks. Uh, for my sins. Oh, so what will you be wearing? Sorry. Well, you're a steward, aren't you? You'll have to have something to make you stand out. I mean, 
little berry, perhaps, or a nice bright sash? Well, I draw the line at an armband, thanks. And what about you? Are you making a speech? Oh, I'll say a few words, I expect, but there's no point in droning on. Well, you need a sense of occasion, though. You can. Folks go to fireworks these days to go up at rockets, not to be bored to death. <laughs> Give the people what they want, eh, Audrey? Oh. How do you think I've got where I am at? <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you say? Just give me some time to think about it, okay? I have to spin some line to Nita. Well, that wouldn't be hard, would it? Yeah, well, I can't just tell her anything. But basically, you don't. Yeah, why not? You promised. What? To put an advert in here? I did. So where is it then? Well, it must have been in yesterday. They're in for a week in Lost and Found. I should know. I've used them myself. But stop lying, Tyrone. Come on, own up. I couldn't afford it. Right, well, I'll pay for it myself. Where's the number? No, Vera, don't. She's all I've ever had. My mum and dad didn't want me. And when I asked for a little brother or sister, I never got one. And when I see Monica and she wags her tail, it feels like somebody loves me for the first time in my life. And if you got rid of her, it'll kill me. Tyrone, we can't keep her here. But she's good for Jack. Dogs bring down stress levels. It's been proved. Look, even if I wanted her, we can't have her here. It's not our home. Look, if Eunice came back and found a dog here, me and our Jack could lose his jobs, and then we'd all be out on the streets. Well, if I put an ad in there, can I have one week to get rid of her? No, I suppose so. Oh, thanks, Vera. I promise you won't be a problem. A week, mind. Any longer. And I'll take her to the dog zone myself. It's 160. I'll get that Vinnie Meal Velvet. Les, I don't want your money. And one for me. Just stick to your side of the bargain. That's all I ask. Well, that's the way you want it. It is. Oh, you're a flush. Oh, yeah, we, uh, we had a good day at the auction. You can get me one and all, then. Another pint, Vinny, love while you're at it. Right. This is all very pally, isn't it? You buying spider drinks? What's happened? Oh, me and Les have come to an agreement, haven't we, Les? Oh, yeah? To stop knocking each other. Well, I'm glad to hear it. What's brought this on, then? Well, you see things differently, don't you, when you've had a better look? <laughs> don't think I'm going to swallow that story about you and Pat. Oh, no, it's true what he says, Janice. Les was just telling me. Yeah? Yeah, he's had an unexpected result today. Aren't you, Les? Yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> I'll say one thing for you, Sal. You know how to keep a secret. Oh, it's all right. I know all about that farce of a wedding. I'm sorry if you disappointed Rita. I'm sorry you didn't tell me. I couldn't break her confidence. Why didn't you try and talk her out of it? Well, we did have a chat, but... I reckon her mind was made up. Well, you saw the damage he did before. She said it changed. Do you think he has? Oh, I don't know. Leopards like that don't change their spots in six months. He's only in it for what he can get. Well, who am I to preach anyway, unless I made of my marriage? But we've all made mistakes. That's why we could have warned her. Well, I did feel uneasy about being a witness. You were a witness? She didn't tell you. We both were. I know Sally had really mixed feelings about it. Not mixed enough, but it sounds of it. I don't think anybody could have stopped her. Well, I'd have had a damn good try. Anyway, we'll never know now, will we? At the end of the day, people have got to live their own lives. She'd just thrown away what life she had, while two of her so-called best friends sat and watched. That's not fair. You don't know how much he damaged her. And it'll happen again. Sure as eggs are eggs. Only when it does, I only hope you'll be happy. <sighs> We've seen it all in the last 24 hours, haven't we? Do you know, I never knew Evan and Elle were so close together. Hey, it'll get better. <laughs> well, it couldn't get any worse. <laughs> she may always hate my guts, but she'll forgive you in time. Oh, you reckon? I put money on it. Will that be enough, though? What do you mean? Well, what's the point if she doesn't forgive you as well? Well, we'll still be happy. And you'll get on with her. I won't get on with her till she accepts us both as man and wife. Hmm. Well, that ain't gonna happen in a hurry, is it? So, we've got a big problem, then. 
as much as I love her. Me and Rita will have reached the end of the line. Ah, it's a man's duty to care for the beasts. Tame the wild and tend the weak and defenceless. You missing them pigeons, Jack? There was a primitive bond between me and them birds. It's gone now. No, you've still got Fergie. And Monica, you can always take her for a while, you know. Oh, come on, she's a greyhound. I love a dicky heart like me, she'd probably kill me. No, she loves you, Jack. Just like she loves me and Vera. Ah, Vera. There's the rub. <laughs> Fireworks are dangerous. Well, no. That's why we'll be there to make sure there aren't an accident. But what if there is an accident? I thought you wanted to put your training into practice. I'm not sure I'm ready. Let's do things you're ready. But what if something terrible happens and, and I just turn into a quivering wreck? You won't. How do you know I might? Because I know you. Well, I wish I had the faith in me that you do. Excuse me, I just need to see a man about a no, dog. Oh, there's a woman. They haven't got the same feeling about the animal world as us men have, you know. I'm sorry, but that dog will have to leave the premises. Well, she's not doing no harm. I can't have animals close to areas of food preparation. It's unhygienic. All right, we're going. Come on, Monica. See you, Jack. Come on. I don't want to go. Sharon? I'm serious. I don't know if I can take a whole day working behind the counter with someone who hates me guts. Oh, dear. And I thought Sharon Gaskell wasn't afraid of anything. <laughs> it's not Sharon Gaskell Rita hates. It's Sharon Bentley. Well, why don't you take another day off? <laughs> I will if you will. No, <laughs> I can't. Hey, listen. Why don't you come in later, though? I'll meet me for lunch. Maybe if she sees us together more and sees how happy we are... Yeah, all right. Come on in. Brave face, Mrs. Bentley. Aye. I don't believe it. What? They've done it again. All this stock is out of date. Sausages, bacon, cheese, cold meat. Do they think we're stupid? Do you want me to phone them? Oh, what's the point? I don't know why we stick with them anyway. They've been letting us down since before I left for Fresh Goes. Well, why don't you go down there and bang some heads together? To Birmingham. Why not? They obviously need it. Uh, Dad left me in charge of the shop. I'm not sure I can trust you on your own. Oh, thanks a bunch. OK, well, why don't you let me go down there and shake him up a bit? And while I'm down there, I can visit Auntie Ranny. She's bound to be upset about Uncle Raj. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, come on, Nita. Someone from the family should show the respects. It's what Dad would have wanted. All right, then. You could do something else for me as well. Oh, sure, why not? Pile it on. You can bank the takings. I've not had a chance to go to the bank all week, and it's piling up. How much? It's just over a £1,000. I don't like keeping it in the shop. Sure you can trust me? No. Listen, while I'm doing all this, why don't I spend a couple of days down there? It'd be nice to hang out with Cousin Dev again. A couple? A couple. Two. I'll be back before you know it. Mm. Hello, Mrs Duckworth. Hiya. Uh... <laughs> well? OK, then, but promise me you won't do one of your disappearing acts. Cross my heart and hope to die. All right, Mrs D. Oh, I see you've not found the proper owner of that smelly mutt. No, not yet. But while I'm here, I may as well stock up, eh? Here. Well, you don't want all that. It's not stopping much longer. I've told you before, get that dog out. And I thought this was a nation of dog lovers. Come on, Monica. If you've got something to say, then say it. I've nothing to say. Rita, I love him. And does he love you? Well, of course he does. He booked us into this really flash hotel on wedding night, and when we got back into bridal suite, there were, there were champagne on ice and roses on the bed. Very touching. Are you sure he didn't make a pass at the chambermaid while you were asleep? I don't know what's wrong with you. It was me he hurt before, Rita, not you, and I've forgiven him. But he's changed, Rita. I know he has. Look, proof, a ring on my finger. If you think that proves anything, you're even more stupid than I thought. Well, and a nicker chip. Mm -hmm. Good news. Mm. I'm sorted. I'm coming with you. Right. Right. I'll make a real trip of it then. A few laughs, a few beers, a bit of business. 
And have you got the money? No problem. And have you got a passport? What is this, a school trip? Listen, just don't say anything to Big Sister, all right? She thinks I'm going to Brook. <sighs> have another chip. Hey! hey. <laughs> I was the only decent bloke in the benefits agency. I'm my favourite daughter. All right. Do you want some up? Have I said? What a lovely couple you two make. You can stop now, we won't tell. Oh, you're a good girl. Although we did think it'd be a good idea if we did something nice for me, Mum. Oh, yeah? Like what? Like a weekend away. Somewhere nice with a bit of pampering. A weekend away? Yeah. I reckon I could sort something like that. Yeah, we'll just make sure you do, all right? <laughs> Aren't you two a bit old for the Boy Scouts? Or is this one of your kinky dressing up games? Les. All right, we'll go in. Well, you certainly look the part. We've been practising like mad. I'm the June dressings resuscitation. With particular attention to birds, of course. Are you going to stay like that all day? Oh, no, no, we were just trying them on. We thought we'd show them off. <laughs> no, 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 we'll go back and put our civilian clothes on. Now. Good, because it's coming up to dinner time. Oh, we'd better get our skates on, then. <laughs> well, don't rush. Don't want an accident, do we? <laughs> No, actually, I'm perfectly, thank you, I'm perfectly comfortable with public speaking. Mm. Well, I mean, being a counsellor, I have to be. Mm. But I know I'm going to be upstaged. <laughs> I mean, you can't compete with fireworks. Oh. <laughs> so it's going to be short, sweet and off. Sounds fine to me. <laughs> How are you? Hiya. Hello. Hiya. Got photos. <gasps> Did you know I love photos? Oh, mate? come on. Oh, no. What? I look like a duck. Rubbish. Uh, these are wedding photos. Yeah, that's right. You got wed. <laughs> well, you kept that quiet. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. Stationary rep says he'll call Tuesday of next week. Right. Yeah, they got wed. I know. Don't look at the photos. You trying to rub my nose in it? No. You got married behind my back. Why would I be interested in looking at photographs of a wedding I wasn't deemed worthy enough to be invited to? We didn't invite you because we knew you didn't approve. Still don't. Leave it, Sharon. Don't you ever get tired of sniping at us. Look, it's done now. There's nothing you can do about it. I'm just trying to show you how happy we are. But if all you want to do is turn your nose up and sneer, then you can do it on your own. I'm going for lunch. I thought the fireworks didn't start till after dark. <laughs> Blankets. Um. Check. Survival bags. Uh. Check. Torches. Check. Uh. Whistles. Check. Yeah. Fire extinguishers. Check. Check. I think. Freshco sponsored sounds better than sponsored by Freshco. I can't see what difference it makes. Maybe you'd like to do my speech for me, Carla. I'm only trying to give you a few pointers. Yeah, I can tell you what you can do with your pointers. Uh, Mr. Watts, are you sure that it's safe to be carrying that rocket about? This is the Freshco rocket. This cost a bomb. This is the highlight of the evening. Yeah, well, you'll be the highlight of the evening if someone gets too close with a fag on. <laughs> I think maybe you should let our professional pyrotechnic team look oh. after it. I'll let them have it. Oh. Come on, Audrey. Right. Bye-bye. See you later. Bye. Good luck, Council Roberts. Thank you. All right, Weatherfield First Aiders, gather round. This is the big one. Tonight, danger is our enemy. Can you smell the danger? I can. And it's up to us to stop it. Because if we don't and Mr. Danger gets a grip on the Red Wreck, then chaos will reign and lives may be lost. I know you're feeling nervous. But that's OK. It'll keep you sharp. Remember, I wouldn't be sending you out there if I didn't think you were ready. Now, let's make sure the young folk of Weatherfield enjoy a safe bonfire night. And hey, be careful out there. Thank you. I, I feel 
feel like a coiled spring ready to burst into action. A new survey gives a unique peek behind the net curtains of neighbourliness. Well, Paul, she's scared stiff out there. She don't know where she's up to. She's all trembling and whimpering and everything. Her face is just shaking with fright. Oh, come on, Vera, it's not fair on the dog. It's just bonfire night. Oh, go on, then, fetch her in. Only for tonight, mind. And watch the guest notes see ya. OK, Vera. Hi, <laughs> Roy. Ah, Ken, uh, all quiet on the Western Front. Oh, let's hope it stays that way. Ah, oh, never fear. Mr Danger will not be making an appearance this evening. I just keep thinking about Gary. His whole world's been torn apart. Well, well, you've done all you can now. It just feels wrong, though. You know, having you here look so beautiful and he just lost you there. Well, Slippy got you a lovely man. Mm. Oh, what it is to be young and in love, eh? Hey. Well, <coughs> surprised you can remember that far back. <laughs> what? Can we go and watch from around the other side? Yes, I suppose so, if it's too embarrassing to stand with us. What do you mean I'm too old to remember young love? Well, it's just... Well, it's a long time ago, isn't it? I'll take those, thank you. Hey! Hey! Oh, hey, what are you doing? I, I, I thought they were fireworks. Uh, false alarm. <laughs> you think I'd let him walk round a bonfire with a bag of fireworks? No, I, I'm just trying to prevent an accident. Yeah, well, if you want to prevent an accident, Roy, I'd scarf her before she punches you. Yes, well, uh, <clears throat> be safe. Married, you say, eh? Well, Audrey was going on about it at dinner time. Apparently, they didn't even invite Rita to the wedding. Well, so it's a bit of a bad job all round, really. So, anyway, how do you feel about the whole thing? Well, I don't know. And I've got no feelings for Ian. He used me, and I'd happily see him under a bus. But I can't help feeling sorry for Sharon. You know, I might not like her, but uh, she deserves better than that little rat. Well, you know what they say, love's blind, isn't it? Yeah, and in her case, stupid as well. Do you want one? Uh, nah, they make me spew. You've got to stick at it, you know. It's no good giving up after the first one. Kelly Adams reckons she's on 20 a day. No way. Good evening, everybody. On behalf of Weatherfield Council, I'd like to welcome you all here tonight. I'm sure it's going to be a lot of fun, but I'm sure you'd all prefer a decent rocket to a lot of hot air from me. <laughs> so let's get on with it, shall we? Let the fireworks begin. OK, go. Hey, what do you think you're doing? You never mentioned frescoes. Oh, sorry. Oh. I forgot to say, this evening's events are sponsored by... Sarah Louise, what are you doing? Nothing. I don't think smoking's a good idea. Oh, don't tell me more than that, please. Give me matches, please. Why should I? Gonna tell. I'm going to think about it. I suggest you do the same. <sighs> Turn that thing down. Hello, Vera Duckworth speaking. How are you, Nis? How are you? No, everything's fine here. Yeah, running like clockwork. <laughs> no, no, that wasn't a bark. No, it was just a firework, you know, that set our Jack's cough off. Yeah, well... <laughs> Yeah, well, he does get a bad cough, doesn't he, this time of year? <laughs> oh, no! 
No, it's all right. Uh, no, it's fine. Oh, move back, please. Move back. Away from the fire. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. They're safe here. The, 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 the nylon jackets. This is a fire hazard. They're, they're very combustible. If you push us back any further, we won't be able to see the flaming bonfire. Look, Martin, you of all people should be able to imagine the scene if a stray spark should ignite one of these kiddies' animals. Yeah, yeah, all right, right. But you might try and imagine what bonfire night would be like if it was fun. It is my duty to keep people safe. And safety must come before fun, any day. Ladies and gentlemen, no one no, no, speaking. The, the, the manager, manager of Fresco's, Fresco's, Fresco's the, the sponsor, sponsor of tonight's, tonight's event. event. And, and on behalf, behalf of everyone from Fresco's, Fresco's it gives me great, great pleasure to launch tonight's climax, climax. the Fresco sponsored Fresco, Fresco Rocket. Launch the Fresco Rocket. <laughs> And remember, tonight's event was sponsored by Fresco, your local store for good food at the right price. Get it, Curly Law. They've had their fireworks, they just want to go home and have a lie down. Oh, I suppose that's it then. Everybody safe and sound? A job well done. Debriefing the marquee in five. There's always an emotional come down after a night of vigilance. Well, you obviously did a great job, Lester. You must feel exhausted. Oh, you get used to it. The constant awareness that danger is around the corner. The need to be ready at all times to cope with any kind of catastrophe. Well, of course. Well, I think we all deserve a pat on the back. I, I can smell smoke. <laughs> Roy, it's a bonfire night. We can all smell small. <laughs> you must feel the pressure yourself, Councillor Roberts. The gaze of the media constantly on you. Well, Lester, I mean, we choose these demanding roles, don't we? I don't know. Is it a need to serve? Uh, Lester, I, I think I can smell smoke. Yeah, oh. Not now, Roy, OK. <clears throat> now, where was I? Come to think of it, there is a strange smell in here, Lester, actually. That can't be right, can it? <laughs> Roy, Roy, the tent's on fire. All right, everyone, oh, yeah, no. don't panic. Oh. Right, no, nobody panic. Just <coughs> evacuate the tent in, in a calm and orderly fashion. <coughs> Hayley, have you seen Councillor Roberts? No, no, I didn't see a go. Help! Please, somebody help! Here, help support Lester. I'll, I'll get Councillor Roberts. Right, oh, oh. right, I got all disoriented. <laughs> Straight on, everybody. Nicholas! <laughs> Nicholas, can you help me? Try not to breathe in too much smoke. Right, right, support your head, support your head. Oh, quick this way. Oh. Roy, are you all right? We're right behind you. Keep, keep moving, Haley. I've got Councillor Roberts. It's so stupid. Have you got oh, my bag, Roy? I've got your bag. Oh, come on, come on. You know, I feel like we're all up in here like some kind of war bunker. You fish that brown thing? I mean, I know Rita's a bit stubborn, but I'm beginning to think she doesn't want me to be happy. Yeah. She had another go at me today. I'm going to pick up key. Oh. You think she could try to be civil? I don't know. It's like she's just trying to spoil everything. What? Well, you don't have to let her, you know. Well, it's easy for you to say. You don't have to spend all day cooped up with her at shop. Neither do you. Eh? Well, we don't have to stay here. I don't know about you, but I never imagined we'd live here forever. Never imagined you'd work in cabin forever. I mean, we are starting again, aren't we? There's no law says we have to do it in Weatherfield. I buy you a drink. 
Well, I'm not leaving because you've arrived, Rita. I've got to go and pick the girls up. Well, I'd like the chance to patch things up between us. The way things are going, I'm running out of folk who talk to me. Things still a bit strange between you and Sharon, then? Well, you could say that. Giving Sharon the shot was supposed to ease the strain, not make it worse. I thought I was gaining a daughter. Instead, I think I'm making an enemy. I've got five minutes and then I've got to get back. Oh, what a mess! Hey, look at this! One of the rockets must have landed on the tent. Yeah, yeah, it must have been. Carry on, Ken, you're doing a great job. Yeah, but it looks like the Fresco rocket. Ken, just put it in the bag. Yeah, but... Uh, Ken, uh, just put it in the bag! It's all right. Yeah, yeah, we're just a bit shocked. Yeah, well, the paramedics said that Audrey's going to be all right and Lester suffered a minor concussion. That's good. And the paramedics said that uh, all your first aiders are going to be all right. I've got a few things to sort out here and uh, then can I give you a lift home? Oh, yeah, that'd be great. Thank you, Mr Watts. <laughs> this must be the most humiliating experience ever for the Weatherfield first aiders. A totally trouble-free bonfire night. Then we end up burning down our own tent. Our leader gets concussion and we end up being treated by paramedics. Under the circumstances, I think we should be grateful that nobody got seriously hurt. We're going to be the laughing stock of the first aid movement. We'll be one of them strange but true items in the local paper. It's total embarrassment. You weren't an embarrassment. You were brilliant. If you hadn't got all them people out of that tent, somebody could have got seriously injured. Oh, we're really proud of you. Really? You were the hero of the hour. Oh, well, I, I didn't have time to think. I just did what I did. <laughs> I always knew you could do it. You're a special man, Lloyd Cropper. A very special man. <laughs> Do that. You're not supposed to brush a dog in a room where we're preparing food. Why not? It won't do no harm. Not where your pie can. People. Dog hairs, it's unhygienic, isn't it? Not Monica. She's dead cleaner. I tell you what, she has more baths than Jack does. Hey, I heard that. Oh, I was going to bring you a cup of tea in bed, seeing as it's your birthday. 64 today. You hope you're not going to be a misery. He hates birthdays. No, I, I used to. But I love them now. You see, a couple of months ago, son, I discovered something worse than getting old. Oh, yeah, what's that? Not getting old. <laughs> oh, I tell you, when they took me in that hospital, I was about that far off falling off my twig. Well, I changed my mind. I like it being here, but you do tend to think about the things that you would miss, wouldn't you? Like uh, the racing page, smell of ale, football on the telly. <laughs> and me? You'd miss me and all. Of course you would. And I'll tell you what, I'm going to make sure there's plenty of years left in you yet. Yeah, we're going to grow old together. The best is yet to come. Now, Luke, I'm in a good mood, Vera. Don't start talking me out of it. I'll tell you what, though. I'll tell you what. Tonight, we'll go down to the Rovers and have a little celebration. You too, son. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I'll tell you what, seeing as it's your birthday, you can have a couple of pints. What, a proper pints? Yeah, I love that. Well, give us a kiss. No, no hang, hang on, Vicky. No, no, no. Come on, give no, us a kiss. No, give over. You spilled no, me tea. It's your birthday. You can actually throw a bucket of water on him, eh? The dog! I mean, trouble is with seven days a week business. It really ties you down. Yeah, well, when it gets to dinner time, I'll shut for the day. How about shutting early for once? About 11 o'clock. I mean, it's your business. You can make clothes in time whenever you want, can't you? Yeah, I suppose I can, really. Why? Are we going somewhere? Yeah, a magical mystery tour. Mm, that sounds good. Morning, Rita. Morning. Morning, Sharon. Right, uh, well, uh, one or two things to do, and uh, I'll come by for you about 11 o'clock then. OK. See you later. Bye. Bye. Um, I'll be closing up early today, Rita. Oh, you're loose trade. Oh, I'm not bothered. Ian's taking me out. Taking you in, more like. 
That's his usual game. <laughs> Don't know where we're going. It's a surprise. Oh, he's good at those. Like the one he played with Natalie Barnes. I dare say you're in for plenty more like that. Ooh, knock, knock, knock. You're forever swiping, aren't you, Rita? Yes, cos there's plenty to aim at. Well, I'm sick of it. Every chance you get, you're putting that knife in. Well, I'll tell you this, I've had enough. That fella at the fireworks, you know, he was with those first aiders. Which one do you mean? The wimpy one. Don't he own the cafe your mum works at? A wimp, yeah. His name's Roy Candies, and he's not a wimp. In fact, he's anything but. Sorry. Are you watching this? No, not really. Oh, good. You can peel some potatoes for dinner then. Enough for five, OK. Mum, we're just going upstairs to play some CDs. Mm, well, it didn't look like it to me. No, honestly, Candice wants to hear my new five CD. Sarah Lou, we don't ask you to do much, you know. Peeling some potatoes would be a great help. Mum. Oh, I'll peel the spuds. Oh, thanks, Martin. Right. Martin, I wanted Sarah Lou to do it. It's all right. I'm not doing anything. It's not the point. Gail, who do you want to row with now, me or Sarah Louise? with anyone. Well, you could have fooled me. I know you'd like me to approve of this man that you've married. His name's Ian. But I don't. And I never will. Well, you've made that pretty obvious. You never stopped slagging him off. Because when it comes to him, you've switched your brain off and buried your head in the sand. <sighs> you can't scrub out what he did to you. Oh, it's none of your business, Rita. It's between me and Ian. He's my husband, and I'm sick of hearing you rubbish him. What would you like me to do? Pretend that I think he's a lovely fella? <laughs> I can't stand here day in, day out, while you make nasty remarks about Ian. I'm going to have to take somebody on who just won't give me all this aggro. What do you mean? Well, it's impossible the way things are between us, isn't it? Are you saying you'd like me out of this shop? What I'm saying is, Rita, this is my business now. Now, I don't have to employ anybody who slags my husband off every chance she gets. I'm sorry I upset you. Whatever I said, I said because I care about you. Rita, I've got to put my husband first, all right? Now, you've got to understand that, because if you can't... Oh, well... Come in. Hiya. Listen, you two. This is Janice's idea, not mine. We guess that. You don't go in for dinner parties, do you? No, I'd sooner be down the pub. You won't tell Janice, will you, about my little learner? Oh, don't worry. We I won't say anything. Not if you keep your promise about taking her away for a little break. Yeah, well, I've been thinking about that. It's the wrong time of the year. It'd be a waste of money, wouldn't it? You promised. Hey, Mum. Oh, hi, you love. Spider. Well, Les, this is nice, isn't it, eh? Having family round for dinner. Oh, you, uh, you did remember about me and Toya being vegans, didn't you? You'll get no rabbit food round here, sunshine. You're getting sausage and mash. Oh, take no notice. I've got some special sausages for you two. Vegan food? It's like non-alcoholic lager. You just make sure that what I get is the real thing. Hey, Mum, how did you like Les's surprise? What surprise? Shut up, Howard Sawyer. Oh, he's given me a few surprises, him, in his time. I've not enjoyed any of them. Oh, this is a really nice one. Well, I've let it slip out now. You might as well tell her. Tell me what? Oh, what is it? He's been saving up for a special treat for you. Les, saving up to spend on me? Yeah, a weekend in a nice hotel. Oh, give over. Les, you don't do out nice, him, like that. What do you mean? I'm a caring, warm-hearted human being, me. We're going away, you and me. So no argument. Oh, Les. That's wonderful. Come here. <laughs> I told her straight, she's been a right pain since you and me got married. The trouble is, you're working with her all day in shop. You get home, and she's in next door flat. That's too much, Sharon. Aye, true enough. Anyway, where are we going? Yeah. Melbourne. See that house over there? 
The one with the for sale sign. All right. In fact, let's have a look inside. <gasps> Agents meeting us. Are you serious? Yeah. <gasps> Three bedrooms, on suite bathroom. Nice area. It's got the lot. It's a good place to bring up kids, this. <gasps> you want to look? Yeah! <laughs> All right, so, you wash your hands. Yeah. Good lad. Let's have a look. Sarah Lou, Candice, I'm putting dinner out. Oh, we're going out, Mum. Yeah, well, you can have your dinner before you go. Oh, we're not very hungry, are we, Candice? No, not really. You saw her, I was making it. Why didn't you say something? I don't know, I never thought. You never thought? Well, I'm not wasting good food and the money it costs. Oh, listen, you can have it later. We'll warm it up, OK? Oh, yeah, thanks. Thanks, Mum. See ya. Come on. Uh, All right, mind how you go, girls. Bye. Thanks, Martin. You were a great support. Oh, well, what we're going to do? Stand over them while they eat. Everyone's sat around the table, miserable. I would just like this family to sit down together once in a while. Yeah, and if you make an ordeal of it, what's the point? Oh, come on. What's the big deal, anyway? Huh? Just because you've forgotten what it's like to be a teenager. Because in my case, it's such a long time ago. Is that right, Martin? I love the kitchen. Uh, I shouldn't be saying that, really, should I? <laughs> Don't worry, Mrs Bentley. We shan't put the price up. That's not not. It's high enough already. 89,900. How much? Oh, look at the garden. Oh, it's a nice garden. Oh, that'll mm. get your hands dirty for a change. <laughs> Would you like to see upstairs? Oh, yes, yes. please, yeah. Driveway. Just yeah. through here, yeah. You could always repaint if you wanted to. Oh, yeah, we could do anything, couldn't we? <laughs> no, I like this. Yeah? Oh, look at that carpet on the stairs. Oh, it's a bit expensive, though, isn't it? Well, it's very much in line with what these properties are fetching. Yeah. The bathroom. Oh. Ian, look. Hey. Oh. Bedrooms through here. Wow. <coughs> so, what do you reckon, Sharon? Do you like it? Yes, I like it. <laughs> oh, it's a bit too much, though. <laughs> we'll have to think about it. Yeah. Well, as you're first-time buyers and you don't have a property to sell, there might be some negotiation on the price, but, uh, well, there's a lot of interest in the house, I have to tell you. Mm. Well, like I said, um, we'll have to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> here we are, then. Hi, here we are. You know, you've only got to say, Gary, you can turn around and go home. This is home, shit. Oh, carry your back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, them kiddies and all. Oh, it's lovely to see you. How are you? Oh, well, well we're doing all right, yeah. Uh, that's what we're doing here. Thought it was about time we came home. Love, aren't you? So how are you, Gary? You know, in your self life. I'm functioning, Vera. Yeah. I tell you what, it's cold in here. You'll have to have this house warm for these babies. I know, I to look after them. Of course you do. But you could have posted a key, you know. I could have had a house all ready for you. Well, I haven't made my mind up. I didn't decide till last night. Yeah, we'd hoped he'd stop a bit longer. Why does people who really cared about him? <laughs> I'd stayed at my mum's long enough. It was time to come back. I've got a bit of time off work anyway, so I'll be here for a while. Oh, well, that's good, cos I could deal with company. Anyway, listen, love, I'll have to go, cos I've got dinner on, you know, for our Jack and Tyrone. Yeah, love. Come on, champ. <clears throat> but listen, if there's all you need, you only have to say. <coughs> Just tell me, me or our Jack, you only have to ask. Oh. Right, love, I'll be off. Thanks, Phil. See ya. See you, then. Judith. Mm -hmm. I knew it was going to be tough coming back, but it's got to be done. It's like... It's like she's still here. But she's not. Mm -hmm. I don't know why you didn't stop at my mum's for longer. In fact, I don't even know why you came back here at all. What's here for, you know? Memories. Me and Judy lived here. <laughs> now it's just me and the kids. I don't know how you can eat that veggie muck. 
It tastes of nothing. I didn't know you tried it. I don't need to try it. I know. Let's have a taste. Mm. Tastes exactly like what we're having. You wouldn't yeah. know the difference. Oh, yes, it would. Because proper sausage, meat sausage, has gristle in it. I'm chewing a bit now. Oh. Don't knock it. Gristle's good for you. Builds muscle. More seeing your head from the sound of it. Right, well, apple pie's coming next. Here's your plates. Thanks, love. Tart. I tell you what, since me and my mum made dinner, why don't you and Les do the washing up? Yeah, yeah, fair enough. OK, Les? Washing up's for wimps. You do what you want, but I'm no wimp. Well, if I tell me mum about the money you've been fiddling on the quiet and spending all on yourself, on your boozing and your betting... You wouldn't. Oh, no, no, she wouldn't. I would. My mum does everything. Right. Who's for pudding? Oh, that looks nice, Janice Flower. I'll tell you what. Why don't me and Spider do the washing up for you after? Are you feeling all right? Hey, Betty, what? did you know Gary Mallet's come back home? No, since when? Well, I was just telling Ashley, his brother brought him back in the car, you know what kid is. Oh. Hey, being back in the house, you know, it'll bring it all back to him. I mean, when I think about what happened to Judy, it was me and Ashley getting married and she was there on her own. Oh, it upsets me, what it must do to Gary. I think I'll go and see him. Do you come with me? Um, no, I think it's a bit too soon. You go by yourself, Ash. Yeah, happen that's for the best. I don't think his brother would like people crowding in on him. Yeah, I'll see you later. See you, see you later. Off. Yeah, watch me shopping. Yeah. It is a beautiful house and I love it, but it's an awful lot of money, Ian. Yeah, well, you get what you pay for. And if you want that good a house, well... Mm. Yeah, hey, house hunting, are you? Yeah, well, we're just looking around at the moment. Yeah. Went to see this one this morning. Very nice. Mm, lovely price and all. <laughs> you also what better for that? <laughs> well, not necessarily. Hi, Ashley. Come on. Hi, Shane. How's Gary? Well, he's holding it together, but he's not himself. Oh, hi, Gary. You back then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're back. I've just put the kids down for a nap. You all right? Me, yeah, I'm fine. I just want to tell you, anything me and Maxine can do, anything, whatever it is, you only have to say. We won't be troubling you and Maxine. You've got your own life to live. You won't be no trouble, Gary. We'll be glad to help. Look, I know you've had a long journey, and I don't suppose you've got much food in the house. So when twins have had a sleep, why don't you come over to our house, you and all Shane? Can you have some supper with us? We've got a couple of bits from corner shop. Come on. Maxine would love to see you, and kids as well. We can have a good feed. Thanks. To... Look, Ashley, I'm not fit company for man the beast. I can't help it, that's just the way it is. I just end up making people feel as miserable as I do. Maybe in a day too, today. Oh... I knew we had something to tell you. Uh, my mum, you know Beryl. Well, she knows this woman that runs a nursery for young babies like yours. She says that they're very good. No, there'll be none of that, but no nurseries, no minders. Well, how are you going to go on going back work? Well, I can't, can I? Not unless I dump the kids, which I'm not going to do. No. It's just me and them now. I'm going to bring them up the way that Judy would have done. Look, Gary, people want to help you. That's why I'm here. That's why Ashley's offering. We can manage. I'm not asking for any charity. I've done it. What's up with you? You had an accident? <laughs> no, it was no accident. Son of a half clattered into me five minutes after kickoff. Ah, football, eh? Yeah, that's right, Sunday morning league, you know. Mind you, at least I finished the match. More than their centre half did, he retired injured, apparently. <laughs> oh, did he? Uh, long time since I played. He's been dead keen. Were you any good? Well, never actually had Alex Ferguson pestering me, but oh, I was quite good. Why? Any chance of a game? Yeah, yeah, there might be. Oh. Listen, I'd best get back. Sorry we'd have dinner on the table, but I'll catch up with you later. We'll sort something out. All right, you're on. Keep you to that. See ya. Yeah. How was Gary? Awful. It's like he's not really his if he's died inside. 
Well, I know I must be feeling because if anything ever happened to you. Listen, it won't do. And we'll help Gary. Yeah, if he lets us. Huh? Lovely to see you. And nice to see you too. Hey, I'm looking very dapper, if I may say so. Well, I can do when he sets his stall out. <laughs> this is a new shirt for his birthday. It's your birthday. Well, many happy returns. Birthday, Jack. Oh, well, 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 thanks. But yeah, but me main prezzy. She's letting me have a couple of pints. Well, let the first one be on me. And yours, Vera. Leanne, will you bring Vera gin and tonic, please? Go on, you get oh, settled. I'll bring them over. See you right. later. See you later. You're a very kind, generous person, aren't you? Yet round here they call you tough as old boots. Oh, I am. Hard as nails. Yeah, soft underneath, I'll bet. Look, keep it to yourself. I've got my reputation to consider. Hey, uh, they told me Gary Mallet's back. Is that right? Well, I doubt we'll see him in here for a while. I thought I'd let him get settled, pop over and see him tomorrow. Well, shall I it round now? Take him the collection we've had for him and the kids? No, no, no. Leave it for now, Vinny. Right! There you go, young man. Oh, Happy birthday. Ta very much, love it. Ta very Thank much. You. Oi! You are too young to be in this pub, not to mention your dog. Look, 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 can, can we have a special pass out tonight with it being my birthday? I mean, dog's as good as gold, and it's well house trained, and uh, Tyrone's not so bad, neither. Thanks, Jack. Well, go on, then. Just this once. But he is underage, so no drinking, all right? Look, don't worry, Natalie. I'll keep a sharp eye on a pair of them. You can reef half an hour, Davy. It's gone nine already. I was at Candice's watching videos. Well, you might have phoned. Anyway, you better have some supper. I'll put it in the microwave. Oh, me and Candice went out for a burger. Fine! The time I've wasted cooking today. Martin, have you got nothing to say? Well, you seem to be doing all right for yourself. You're never at home these days. You're out more than you're in. No, cos whenever I do come home, there's always a row going on. Yeah, well, he wanted to know, and she told you. Yeah, Vera, love it. Get that down your neck. And that's your last pint. Yeah. And is this battle for Tyrone? Cheers, Jack, you're a good one. No, get, get your hands off it, you're too young. Well, you don't drink stout, you. No, I don't, but greyhounds do. Well, if I'm too young, what about her? Well, it's different for dogs. It's good for them, isn't it? Anyway, you want to keep her fighting fit and looking good for when he gets back to his proper owner. Well, I'm not giving her back. And I, want, I don't want her to go back, but we don't know who owners are, do we? Luke, we can easy enough find out if she's a registered greyhound, can't we? Well, look at her, she's happy with me. Look, Tyrone, if tomorrow morning she went missing, how would you feel? Gutted. Well, how do you know there's not a kid out there right now feeling the same way? You're very quiet tonight, Jim. Sorry. Just trying to work out whether my Stephen's about to make another buck stupid mistake or not. Such as what? Well, he tells me he's got a transport job on tomorrow, shifting furniture to Brighton. Well, doesn't sound too dodgy to me. Oh, well, hold your horses. He's taking his passport. Now, it's news to me, but I never thought Brighton was in a foreign country. I see. Well, I know how you're feeling, Jim. I know what it's like worrying about what your son's up to. Excuse me. I see you later. Yes, Rita. Vodka and tonic, please. Oh, so you're not treating the newlyweds then? Eh? Hey? I am not. I can't be doing with that man. He's bad news. Well, he certainly was to me. I still get upset every time he comes in here. Well, bar him then. I would. If I only served people I like, Rita, I wouldn't do a lot of trade, would I? I love that house. It's just the type of house I've always wanted, but... I can just see us in that house, eh? You, me and a kid. Maybe two. <laughs> We've never really talked about having children much, have we? Well, I always thought you wanted them. Oh, yeah, yeah, I do, but... Well, I suppose I ought to be thinking about doing something about it, but we couldn't afford the size of mortgage we'd need, could we? Not for that house. Well, not with what we're earning. And if I gave up work... Yeah, but we got a valuable asset, haven't we? The business. Well, I mean, you have. What, the cabin, you mean? Hmm. Oh, yeah. But... So sell it. 
we get a decent price, move into that house. Then all our troubles are sold, eh? All of them. Yeah. Hey, yeah, cheers, mate. Well, uh, mind how you going? Yeah, yeah. Right, so that's going to be all right now for now. Well, I'm not standing guard over it all morning, mate. Right, well, I've got some stuff to do before we go, so I'll uh, see you back here about 12 ish. Right. Beer reckons the owner could be searching the streets for her. Yeah, well, she's right. Well, Jack's gave me this number you know to phone, like where they got all the dogs on computers, like greyhounds and that. Have you phoned it up yet? Not yet. Well, don't you think you better do it? I'll do it at dinner time. Morning. <sighs> See that dog still here, then? Don't worry, it won't be here much longer. He's gonna find its own. Good, I'm glad to hear it. I'm just a bit sick of it. Keep it away from me this morning or I'll feed it at a monkey wrench. No, you won't. Kevin, tell him. Hey, steady on, Jim. So are you this morning? I'll tell you what's wrong. It's supposed to be a garage, never mind a dog's home. Don't you worry. I won't let him lay a finger on you. Mm -hmm. Oh, I've got a five o'clock in all, so mm. I probably won't get back till about eight. OK, well, for me when you're on your way home. Yeah. And um, what shall I tell the agent if she calls? Oh, I don't know. Um, tell him we're thinking about it. Don't want to sound eager, do we? No, but we don't want to lose the place either. <laughs> mm. Mm. Half Thanks. 30. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Well? Do you know, I just can't sell it from under Rita like that. She's only just given it me. Anyone would in this place but crown jewels or something. Well, that's what it's like. And look, I know she's been a right stroppy cow lately, but I'd sooner just give her the keys back and then walk away. Are you mad? <sighs> What's the point of giving it to you in the first place if you can't do what you want with it? Well, I can do what I want with it. Well, apart from selling it. <laughs> look, I know it sounds daft, but... Rita's family. She's the only family I had before you. Well, it strikes me as a very funny gift in the first place. What do you mean? Well, I mean, on surface it looks like it's generous, doesn't it? Very generous. But actually, she's only doing it because she wants to keep you here. No, no. Wants you to keep an eye on you. No, no, don't be daft. It's true. And I'll tell you something else, it's not just me she hates. It's anyone else she thinks might take you away from her. Dirty lot. Thanks. Do you need a hand? I've done it now. Listen, uh, I'll take them out to the park if you want, or somewhere today. They've got an appointment at the clinic. Well, I'll take them. No, I'd best do it because I want to ask about that rash on Billy's back. Well, we'll go together. The appointment's in ten minutes. You're not even dressed yet. Just give us a minute, I'll soon get dressed. No, I don't worry. I can manage. Come on. So I'll see. Come on, mate. You're all right. Okay. Who are you, Jim? Nice. So, you still in a bad mood, then, or what? I'd rather not talk about it, if you must know. Yeah, well, whatever it is, I'd rather you didn't take it out on Tyrone. He's really gutted about that dog. Yeah, you're right. Tyrone? Look, I'm sorry about what I said about Monica, OK? You know, I wouldn't harm a hair in her head. It's all right, Jim. So what is it, then? Trouble with Steve? Well, if you must know, Kev, I had a letter from Elizabeth this morning. I see. Yes, she's written to tell me that her and Michael are going to be wed. Who's Michael? Don't ask questions like that while he's in this sort of mood. Michael is the man she left me for. And she now informs me they're going to be married. Oh, are you surprised by that? No. Still bothered, though. Well, we were together for 22 years. It was a long time ago. You've got to move on sooner or later. Well, it might be all over for her, but it's not for me. Nothing's changed in my life, you know. You know, I know exactly why she wrote and told me as well. Because she still cares about you? Not at all. Because she don't want you to hear about it from someone else? No, because she wants to gloat, that's why. <laughs> You're being paranoid, Jim. 
Liz isn't like that. I'm not being paranoid at all. I know exactly what she's like. She just wants to let me know how happy she is, believe you me. Look, it must have been hard for her to write a letter like that. Damn sight harder for me to read it. Look, I know there's been a lot of water under the bridge and all that sort of carry on, but it still hurts, you know? Oh, well, it's a shock, isn't it? Getting a letter like that out of blue. Yeah, but he's right, though. There's nothing like the pain of losing someone you really care about. Pat a bit, sir, please. So, what are you doing here? Come to help Gary out? Yeah, that's right, yeah. How is Gary? Is he coping? Well, he's up and down. I think coming back here is making him relive it all over again. Well, it would. Take him a very long time to get over something like that, you know, love. How's the twins? They're, they're a handful. That's why I'm here, lighten the load a bit. Although, to tell the truth, he's not really letting me anywhere near him. That's 160. What, being a bit overprotective, is he? Oh, I'll say that again. He's got the baby food under lock and key. I just think I came in here. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers, love. Uh, can I have a pint and a meat and potato pie and chips, please? You can, man. Say you what, I'm glad of five minutes on my own after the morning I've had. Oh, hard work, is it? Oh, Jim and Tyrone's the hard work. I've got Tyrone acting the final scenes of Lassie come home. What for? Because you've got to give that mangy old dog back. Jim's walking around like a bear with a sore head. Well, why? What's up with Jim? Oh, I probably shouldn't tell you this, but he got a letter from Liz this morning. She's going to marry that bloke she ran off with. Jim hasn't taken it too well. Well, he's not exactly threatening violence, but he's pretty down about it. Hey, I love 360. Yes, sir. Ta, thank you, dear. Hello. What are you two doing here? Oh, uh, we just thought we'd come and sit here if I've got a history test this afternoon. Well, if you're sure you can concentrate. Yeah, we can. We can test each other, aren't we? Yeah. Well, you'll be wanting something to drink. Yeah, please. Yeah, please. <laughs> <laughs> sit down, I'll bring Cheers. it over. Ta. Ran the Graham Club, or Monica. Oh, yeah, I've rang in that, but they didn't have any records. Oh, Tyrone. Well, if the owner cared that much, Jack, she wouldn't have ended up astray, would she? You don't know that. We've been all through this. You know, the longer you leave it, the harder it's going to be. Well, can't I just keep her? Oh, I know it's rotten. I felt the same way when I had a couple of midgets. But at the end of the day, I knew it was the right thing to do. Right. I'll phone this afternoon, I promise. What about Neil Phillips? Do you fancy him? It's that squidgy bum. Oh. Do you know who I like? Who? Brendan Hooper. Mm. It's got nice eyes. Mm. Mum's coming over. Who was Henry VIII's first wife? Uh, Catherine of Aragon. Correct. Thanks, Mum. Thanks. You're welcome. See, I told you she'd give us free drinks. I know, but I don't want to do it again. I would if my mum worked in the car. I don't care. Right, well, since it's a one-off, you can go and get me a couple of bags of crisps. Hey, kid. Tyler. Child up. Oh, actually, Shane, while you're here, I can give you this. What is it? We had a collection for Gary while he was away. The folks around here must be flush. There's a load of notes in there. Yeah, well, what started it was Vinnie and Miss Salomon made this stout, so we decided to donate the profits. Oh, yeah. That jar's been on the bar ever since. I mean, people have just added to it. They didn't need asking. Well, that's really generous of you. All of you. Well, Thanks. She's a very popular girl, was Judy. We're going to miss her. Anyway, we want to do whatever we can for Gary and the children. Well, he'll really appreciate it. He'll really be touched. Good. Hello. Come on, Jim. You and Liz weren't exactly a match made in heaven. Kevin told me your news. Oh, really, did he? <laughs> well, I think it's for the best. Yeah, well, it might be for the best, but we were together an awful long time, you know. Ancient history. Unless, of course, you were hoping she'd come back to you. Not at all. I wouldn't have her back even if she did. So let it go. Try and be pleased for her. Do you know what I would do if I was you? No, what? Buy her a big card wishing her all the best. Yeah, you're right. Well, if the truth be known, I'm happy she's happy, even though it's not me making her feel that way. <sighs> but it's... It's when you feel you're the one who's been left behind. That's what really hurts me. Oh, come on. You've got your whole life ahead of you. Well, I know that, but I don't have anyone to share it with. Well, you'll meet somebody. Yeah, that's what makes me jealous. There's Liz out there, find the man of her dreams, making a life with him. Look at me, I'm just looking forward to a life sentence in solitary confinement. That is the biggest load of rubbish I've ever heard. There's plenty of lasses would snap you up. 
Well, why don't you give me their phone numbers then? Oh, stop talking like this. You're a lovely bloke. Here, listen, I hope you don't think I'm fishing. Well, you need telling. Come on, you're nice looking, you're good company, you're in the prime of your life. Yeah, but I feel like I'm over the hill. Well, I can't have that. What are you doing later? I'm not doing Alan, why? Well, it's my night off. Thought you might like to come round for a meal, see if I can't cheer you up. I'd like that very much. What time? Dunno, 7.38. I'll look forward to it. Yeah, me too. Morning, Vera. Morning. I was beginning to wonder if you were coming in. I did say I was going to the dentist. Oh. So you did. Anyway, wasn't sure I still had a job. Oh, of course you have. I just didn't want you slagging off me husband. I vote we declare that subject a no-go area. Well, I was hoping for an apology. I can hold my tongue, Sharon, if that's what you want, but I can't change my feelings. Hmm. Well, you think and say what you want. I'm off to cash and carry. See you about three o'clock. See you later, then. I'll vow something again, is she? I don't think so. When she be looking at houses? Well, her and Ian went to a look at a place in Bolton, I think it was. Beautiful. Showed me brochure in Rovers. <laughs> Did they now? Mind you, some people's idea of a good day out in it, mooching round new houses. Don't mean they're going to buy one. No, it doesn't. Whose piggy bank have you been raiding? Hey, it's for you, all this is. Me? Yeah, they had a whip round in the pub for you. Who did? Judy's workmates, the punters. It was a tidy sum here. I want to take it to the bank and change it. I'll save you a trip because I don't want it. Are you mad? We don't need charity. It's not charity. It's people who care about you clubbing together for your benefit. I think it's a nice gesture. <laughs> Putting a few bob in a jar, big deal. A few bob? There's over 150 quid here. Judy dies and I come into 150 quid. That's supposed to make me feel better, is it? Every little helps. It shows how much people care about you. By giving me the loose change. You should be grateful. Well, I'm not. I'm insulted. And even if it was 150 million quid, it wouldn't make up for what's happened. So what are you going to do? Throw it back in the faces? Yeah. You're playing football? Since when? Since Danny asked me. I don't want to cause any trouble. You're not. And since when the sudden interest in football? I've always been interested in it. Anyway, what's the big deal? Is this to be a regular thing? Well, that's the idea. How regular? Well, once a week. It's uh, twice a week, actually. There's a train on Wednesday and then the match on the Sunday. Oh. Sunday? Martin, that's our only proper day together. All right, I'll be back by dinner time. Ish. Gary. All right, Gary. What can we get for you, love? Can I have everybody's attention, please? I'd just like to say thank you very much for the collection, but we can manage. Thank you. Well, we all thought you could do with a bit of help, love. Or well, give it to the home for retired dray horses or buy yourselves a new dartboard, because we don't need it. <laughs> Sounds like them. Come on, Monica. Let's get you something to eat and get you nice and warm, eh? Where have you been? We've been worried sick. Sorry, Vera. I've been to phone the Greyhound Club and they told me to go and see Vet to see if you were chipped. Chipped? Yeah, they put this little microchip in the back of the neck, you know, so they can be identified. Mm. How did you hear that, Jack? This dog's computerised. So you took us to the Vet, then? Yeah, on Maffekin Street. Yeah, Maffekin Street. And? And he held this scanner up to the back of her neck and this number popped up on the computer screen. Right. Hey, do you think they could put a chip in your neck for when you go walkabouts? <laughs> right, so you found the owner then? Yeah, somebody called Hardcastle. They live on Armand Road. I promise I'll take her back as soon as I can. Well, you know it's the right thing to do, son, don't you? It is, isn't it, Peter? Definitely, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll still be devastated, though, won't I? 
，喝芒果。There we are. I'll let you put water in, and how fuss are you whiskey drinkers are? Cheers. Cheers. Were you someone special you wanted to talk to me about? I wanted to ask your advice, Fred. It's me and Sharon. We've really hit rock bottom. You're bound to have some fratching from time to time, me and Ashley at same. I suppose I should just mind my own business. But I can't just stand by and watch her ruin her life with this fraud. That's what it is, though. Her life, so let her get on with it. What a terrible rout till the day. I mean, we always argue about Ian, but this was in a different league. Some of the things she said to me. You can't expect the lass to stand by while you go calling her husband. She practically ended up sacking me. Honestly, she said she'd sooner have somebody else. You did hand over reins. It's her prerogative. And I don't regret that, Fred. Not for a minute. It's this Ian who's driven a wedge between us. So, how did you leave it? Are you and Sharon not speaking? Well, we managed to get through the day without another slangy match. But there's an atmosphere, Fred. You can feel it. Oh, I bet it'll all blow over in time. I don't think so. I think I'm driving her away. Not in this world. It's never that drastic. No. Then how come she's looking at new houses in Bolton? Oh. You know, Natalie, this is wonderful. Well, there's one thing I'm very good at, and that's using the microwave. No, no, I mean the whole thing, you know. Two people sitting down, eating, wine, talking. Well, you brought the wine. It's the one thing I miss about living on my own. You've got Steve. Oh, sure, he's never in the country, never mind in the house. Well, I suppose that's one of the pitfalls of the import-export business. Oh, tell me about it. Do you know what I have tried telling him to love blue in the face? It doesn't make a blind bit of difference. Hey, don't get maudlin. Not allowed. No, you're right, I won't. And listen, um, I need to say thank you. What for? For talking to me at lunchtime. You made me feel a whole lot better. Well, you made me feel a whole lot better on my wedding anniversary, so... Well, any time you need a shoulder to cry on, I'm always here, OK? Likewise. I can't believe you still haven't made your mind up. Will you stop putting pressure on me? Well, I'm getting pressure from the agent. <laughs> well, that's what they're paid to do. You went into the house and you loved it. You wanted to buy it. How long before someone else goes in and does the same thing, eh? Oh, don't say that. Look. I don't care if you want to sell the cabin or not. I just want to know an answer, one way or the other. Well, in that case, why don't we just let it go? Fine. Look, I just need time to psych myself up. It, it's too big a step. Right, shall we uh, go back to flat then? Oh, you seem all disappointed now. Yeah, well, of course I am. I'm fed up again. Filthy looks from Wicked Witch at West. Oh, I should come round. I love that house, Sharon. I don't say there'll be another because even if there are, we're not going to buy one. Because you won't bring yourself to her, poor Rita. Face it, Sharon. We're going to be living round here for the rest of our lives. The way I see it, you've got a straight choice. Not if they decide to move, I haven't. As far as you know, they've looked at one house. That don't mean they're flitting anywhere. Well, I know she's fed up living to the side of that wall from me. That's what I'm trying to explain. Now, if Ian is the reason you keep falling out, then Ian is the one who's going to be able to get you and you or Sharon back on an even keel. Are you saying I have to be nice to Ian to make things better between me and Sharon. Well, you didn't exactly greet him with open arms when he come back. Well, is it any wonder after what he did? No, but that's in the past. I still wouldn't trust him as far as I could throw him. But your Sharon does. And if she can forgive and forget, so can you. Why oh, feel such a hypocrite? And you can start by just being civil. I bet you've not said two friendly words to lad since he got back with her. No, but I can think of two unfriendly words I'd like to say to him. See? You've got to give the lad a chance or you will end up losing Sharon. 
Well, we can't go on as we are now anyway. Exactly. But it'll take a lot after what's been said. You'll think I'm up to summit if I start being friendly. You are. Maybe... Maybe he is trying to make up for what he did. And it'll cost you now to find out. Maybe I should give him the benefit of the doubt. No, it's a small price to pay if it means I don't lose Sharon. Ian, you're right. I am being pathetic. It's what me and you want that matters, not Rita. Well, that's what I think. So, OK, you phone the agent tonight if you want. And I'll tell Rita in the morning. We're selling the cabin. <sighs> oh. Mm. Oh, here, listen. You know you said about sending Elizabeth a card? Well, I did. I got a bit stuck at first, though. I wasn't sure whether to put good luck or congratulations. Well, I hope you went for congratulations. I didn't, actually. I went for all the best, love, Jim. Oh, when I sent Michael a sympathy card. You didn't. No, no, I didn't. I thought about it, though. <sighs> Just for the sport. But then, as you say, Natalie, I've got my whole life in front of me, haven't I? Yeah, yeah, you have. And, uh, well, I've got you to thank for that again, haven't I? Oh, twice in one night. Not just today. I've been thinking, you and I, we've, we've seen quite a bit of each other over the last few months, haven't we? Well, you want to be best customers? No, not just in the pub. I feel we've got to know each other. And I think, I think we get on really well. Yeah, we do. Listen, I'm not being rude, but I've really got to help Betty with our daughters. Natalie, no, please wait. I have to say this. I think you're so wonderful. Jim, listen, I knew we shouldn't have had those no, brandies. No, 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 it's nothing to do with the brandy, believe me. Jim, please don't. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have done that. No, I think you should go. Sorry, cross wires. Yeah. Look, I'll go. I'm sorry. Nita. <laughs> Nins, long time no see. How's things? Huh? Uncle Ravi? Dad's in India, Dev. Didn't Vic tell you? Vic? Well, I've not seen Vic. He's supposed to be staying with you and Auntie Rani. Well, if he was, he was either disguised or uh, invisible. But he went down to Birmingham on Monday to sort something out for the shop, and then he said from there he was going to come and see you. Well, let me assure you that he didn't. But he was supposed to be opening the shop today, Dad. That's why I'm phoning. He's not answering his mobile. He's, he's obviously skiving. Well, he better not be. I've taken two weeks' leave to help him out here. Are you worried? <sighs> yeah, I am a bit. Would well, you want me to come over? No, no, I'm worried about you. No, 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 no. No, look, someone's just come into the shop. I'd better go, Dev. Sorry to bother you. Yeah, no bother. No bother. Hey, hey. Hey, let me know, OK? Yeah, yeah, I will. All right, bye. Yeah, well, I still say he's a miserable git. Hey, come on. He just lost his wife. So we were only trying to help him. Sometimes people don't think they need any help. What are you talking about? He's got two kids to look after. He can't work. Of course he needs it. Maybe the timing wasn't right? Look, there was 150 quid in that bottle. People had to dig deep for that. Look, he's made it clear that he doesn't want it. So let's drop it, shall we? So what are we going to do with it, then? Give it back? No, we leave it and we wait. What do you say, Natalie? You what? The money for Gary and the kids, what we're going to do with it? I don't know, whatever. Hey, come on, let's make a start. Yeah, well, I still say there was no need for it. Oh. <coughs> Are you OK? Yeah, why? I don't know, you just look a million miles away. Well, I've got a lot on my mind, haven't I? 
I'm not looking forward to telling her. It'll be fine, <sighs> don't worry. Yeah, fine for you, but I'm the one stuck doing it. Well, I'm your auntie. We'll do it together. Yeah, well, just don't push me, all right? Just let me do it in my own time. Morning, Rita. What? Tell her. Shut up! Well, now seems as good a time as any. Oh, just go. I'll, I'll tell her. I thought you wanted me to stay. Yeah, well, I'll do it on me own. Just go. OK, I'll go. Just don't forget. Bye, Rita. Bad news. Hey? Your letter looked like bad news. No. Just someone playing silly beggars with me. Again. You been a naughty boy or something? <laughs> what do you mean? Well, it's ducking and diving. I, uh, well, I was just a bit rude about the beer last night, you know what I mean? What, and she took the hump? <laughs> well, that's put in mildly, eh? Mind you, I had had a few, you know what I mean? Teach you to keep your mouth shut? Yes, yeah, certainly. You'll never learn, no, will you? No, I'll never learn, Kev, no, <laughs> yeah, not well. at all. <laughs> Want this ready for 12 o'clock, OK? Fine, fine. Pretty. Yes, they are. Rita, I've got something I have to say. Yes, and so have I. Look, we can't keep dancing round each other like this, Sharon. I think it's time we cleared the air. What? Well, we've both said things we shouldn't have. It hasn't been pleasant for either of us. Yeah, well, I can't pretend I've enjoyed any of this. No, and I can't honestly say that I'm pleased about Ian as a son-in-law. But as long as you're happy, I'd like us to make up. Rita, I don't know what to say. Say you'll come round later for a drink and a bite to eat. What, both of us? Well, of course, both of you. He may not be the man I would have chosen for you, but it's your life, and I'd sooner have you with him than lose you altogether. Shall we say eight? And let's see if the three of us can't build some bridges. Mm. Martin? Oh, hiya. You avoiding me? Not deliberately, no. So why didn't you pop in? Oh, it's my dinner break. I've got to get back. Where have you been? I've been home for my kit. I got it this morning, didn't I? You're going straight from work, are you? Yeah. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. It's ages since I've had some real exercise. So what time will you be home? Don't really know. I was hoping we could meet up afterwards. Maybe have a drink? Well, I've organised to have a couple of drinks with the lads afterwards. So shall I keep your dinner warm? I was going to get a kebab. So, surplus to requirements in all departments? Just to save any work. Very thoughtful. Yeah, well, better get back before I'm missed. And, um, don't wait up. OK. Why not bad? Still a bit of fine tuning. I was knocking on the exhaust, you know. Oh well, leave it now. We've got the rovers get a bit of dinner. Uh well I thought you said you wanted by twelve. Yeah, well it's phone up. It's not coming till one now. Yeah, well I've got at least an hour's work on this cave, you know. <laughs> well he can wait. Everyone's allowed a dinner hour. Well I'll tell you what, you go on, I'll give it a miss, I think. You're not avoiding Natalie, eh? No, I'm not. Eh? Scared she's going to blow you out again? No, I'm not scared at all, OK? Listen, what I told you was in confidence. No wee chats with Natalie at the bar, please. Your secret's safe with me. 
All right, then, if you're staying here, you can put a new fan belt on the saloon, OK? Right. We've gone through, Mrs Bishop. I'm sure he'll be glad to see you. Well, I, I'm sorry to bother you. I'm sure you've enough to do without me disturbing your dinners. No, don't be so silly. I was just making a cup of tea. Would you like one? Oh, no, no. I, I, I don't want to impose on you. Mrs Bishop. Well, I can see that. Uh, what can we do for you, Emily? Uh, well, I just uh, came round to see if these would be of any use to you. I mean, I saw them and I thought of the twins straight away. Hey, they look great, them. Hardly used. Well, that's what I thought. They're in really good condition. In fact, I don't think this one's ever been worn. Where did you say you got them? Uh, from the, the Friends charity shop. You, you know I work there. Thanks, and but no some... thanks. It, it, it's uh, very good of you, Emily, but the, uh, uh, the, the kids have got enough clothes already. Oh, right. Um... Oh, yes, yes, of course. I'm, uh, I'm sorry. Um, I, I had no intention of, of interfering. No, no, I, no, I don't think that you're interfering, Emily. It's just that the, the kids, are, they're all right for clothes at the moment. Yes, well, you know, I, I, I just thought you can never have enough clothes because they do grow at such a rate yeah, but, and... Yeah, um... they're, they're well provided for, Emily. Oh, dear, I'm sure they are. But thanks very much for the thought. Yes, well, if... Uh... If you want um, any babysitting or yeah, anything... I'll, I'll, I'll let you know, Emily. Thank you. Thanks. Yes, well, you did a really good demolition job on her, didn't you? What is it with you? Do you enjoy savaging well-meaning old women or what? Well, you didn't have to stay and watch. I bet she paid good money for them clothes. And I bet she spent all morning sorting through making sure he's spotless. And what do you do? Sling them back in her face. I didn't need them. Well, I think she got that message, don't you? Good! So this is it then? This is it. Mr. Hardcastle's. Aye. Don't suppose we could just turn around and walk away, do you? No. Didn't think so. So it's time then? Aye, it's time, son. Well. Well, lovey. Nice to see you. Mrs. Hardcastle? This is some sort of sick joke. Hey? Are you trying to wind me up? No, I'm just trying to bring your dog back, Mrs. Hardcastle. It is Mrs. Hardcastle. You know very well who it is. And I know what you're doing. Hey? Did he put you up to this? Who? Who? Oh, you need our school. You know who. Him, that's who. That two-faced, double-dealing, tongue-twisting excuse for a man I used to call my husband, so don't try playing the innocent with me. Doesn't he think I've suffered enough without sending you here with that thing to taunt me? Look, I don't even know your husband, Mrs Hardcastle. So, how come you've got her, then? Tell me that. Because he found her wandering loose, that's why. Oh, I know who are you. Jack Duckworth. Me and the missus run a B&B &B over on Park Street. Yeah, she wandered into the garage that I work in, and she just wouldn't leave me alone. <laughs> that's what they all say. Eh? You men are all the same. You take best years of a woman's life and then fling it in her face as soon as something younger flashes a bit of skirt at you. Oh, come on, missus. We're talking about a greyhound here, not flaming Marta Harvey. Jack, I don't think she means us. No, I don't. I'm talking about him and his floozy. Luke, we are not responsible for what happened between you and your husband. We just want to know who owns the dog. He does. Took it with him when he walked out. Well, I don't want her. I don't want out to do with her. Well, we can't just leave her wandering in the streets. Well, why not? That's what he's done. Got tired of her, like he did with me. <laughs> he never cared out for bear of us, if truth be known. Had me to cook and clean and her to win money. With money? Oh, she's a racer. Not that she's been entered yet. 
He was supposed to be training her up until he met Katie, the kennel maid. So what do we do, then? Do what you like. Put her down. Or oh, keep her, if you want. Keep her? No, you can't, son. You need documentation, you see. Oh, I can give him documents. He left them in sideboard along with his wedding ring. Oh, let lad have her if he's that keen. She'll have a better home with him than she ever had with Ronnie the love rat. <laughs> Drinks? Yeah, and a bite to eat. So I suppose you didn't tell her about cabin, then? Well, I was going to when she sprang the invitation on me. Sharon, you've got to tell her sooner or later. Mm. Well, I suppose tonight's as good a time as any. He won't see us if we don't look. Yeah, well, what if he spots you? I'll blow him a kiss. You wouldn't. You want a bet? No, then. Look, if, if you want air cut, come in. If you don't, stop pressing your mucky little nose up against my Windsor. I have to pay to keep those clean, you know. I ain't got a mucky nose. Sorry, Graham, we've just seen if a mate of ours was in. Oh, I see. Uh, this mate wouldn't go by the name of Tom, would he? No, he wouldn't. <laughs> come on, can you just go? Is he in, then, this Tom? Uh, no, he's not, as a matter of fact. But uh, I'll tell him you're asking after him, shall I? Ma, no. no! You can if you like. I don't mind. Oh, I see. You fancy your chances with our Tom, then, do you? Why not? <laughs> well, I'd just give it a few more years, sweetheart. Yeah. Not too long, or I might end up past it like you. Hey, could it all? That's my grand, that is. So? So, don't talk to her like that. I say what I like to who I like. And if you don't like it, you can get lost. Natalie. Can I have a word, Jim? Yeah, of course you can. Look, um, I'm sorry about the other night. It's OK. No, it's not. I was out of order. Well, I should have realised the way things were going. I think we just had too much to drink. It's no excuse, though, is it? Well, let's forget about it, shall we? Eh? Chalk it up to experience. Well, that's very kind of you. Yeah, well, despite what you might think, I do like you, Jim. And I want you to feel you can still come in the Rovers. That is, if you want to. Yeah, I do. You know I do. Good. Truce, then? If that's what you want, then we'll just call it water under the bridge, shall we? Okay. See you. Bye, bye. Go on, then. She's got someone with her. So? She's going now. Go on, ask her. I don't really want to. Fine. Suit yourself. I'll find someone else to knock around with. Oh, no. Hey, fine, I'll do it. So, we decided then? And ten cigarettes. Cigarettes? Those in the red packet. You know I can't sell you cigarettes, Sarah Louise. They're not for me, they're for my mum. I don't care who they're for. You've got to be 16 to buy them. Come on, we'll go to Inkerman Street. They're not as picky as they are around here. What are you doing here? Well, you sounded worried on the phone. I had There's a little bit no of There's no reason to travel 80 miles. <laughs> now, you just let me worry about that. Now, have you heard from Vic? Uh, yes, I have, but where he is <laughs> and what he's doing, I still don't have a clue. Well, I told you, he'd be skiving and there'll be a woman. I don't care what it is. I mean, I've left me here on my own to run this place. Yeah, well, maybe we can do something about that. Vars. Oh, hello, love. Vera, come here. You must be upset. No, I'm fine, honest. Of course you are. And I've made your favourite tea. Great. Is there enough for four? Four? Yes. We've got a guest. I thought you were taking her back to owner. We did, and they didn't want her. She gave the dog him. Gave it, yeah? Yep. Now Monica's mine, Vera. And Mrs Hardcastle's even given me the pedigree papers to prove it. But what are we going to do with her? Where's she going to stay? Well, we was hoping that she could stop here with us, like, you know. Like one at family? Over to you, V. Oh, all right. 
But I don't know what Eunice is going to say when she finds out. Oh, don't worry, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Uh, yeah. Cheers, Jack. You're going to have to look after her, you know. Feed her and take her for walks. Don't you worry, Vera. I'll see to every one of her needs. Oh, come in, come in. Ooh, there you go, Rita. Oh, now you shouldn't have. Mm. Well, it was very nice of you to invite us round. Oh, well, it's very nice to see you both. And it's time we buried the hatchet. Now, come on, don't stand on ceremony. I'm sure you're both ready for a drink. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't say no to a nice dry white. <laughs> Ian? Oh, yeah, fine for me. Right, well, I've got one open in the fridge, so make yourselves comfortable. <laughs> there's nuts and there's crisps over there. She's gone to a lot of trouble. I hope that doesn't mean what I think it means. Oh, hey, I'll tell her, but when I'm ready. Right. <laughs> Here we are. Ah, oh, cheers. Ian. Ian. Now then. Right. Here's to a fresh start for all of us. Yeah. Fresh start. Fresh start. Look, I'm really sorry if Gary's offended anybody. We can all sympathise with her. It's just all the trouble you went to. Oh, Shane, it was no trouble. I mean, the lad's been through a terrible ordeal, you know, look. I think it's really starting to get to him now. Well, that place must seem awfully empty now. But it's a good job you're with him. Bit of company. To tell you the truth, I don't think he wants the company. Well, I'm sure he needs the money, so why don't we just hang on to it till he feels ready to accept it? That'd be great. Thanks. Jim, hi. Hi. Nice to see you. Don't pint. Yes, thanks, Natalie. Um, can I get you one yourself? Yeah, thanks. Honey? Yeah, uh, no, thanks, mate. I'm already in. <laughs> no, James, no. It was that Jim's lad. He took it down from the long ball. Yeah, and not Meg, Jim. Not Meg, me. You're joking, aren't Come you? Come on. I knew he was nowhere near. What? I had it covered. It went straight between your legs. Yeah, all right, so I might be a little bit out of practice. OK. Yeah, but you're wild and willing, eh? No, it's good fun. I enjoyed it. So, do you want to make it a regular date? Oh, I don't know. I don't want you lads saying I've dragged the standard down or anything. <laughs> <laughs> no, as a matter of fact, we're a bit impressed, weren't we, lads? Yeah. Oh, yeah? yeah? All right, then, we'll count me in. We'll make it a regular thing, eh? Ah, oh, great. So, uh, do you want the bad news now? <laughs> bad news? Yeah. yeah. New team member always buys the first round. <laughs> <laughs> Very, very <laughs> one for a road, yeah? No, 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 let me. Mm. I owe you one for all the work you've put in today. What, well, going to the cash and carry? No, I couldn't have managed it. No problem, okay. Well, you're just going to have to accept you're a big help, all right? <laughs> you know, I can always stay till, till Vic gets back. I couldn't ask you to do that. Why not? Well, you're going to be hard-pressed running that place on your own. Yes, but what about your own business? Oh, they'll manage without me for a few days. Let's see. What I need is a bed. Well, I suppose you could stay at Dad's. There's no one else there at the moment. Sorted. You know, I really appreciate this. Mm. We're family. <laughs> yep, I suppose second cousins are family, aren't they? Yeah, and we're friends. Will that do? <laughs> Nins, we almost grew up together. Yeah, that'll do just fine. <laughs> Now, it wants finishing, so please eat it all. Oh, it's mm. absolutely delicious, Rita. Oh, it's not bad. I don't claim to be the Delia Smith of Weatherfield. <laughs> well, it's very nice, and we do appreciate it. Mm, it's a lovely spread, Rita. Well, you know, life's too short for us not to be talking to each other. Mm. I think we'd agree with that. Especially Sharon. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because there was something you wanted to tell Rita, wasn't there? Well, if it's about your house, I already know. Do you? Vera told me. And from what she says, it sounds absolutely something. Oh, it is, Rita. It's lovely. But it is very expensive. Mm. Ooh, I'll bet it is. I mean, it's saying everything we've got, and a bit more besides. Aren't it, love? Yeah, in fact, we're having to take some drastic measures to uh, raise the money to pay for it, aren't we? Well, not too drastic, I hope. I mean, you've still got this place to run. Uh, well... That's just it, Rita. To afford the house, we're having to sell the cabin. Just to sell the cabin. Eh? Now, we agreed. I thought you 
was what you wanted. Well, it is. But the look on her face last night. She'll never forgive me. Get in your fee well on the counter, are we? What can I get for you, Fred? You and Rita have not been having another set to, have you? I'm asking Sharon because she knows full well I'm an old and trusted friend of Rita's. Look, everything is fine. In fact, we went round last night for a meal. Now, see, I don't hold entirely with Rita's position. But she's a proud woman and she can be stubborn. But you mean the whole world to her. You know that, don't you? I say the whole world. Yeah. Look, uh, was it just paper you wanted? Uh... Because that'll be uh, 35 pence, please. Come on, gorgeous. Can you come into the shop? Your Uncle Shane and your brother, eh? Come on. Let's leave your daddy to get some sleep. I think he deserves it, don't you? Come on, then. Come on. Certainly brightens the place up. Yeah. Um, Gail, I've been meaning to have a word with you. Sounds ominous. It's just that Sarah Louise and a friend have been in here trying to buy cigarettes. I see. Well, it's something all teenagers try and do, isn't it? It's also against the law. I'm sorry if you've been put in a difficult position. My friend was clearly egging her on. You know how kids do. But it was Sarah Lou who was trying to buy them. Afraid so, yeah. Well, thanks for telling me. I'll see it doesn't happen again. Right. I think I've just spoiled today. Sarah Louise has been playing up. Ah, children, God bless them. And you know they don't get any better even when they get older. That <laughs> spoken from the heart. Go on then, what's your Steve up to now? Well, he's way down to Brighton with your brother. Did he tell you? The big crimp's gone to Brighton. Indeed. They're uh, delivering a sofa, so they say. <laughs> I knew he was off skiving somewhere. He should have been back ages ago. That's why I'm stuck here. Anita, have you no idea what's going on? Delivering some sofa, you just no, said. No, 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 no. Apart from that, Stephen's gone to Brighton with a passport. You don't tell me you need a passport to go to Brighton. So what are you saying? Where have they gone? Well, educated guess, I'd say they've gone across the channel. Alcohol and tobacco run. It'll not be the first time Steve's done it. That's smuggling. It certainly is. Dad'll kill him. I probably will if he finds out. I certainly will, because I'm going to tell him. You going to mess with that dog all day? Or are you going to get some work done? I'm only giving her a drink, that's all. Here we are. Hey, fit looking dog. What's it called? Monica. Is that the name you're going to race her under? No, she's more of a pet. I won't be racing her. She can run though, can't she? I've seen you do it on the Red Wreck. No, I was just mucking about. Well, she certainly looks to me like she was bred for racing. If she's got potential, it'd be a pity to waste it. A dog like that needs to run. I'd have made that a couple of greyhounds. Right, little gold mine. What? You can earn a bit of money, like, if they're fast Ah, uh, that's the thing. Depends how fast. Mm. Oh, bet they're a handful, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, the little monsters. Very special little monsters, though. Well, at least they're too young to uh, understand what they've lost. I don't know about that, you know. I mean, I see them peering at all the faces around them. It's like they know she's gone, but... They're looking, you know, thinking they might see her again. So, uh, how's Gary? Well, he's coping, you know. It's just one day at a time, innit? I've got the bank to fax me a printout of all the most recent transactions on the shop account. Vikram was supposed to pay in £1,000 on his way to Birmingham. Except he didn't. And he didn't even go to Birmingham. What, you're saying that he's run off with the cash? Yeah, on Monday. You really think your brother's stupid enough to try and smuggle booze into the country? Yes. Unfortunately, I do. I won't beat about the bush. Did you mean what you said last night? Are you definitely selling? Yeah. He didn't waste much time, did he, putting his foot down? It's not up to Ian Rita. This is something we've decided on together, and believe me, it weren't easy. This is something you wouldn't have even considered if you hadn't married him, is it? 
Oh, you should see the house, Rita. It's just what I've always wanted. And... But we can't get the house until we sell the shop. This is one of the hardest choices I've ever had to make. I wish you'd understand. How could you do this to me, Sharon? Morning. Well, I've got all I need. Now, I don't think you'll have to wait long for a buyer, Mrs Bentley. I know you and your husband are anxious to exchange on your new place. This is Mr Dolan from the estate agent. Really? Smart lady, this. She's selling up at just the right time. I'll be in touch. Thanks. Just the right time, eh? Oh, I know you're upset, Rita, but you must see our point of view. J your point of view? Do you know how I feel? I gave you this business for your future. Not to sell off in five minutes to make a quick profit. So you think she's got it then? Sorry? Potential you said it'd be a shame to waste. Oh, the dog. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, a form on a muscle tone is certainly very good. She's still young. You'll have to train her up a bit, but yeah. Yeah, I'd say she's a natural. What, and you know a bit about this dog racing stuff? Done a bit over the years. Well, we're going to start tomorrow. We're going places, me and Monica. You might want to think again about the name. <laughs> Why? What's wrong with Monica? I understand your position. It's a difficult situation. We'll do our best for you. Thank very much. It's all very confusing. What's going on, pal? This. What we'd seen the last of you. Don't come the old soldier with me. I'm wasting valuable time coming down here. I should be at. Uh... I should be at work. Well, why aren't you? You know very well why. I thought we had an agreement, you and Toya. You've already conned a weekend for Janice out of me. Isn't that enough? Yeah, I'm satisfied. Anyway, I've got to go. You're right, slave drivers in here, you know. Hang on! Ah, oh, Mr. Battersby, you're late. This is a wind up, isn't it? I'm sorry. Come on, I'm not daft. I can see this is all part of the game. You may regard it as a game, Mr. Battersby. We, however, take it very seriously. Would you come this way? Yeah, yeah. Whatever you say. Oh, sorry. Looks like I woke you. All right, Betty. Better come in. Right. to say that, look, nobody, nobody wished to cause you any offence. What? You know, about the collection. Nobody thinks that you're a charity case, lovey. You Where know, are they, Becky? Where oh, have they gone? Oh, Billy and Becky. I just shut my eyes for my five minutes. I, I had my arm around her and now they've gone. Look, there's bound to be a simple explanation, love. Well, they were here. Well... Hi, hi, kids. Old sleepyhead's finally woke up. There you are. Safe and sound. Nothing to worry about. Getting himself in a right flap. They ran out of nappies, so I just nipped to the shop. Oh, what's to do? You won't take my kids again, and I'll kill you. Take a seat, Mr. Battersby. Look, love, I'm a very busy man. So let's get this scenario over with as quickly as possible, shall we? My name is Miss Finch. I am a benefit fraud investigation officer. <laughs> well, it's a dirty job, but someone's got to do it. Oh, yeah, what's she up to? Having a bit of karaoke, are we? We have reason to believe, Mr. Battersby, that you have been fraudulently claiming benefit. It is a legal requirement that, when investigating such a case, we record the interview. 
Oh, right, well, I'll, uh, I'll do my Elvis impersonation, shall I? So I should begin by advising you, Mr Battersby, that this is an interview under caution. Oh, why? And what's that supposed to mean? It means you do not have to say anything. But it may harm your defence if you do not mention, when questioned, something which you later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. Oh, aye. And what happens next? Slap me in handcuffs, do you? You're not under arrest, Mr Battersby. In fact, you're free to leave at any point. But we wish to question you. Do you require legal advice? Look, you know this is a wind-up. So let's make it snappy, eh? Because, like I said, I'm a busy man. That would certainly seem to be true. In view of your condition... Condition? You're unable to work due to a chronic back condition. This is the basis on which you're claiming income support, isn't it? Oh, I'm my bad back. Oh, it's been giving me pain for years, is that? I find the best way to deal with it is, is block the pain out completely. Mind over matter? Exactly. And is that what you do when you're dredging the canal? What? These pictures of workmen dredging the canal were taken last week. I believe that's you with the shovel. I'd say that was pretty strenuous, not to mention painful work for a man with a bad back. Wouldn't you, Mr Buttersby? Look, there was no nappies left. What was I supposed to do? You should have walked me. Oh, come on. You've been knackered for days. I was letting you get a bit of kip. I was trying to help. I woke up and they were gone. How was that supposed to help? Oh, you must have known it was with me. Well, I didn't. Look, what is the point of me being here if you won't let me do anything to help you? Not anything. Anything like running off with me kids. Leave them alone, that's all. I don't want you going near them. You what? You would. Having a go at me or anybody else that tries to help you, it's not going to bring Judy back, you know? No. You've lost your wife, have you? You're the expert in how I should feel, are you? I don't care how you feel. It doesn't give you the right to get on my back, all right? If that's the way that you feel, then nobody's forcing you to stay here and you know where the door is. Yeah, they do. And you can stew in your own juice, sunshine. I'm not daft, you know. I can see why you're doing this. You want to punish me, don't you, for not accepting him? Oh, that's rubbish, and you know it! Ian was right. Why are you taking it like this? It's cos the only reason you gave me this shop in the first place was to keep me here for your old age, Rita, not for my future. That's not true. Well, then why can't I sell it? If it's for my future, then why can't I use it to get the house I want with the man I want? Yes, all right. All right. So when you buy this dream home, tell me this. Whose name's going to be on the deeds, eh? Well, it'll be joint names, of course. We yes. are married. Oh, yes. And if he gets up to his old tricks again, what are you going to do then? Cos you'll have nought to fall back on. You'll have burned all your bridges. But don't you come running to me, lady. You want this marriage to fail, don't you? Just so you can be right. Oh, Sharon, if you really think that, you don't know me at all. I've only ever wanted what was the best for you. Yeah, at a price. Perhaps a visit to your GP would clarify the situation. Look, I wouldn't do anything that would put my health at risk, would I? You mean like working? I, I could be crippled for life. So, dredging the canal is a form of occupational therapy? Yeah, yeah. That's exactly what it is. Occupational therapy. And what does the council charge you for providing this beneficial exercise? Oh, no, no, no. I don't have to pay out. Oh, let me guess, Mr Battersby. They pay you. Am I right? Look, I might have broke the rules a bit, but I won't be the first and I don't expect I'll be the last. Indeed, you're not. Which is why, when benefits are claimed fraudulently, we always consider prosecution. You're not really going to do me, are you? You've been claiming income support while working in paid employment. What's more, whilst your wife has been working. It's not like mugging old ladies, is it? Or robbing banks. And then you've sat here this morning and tried to lie your way out of it. Aye, but you were too smart. You rumbled me. Yes, I have. Thank you for coming in, Mr Battersby. It's highly likely we'll proceed with the prosecution. You'll be informed of the date of your court appearance in due course. Yeah, well, obviously you're going to have to stay on for a bit, Dad. No, don't worry about us. We'll be fine. Honestly, Dad, we'll manage, OK? Oi, oi. Listen, Dev's here. Yeah? Yeah, he's been a great help. 
Vic, well, um, he's just popped out to the cash and carry. Uh-huh. Don't worry, I'll tell him. All right, Dad. Hold on a second. Take care. Bye. Well, I thought you weren't going to lie for your brother anymore. I can't just tell him on the phone, can I? Hello, yeah. How can I her? Good. I'm getting off then. <laughs> Have a good trip. <laughs> Look at it, we can't just leave it like this. Why not? I'm really sorry if I've said that to upset you. You haven't upset me. You can't blame everybody else, you know, for what's happened. I know what you mean well. I just think that I'm better off left on my own at the minute. Yeah, maybe you're right. <coughs> you know where I am if you want me. Take care. We don't need him, do we? We don't need anybody, do we? I want you to tell me the truth. Have you been smoking? I suppose Haley told you. No, she didn't. Why do you have to be so heavy about everything? Because you're 13 years old and buying cigarettes is against the law. I never bought out. Oh, well, because Nita wouldn't sell you any. Look, it was just a date, OK? I had to do it. Oh, yeah? And what did Candice do? Shove your arm up your back? No. You're so out of touch, Mum, you just wouldn't understand. Try me. Because if I didn't do it, my mates would think I was a wimp, OK? Is that so terrible? <sighs> See, any you wouldn't understand. I understand you want to fit in with your mates, but you understand me, young lady. Smoking is out. Get that? OK. So now we've done with the lecture. Can I go? I've got stuff to do. She thinks I'm selling because I want revenge. Because she was against me marrying you. <laughs> Sounds like she's finally lost it. <sighs> I reckon she has, you know. But it's helped me get one thing straight in my head. We're doing the right thing. I'm selling that shop to the first decent buyer that comes along. I'll drink to that. 250, love. Hmm. Aye, thank there you. you. Start up. Sharon. You're the very person I was hoping to bump into. I'm very worried about Rita. Oh, yeah, well, uh, she's a tough old bird, Fred. Don't think you need to. No. I think she's got some of on her mind, and I think you know what it is, don't you? Uh, well, not that it's any of your business, but uh, we've decided to sell Cabin. And, unfortunately, Rita's none too happy about the situation. All right. I bet she's not. There you are, my love. There you go, Betty. Thank love. you. Cheers. What's up? Nout. Huh. It doesn't look like an out. I do my best, Janice. I always have. Something's rattled your cage, hasn't it? When I get my hands on that tool rack, he's going to wish he'd never been born. Who? That little scruffy doll snoop, Spider. Spider? He's only gone and shot me, hasn't he? Shot you? But you signed off, didn't you? When you started working on Canal? 
How can a man be expected to keep a family on what they pay? You don't keep a family, though. I do. Oh, don't go on, Janice. I'm in enough trouble as it is. They take him to court. Oh, Les! Oh, all right, love. Want a drink? What I'd like is an explanation. About what? You were supposed to come to the cafe today so we could talk to Sarah Lou together. Yeah, look, I'm sorry, love. I just got held up a bit at work. Still found time to come in here, though. Okay, look, I've had a rough day. I'm having a quick pint. Okay. You're not the only one with a full time job, you know. Why is it always me that gets landed with the kids? Well, you're still on about Sarah Lou in this smoking thing. Gail, I will talk to her. I've already done it. You're not being fair to me, Martin. I mean, she can be a right handful these days. I, I don't want to be always the one with the big stick. I need your help, Martin. Is that too much to ask for? Janice, it's not my fault. I was shocked. Well, where's all this extra brass you've been getting? Cos I haven't seen a penny of it. I want a word with you, pal. Oh, hello, Liz. You've gone and grasped me up good and proper, haven't you? What was it? All part of the same game? Eh? Don't come the innocent with me. It won't wash. No, I don't know what you're talking about. And I'll tell you one other thing. Our Toya's got morals. And she won't want to stay with a dull snoop like you. Not for long, any road. Hang about. Look, if a benefits agency is on to you, Les, it's got nothing to do with me. Oh, and he expects me to believe all this. Yeah, I do. It seems to me that if you've been defrauding the taxpayer, then Geoffrey was quite right to report you. But I haven't done anything, Auntie Em. Too many people take advantage of the system, in my view. Someone's got to put their foot down, and Geoffrey's just the man to do it. Yeah, you grass. <laughs> Oh, I get it. The old silent treatment. Think yourself lucky it's not the violent treatment. Yeah, well, don't blame me. Blame that two-faced crusty your daughter's shacked up with. You're the one the doll are after. You're the one on the fiddle. Janice, everyone's on the fiddle. Well, I'm not. Yes, you are. You're down that market every Saturday picking up bargains. That's damaged stock. It's knock-off. And you wear stuff out the catalogue and send it back. Once. That were a special occasion. The whole world revolves round a fiddle. You're only not because I got caught. No, Les. I am not because you told me you'd signed off and you never. You told me you were skint and left me to juggle all the bills. You even let me buy your ale for you. And all the time, you were coining it, spending it on God knows who. Are you trying to say I've got another bird on the go? Well, you might as well have two. Because that Natalie Barnes and that Tartium from Bucky's are in more of that money than me. Oh, but you won't go crying to them, will you? Went social and you here fine. Oh, no, it'll be Muggins here. Well, that's what's knocking me sick. I was going to sign off. Yeah, I bet you were. I had one last payment in that book. Honest. And then that, that, that stinking grass had to go and poke his nose in. Oh, I warned you about him. I warned you that lad would be trouble, but oh, no. Oh, no. Our Tartia loves him. We've got to be nice. Well, look where nice got us! In lumber! Up to our necks! Car. Are you off to fresh course, Ken? No, you sound surprised. Well, you don't strike me as the type who works on a Sunday, that's all. Well, me being the deeply religious type, you mean. <laughs> well... You know, the rotor comes round every so often, and when I'm on it, I don't complain. Mm. Sundays, we worship at the Shrine of Double Time. Could I, uh, mention that to your paper lad? Hey. She wouldn't care if you did, eh, Sharon? They'll not be your problem much longer. Is she in? No, she is not in. She's not been near since last... Hey, bye! You know, it's customers like you I'll really miss. You may as well know I'm selling the shop. Oh. Yep. I'm going to be a housewife in Bolton. Oh. So when you get to that altar of yours, say a little prayer for a poor lost soul. She said you'd not been near. Damn right I haven't. You know, the daft thing is, Fred, 
I left my best raincoat down there, and will I go for it? I'd sooner get drenched. Get down there. She'll sell it as fixtures and fittings. How are you feeling? Like everybody's laughing at me. Rita. Oh, the gloves are off now, Fred. We started trading home truths, and it hurt. She told me some of the things Sally had said. How I try and buy people. Rubbish. That's just Sharon stirring it. But I did give Sally some money once. Oh, no doubt she were grateful and all. <sighs> what is it they say, Fred? Oh, would some power, the gift to give us, to see ourselves as others see us. And that's how they see me, Fred. A lonely old dear who has to get a checkbook out for company. Rita. There's no could be further from the truth. I mean it. There's folk out there that give their eye teeth to spend more time with you. Come in, I'm coming. Why don't you take your key? Where is it? Hey! Super snooper! Well, if you're gonna be like that, I'm going back to bed. What, at this hour? I'm knackered. We didn't get in till five. Hear that, Jan? Hear that? Partying! Well, Rome's burning. He's got you as bad as himself. You're a class traitor, Toya. A grassy's mole. Oh, not this again. Look how many times have I told you. I did not blow you up. I tried to bail you out. They are dates! Photos of us at the canal! Yeah, well, it had nothing to do with me. Some coincidence then, weren't it? Life's full of them. Oh, you're wasting your time, Les. Look, what we want to know is will they want the money back? All of it? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, Les. They're a bit mean like that. When? When will they want it back? Yesterday. Look, it depends on the judge. He might give you time to pay it. There you go. Two pound a week. We'll be laughing. I wouldn't count on it. I know there's two of you and they know you're both earning. Oh, brilliant. You're a very quiet lady. He says it wasn't him. And you believe that? Of course. You'll be all right. They can't make you pay what you've not got. Ma'am? He's told you that, has he? Well, I'll tell you. Whatever lets you sleep at night. Come on, Les. Ma'am, don't be like that. See ya! Thanks for the vote of confidence. What? <sighs> Hello, mate. How are you? I'm all right. How's the nippers? <laughs> you're nippier by the day. And you're all right. Yeah, you know, I'm a bit knackered, but that's just part of the territory, I suppose, isn't it? But you're keeping busy. Yeah, I suppose you could say that. Yeah. yeah. And your Shane's all right? Uh, I'm sorry. I didn't want you to find out like this. Well, I had to find out somehow, didn't I? I tried to keep the job open as long as I could, but it was getting as though, you know... I know, you couldn't see out the windows. Well, life still goes on, eh? You've got a business to run as well. Oh, we can have that lot delivered for you, if you like. That's a good idea. I'm all right. Yeah, save you struggling with your buggy. Well, I can manage as long as I'm well balanced. Well, bear it in mind for the future, then. You could come in, take a trolley and do your shopping in bulk. I'm all right. I'm just thinking about you juggling bags three days a week. Maybe I want to juggle bags. Maybe that's what gets me dressed in the morning, gets me out of the house. Have you ever thought of that? Have a nice day. Oh, she's gone all smug on me now. She's got Ian. She's giving me all that. It's just a business back chat. Which I suppose it is when all's said and done. She thinks I used the cabin as a man substitute. <laughs> Now I've heard everything. She's right, I suppose. Good business is like a good marriage. A lot less aggro, I'd say. Well, security of it gives you confidence. You know who you are. And when it's taken away, a little bit of you goes with it. So answer me this. Which upsets you most, losing Kevin or losing Sharon? Sharon. Always knew I had to leave the cabin someday. And Phil got with? Family, I'd hoped. Friends, few nice holidays, a new interest, maybe. Well, we can rule out family, but what, say? 
You and me go down to Rovers and have a jar or two with a few friends. That'd be nice. Then we'll go to pictures. You sure, Sharon, what you're made of? I'll tell her. Me? I'm dead chuffed to be regarded as a man substitute. Where are you off? Climb Mount Everest. What's it look like? I thought you'd come to town with me. Mike, I need a new coat. My anorak's falling off my back. I've got a tea off time at two. Easy for you to say. Anyway, what do you want me for? I mean, what do I know about women's fashions? Ha ha. Oh, I get it. Yeah. I love it when you treat me like a trophy, babe. Who are you playing? Bob Lawton. So I'll expect you when I see you then. Do you want a lift? No, no, I'll get the bus. Oh, if I just run. You miss it. Uncle, oh, I'm honoured. You where? Right, well, stay there. I'll be with you in 20 minutes. No, 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 no. no. I'm on the way. Bye. Hey, what do you think you're doing? I have come to take you away from all of this. Ooh. Mm. Oh, have you been drinking? Oh, cheers. Well, sorry. Well, I think a man's entitled to be happy on a day like today. Why? What's so special about today? Well, today's the day that he and his gorgeous wife go and put the deposit on their new gorgeous house. Ah, today? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what about the shop? Oh, it don't matter if you lose a few customers, but, you know, we'll, we're not going to be here to care, are we? <laughs> Good point. <laughs> you can carry me handbag. <laughs> Money I spent on your private education and you're reading a rag like that. <laughs> you alright, Dad? Long time no see. You're looking great. <laughs> to ever clean that bath. Mm. Are you going to carry on like this all day? Look, I'm going to say this once, but I shouldn't have to say it at all. I'm not a grass. I didn't tip off the snoop squad about Les or any of the other gang down on the canal. I didn't say you did. Yeah, you didn't stand up for me, though, did you? I did. I mean, it was bad enough, Auntie Em pat me on the back for it. I thought she knew me better, but you? <laughs> Look, how could you think I could do that with my track record? I'm not saying you did, Grass. Not on purpose. Oh, great. So not only are we now a snitch, I'm thick with it. Well, you've got to admit it's a pretty big coincidence. That joke letter of yours and Les turning up at the office, what if that'll set the ball rolling? Have you ever heard of the expression, when you're in a hole, stop digging? They're taking it out on me. You saw the way my mum was. They're doing what they always do, passing the buck. Look, the reason they're in this mess is because Les is greedy and stupid. But will anybody admit it? No. You're talking what? 40 odd quid a week? 50 odd. Okay, 50 odd. Bet most MPs spend more than that on lunch. Will you listen to yourself? That's 50 odd quid spent on what? Beer, fags, bets. 50 odd quid which could be given to somebody who actually deserves it. Oh, I thought you had more sense, Toya. But when it comes down to it and your back's against the wall, you're just another Battersby. Now, what are you smiling at, eh? Nothing. No, what? <laughs> well, I was just thinking. Last week, I was bumming around Kowloon, and this week, I can't be trusted to catch the right bus from town. <laughs> I got you here in style, didn't I? So stop complaining. And stop bragging. I was there myself a few weeks ago. Hong Kong? Hmm. Oh, I bet you didn't stay on Nathan Road. You're kidding. Full of potheads and chances. Yeah. See, enough of that in Weatherfield. When I go on holiday, I like to relax. <laughs> Thanks for the postcard, by the way. 
Oh, yeah, and thanks for yours. I thought you were teeing off at two. I thought you'd gone shopping. <sighs> I'm going senile, I know that much. I could got the flaming cash, didn't I? Have you got someone with you? Oh. Hello. Is this your caddy? <laughs> You're joking, aren't you? If I want to play in the sand, I go to the beach. Oi! I'll take you out for a round, sort the man out from the boy. <laughs> oh, look, I haven't introduced you, have I? Uh, Mark, my uh, girlfriend, Linda. Mark? Linda, my son. Hello, gorgeous. Hey, don't be saying that. Should we get in a baguette? <laughs> How's the kennel coming along? Well, all right. Jack nearly took his thumb off with the hammer yesterday, though, so we're giving it a break today. But I've played our big space on the mantelpiece for all trophies she'll be winning. <laughs> You're a bit previous. You haven't even tried her out yet. You want to get her down the wreck, so you really stretch your legs. Well, there's no football for hours, I'm game. Well, now? Well, why not? Aye, all right then. Let's put you through your paces, girl. I don't care what you say. I mean, she learns that quick and just knows she's going to be a winner. Watch this. Ready? Sit down, girl. Sit down. Sit down. Good girl. See what I mean? Now, watch this. You ready? And jump. Well. That only works with tuna, it doesn't work with cheese. I don't know what's going on over there. You don't think she's gone already, do you? My Uncle Fred reckons he's selling up. Who's selling what? She hadn't cabin. Though if she does, he hope it don't stay empty for long, because I don't know what we'll do for the papers. I don't think it sells delivered, do they? Oh, don't worry, Ash. I'm up early enough. I'll get your paper for you. And while I'm at it, put a broom up my back sand under your path. Oh, sorry, do you need a with old? What's your poison these days, son? A uh, beer, if you got one. You, darling? I'll have a scotch. A large one. So, how long have you two been together? Oh, about, uh Five months. After I split from Alma. You don't have to explain yourselves to me. I just didn't want you thinking Linda had anything to do with it. Dad? I know how fond you were of Alma. I was a kid. She was always nice to me. There you go. Cheers. You'll be all right in that room, will you? Yeah, great. There's extra bed in the night if you need it. It's just fine as it is. Luxury compared to those backpacker dorms, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Help yourself to anything you want. So, have you two always been close? Oh, cheers, Jan. Better make the most of it. We'll be on beans on toast after this. What are we gonna do? I'm worried sick. I mean, I might be in trouble as well. You knew not about it. We'll never pay it back. All that. What if you get sack? It won't come to that. At least we won less mouth to feed with our tire shacks up with lover boy. Oh, that is typical of you, is that? Just when I thought we were doing all right. Just when we finally had his heads above water for once. We'll manage. Yeah, well, I'm sick of managing. That's all we ever do, scrape along. Do you know what gets me the most? All that money. All that extra. I never saw a penny. Not so much as a box of chocolates. What about... Will you shut it? And I'll tell you what, no matter how hard I work, or what I try and do and to make things better for this family, you, you'll always drag us back down again. Yes, love. Bottle of champagne, please, Ooh. Betty. Oh, lash, Harry. Go to join us. Can't stand the stuff. Thank you very much. Oh, I love champagne, me. Oh. Good job. In Cedar Close, they pour it on their cornflakes. <laughs> you celebrating, are you? Yeah. Oh, jungle drum slow today, Betty. Oh. Show it. Oh, well, go on then, if you're twisting my arm. We've signed up for a new house on a private development. Look, it's called the Alhambra. Three bedrooms, ensuite bathroom. Stable foot pony. <laughs> Very nice. Oh, thank, thank you. <laughs> Toast. All right. And then, hey, watch it. Oh, no hey, don't matter. We've got a real thing now. <laughs> Our new house. Our new house.
This new interest you're thinking of taking up would box in suit. I could hold him down while you could land him one on his chin. Don't tempt me, Fred. I know my crayons, Jim. <laughs> well, you've been going to the dogs for years, Jacko, that's for sure. I know that this one's got it all pace, style. Yeah, three spare tyres if you leave it with Tyrone much longer. Hey? She's a lovely bitch, Jack, but she's not going to stay that way on a diet of crisps and sarnies. What are you talking about? She gets top of the range stuff. The doggy delight. Our Vera knows the name, and she gets them them crispy doggy biscuits. Oh, right. Indeed. Meal times, aye. But in between, you got Tyrone feeding us scraps by the minute. He's no discipline. Treats that dog like a pet. Oh, she is to him. Yeah, well, he's got to make his mind up. Does he want a pal or a winner? I'll do. Not stopping better, but can have a bottle of that white that Maxine likes. Of course you can, though. I was going to pop in Gary, but... Oh, he'll be feeding the kids or getting them in the bath, you know. Best leave it. Yeah, dog. Funny for him. Well, my thoughts. You want to know, mate, too gothic. Do you know, I'm right glad I wasn't born an intellectual. Come on, you've got to be curious now. I've got trouble with the in-laws. Or should I say outlaws? Well, you want to count yourself lucky. I bet Gary wishes that's all he had worry about. Mm. It just never cropped up, that's all. Mike, it's not like putting the cat out. It's not something that slips your mind. Well, you never mentioned your family to me either, apart from the fact that you hate them. I think I'd have managed to slip my kids into the conversation at least once. Look, can you keep your voice down? Not to mention them, Mother. All right, so I've been round the block a few times. I mean, it's no secret. Yeah, but you're acting like it is one. So who was she, your first wife? <sighs> Her name was Maggie, and no, she wouldn't marry me. So, what else should I know? Do you go around telling folk that you're an airline pilot in your spare time? Look, I'm not leading a double life if that's what you're on about. All right, so I've got a grown-up son. I don't see him often he decides to visit me. Big deal. Mark, your dinner's ready. But why, though? Why turn up now? Because he's at the end of his travels. And? Well, perhaps he just wants to thank me. Well, for not going near him for five years. We kept in touch. When he was a kid, I, I took out a policy for him and it's just matured. Well, that looks great. Yeah, she's a maestro with a microwave, is this girl. You must let me cook tomorrow night. I can do anything you like, as long as it's curry. <laughs> Pick that up on your travels, did you? More by default. Mum's a great cook. I never bothered learning. So, apart from cooking and playing a few rounds of golf with Tiger Woods here, what else you got planned? How long are you stopping? Well, give the lad a chance. He's only just got here. That's a fair question, Dad. Surprise guests are a pain. And you'll have stuff to sort out, won't you? Like what? Like how many TV dinners to buy for a start. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, love. Oi, when this mother's meeting's over, the bit is off. Two ticks. Right. Look, look, look. All I'm saying is you don't buy a Ferrari and fill it full of diesel. Now, what Monica needs is a proper training schedule and a decent, balanced diet, and that includes fresh meat. Mm. Hey, I don't want to ask for any edit. Oh, come on, Jim. The lad owns peanuts. You know that. And Fredelli will give you an elf and now, will he? Well, simple enough. Set up a syndicate. Let Fred pay his stake in kind. Bob's your uncle. We might have some of that, wouldn't we? Aye. But would Tyrone go for it? Hmm. If his old mentor advised him, I bet he would. Ah, Look, yeah, ah. just remember, I get first dabs for suggesting it. Excuse me. <clears throat> come here. Huh? I wouldn't mind the leg of a dog myself, Jacko, you know? So a lot of people. I wonder if Fred the Butcher's one of them. Uh, indeed. Oh, no. Oh, don't start. I'm just leaving. Guilty conscience. You're the expert, Liz. My nerves are shot, pal. I haven't slept a week since last Friday. That's what happens, you see, when you're staring poverty in the face. Well, maybe you should have thought of that before you picked up your dredges, shovel. I had. I was signing off this week. Oh, you impetuous devil. You've only been working since March. He's loving every minute of this. No, Liz, I'm not. It's Janice I feel sorry for. You might be a waster, but she seems to like having you around. You leave her out of this. I'll pay that fine. If you get a fine. What are you on about? Well, how long have you been working? Eight months? At 50 quid a week, that's... I was 32. 32 times 50. So you're looking at what? A prison sentence. If a judge don't like the look of your face, who could blame you? So how come you didn't 
mention this Maggie woman before? It was a long time ago. So? If I was to give you chapter and verse on every woman that I spent time with, we'd be here till the next millennium. Oh, you really know how to make a girl feel special, Mike. I didn't think it was that important. You've got a grown-up son. I think that's important. <sighs> so that worries you, does it? Hiya. Oh, hi. How'd you sleep? Yeah, fine. Do you want a cup of tea? It's still warm. Oh, uh, yeah, thanks. And there's plenty of toast. Help yourself. Listen, what are your plans for today, then? No, I just thought I'd hang out. Thanks. We should get going. Work. Will you be all right by yourself? Mike, he's not a kid anymore. No, why don't you come down the factory later, eh? Then we could have lunch together. Yeah, great idea. Yeah, sounds great. So, see you later, then. You're quiet this morning. Do you want another cup of tea? No. Nope. Are you still not talking? What's to say? I'll only be wasting my breath. It'll be all right. You know me, ducking and diving. I'm like a cat, me. I always land on my feet. What? Oh, come on, Janice, talk to me. What am I going to do when you get banged up in jail? Won't come to that. No. It's what you deserve. Look, they're all talk, then. They're just, they're just trying to scare us. Well, they're succeeding, cos I'm scared stiff. You've put this family through some scrapes over the years, Les. But I reckon this'll finally bring us down. Oh, so you want me to go inside now, do you? Oh, don't be daft. I won't let them send me back inside, Jan. Don't you worry. I'm not going back. I'll think of something. I'll do whatever it takes. I'll get the money, pay him back. Do you know the worst thing in all this? It doesn't really matter what they do. You're the one that's been caught lying and cheating. And I'm the one that'll have to pay the price. Now who's gone quiet? I haven't had a chance to tidy up yet. What can we do for you? I was thinking more of what I could do for you. I thought you might be finding it a bit tough on you all now that Shane's gone. No, I'm coping. Well, do you need any shopping doing them in fresh goals anyway? No, we did a buying in at weekend. Is there anything else I can do for you? No, I don't think so. I could help you tidy up a bit if you like. No, I, I always tidy up when they're having a nap. I know, but I've got time, Gary. Look, Ashley, what are you getting at? Hey? Do you think I can't cope? I just thought you might need an hand, that's all. Well, you're coming round offering to do shopping, tidying up. Do these kids look okay to you? They look fine, Gary. Good. I'm sorry I'm not singing and dancing, but my wife just died. But apart from that, I'm fine. I didn't mean to upset you. I'm fine. I'll get off back to work then, eh? <sighs> Keep coming round, pestering us, eh? Hey. Oh, just think, as this goes up, the sale sign comes down on our new house. I know, can't wait. Mm. All right, I'll uh, see you later then. Bye. Bye. Well, you see, like, it's like the food, innit, and the raise fees. They all mount up. It's a costly job training the greyhound, you know. Oh, no. Yeah, anyway, me and the lads at the Rover's Return, we've all thought about forming a syndicate, like. What's a syndicate? Well, it's like a joint ownership, isn't it? I mean, we put all the, the, the money in to, to pay the expenses, like, and, and for that, we get, like, a, like a piece. No. No way. No, come on, let no, me finish. No, Monica's my dog. All four legs, tail and everything in between. She still will be your dog. Well, you just said joint ownership, a leg a piece. Yeah, well, that's a, it's a figure of speech, isn't it? I mean, for us, it's an investment, but she'll still be your dog. What, so everyone coughs up cash and I get to keep her? In a manner of speaking. Well, it doesn't sound right. Oh, right, let's think, let's think. Man United. Whose team is that? Hey? The treble winners. Who does that team belong to? Alex Ferguson. Sir Alex Ferguson, exactly. The manager. He doesn't pay the wages. He's got now to do with the transfer fees. But Man United is his team, just like Monica is your dog. Right. You understand? I think so. Man United, whose team? Sir Alex Ferguson. Monica, whose dog? She's mine. 
Hi, George, he's got it. It's a bit of a busman's holiday, really. Yeah. In my quiet moments, I try and imagine I'm lying on a beach somewhere in the Caribbean. You have a powerful imagination. On dull days at Freshco's, all I can imagine is a wet weekend at Morecambe. <laughs> Speaking of Freshco's, shouldn't you be there? I already am, in a manner of speaking. I'm here to make you an offer you can't refuse. Mm, curly, I like the sound of that. Well, head office have asked me to pick six candidates for this leadership development course. It's sort of team building, corporate bonding, that sort of thing. Well, the thing is, it's an ideal opportunity for people like yourselves to be noticed by the Freshco bigwigs. Now, are you in? Well, Dad's away, and I don't know where Vikram is. He's gone AWOL again. <sighs> Why don't you go? Hmm? Go? Oh, I can look after this place. Well, on your own, you can't. <laughs> and what are you saying, that I, I don't know how to run a corner shop? No, I'm not saying that. But Dad left me in charge, Deb. I can't just up and leave. No, you're right. No, it's your call. I'm sorry, Curly. It's a shame. I hate to see a chance like this go begging. Yeah, so do I. I'll tell you what, Nins. If our Vikram ever does come back, I could help you, um, string him up. <laughs> now you're talking. Hey, hello. Yeah, right, little fella. Yeah. Really? Yeah. 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 I'm sorry. It's all right. It's all right. Rita? Betty? You all right, love? I never thought she'd do this to me, Betty. Never thought it would end like this. I'll tell you what. Let's go and have a nice cup of coffee in a bun, eh? Come on, Chuck. Oh, just turn me back for a second and Billy fell off the settee. Oh, is he all right? Well, I phoned casualty and he wanted me to take him and check him over. Well, do you want me to look after Rebecca while you're there? No, I don't. I can manage. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean What anything. is it with you lot? I had Ashley all over me this morning like a rash. Would be a lot better if you stopped fussing over us. To the infirmary, please, mate. She's going to kill me. I thought you said just to wrap around your little finger. <laughs> I've not only lost a thousand quids worth of the shop's money, not to mention leaving Nita in the lurch. I wish I'd never got involved with you and your daft schemes. Yeah? Well, the feeling's mutual, because I'm sick of hearing your whinging yeah. voice moaning all the time. Ah, I can explain. You better start now, Vic, because if I have my way, you're not going to live much longer. <laughs> Badger falling out and all. Oh, it'll blow over, it always does. And what if he goes to prison? He won't. He might. Yeah, well, if he does, we all know whose fault it'll be, don't we? Hey? Well, none of this would have happened if it weren't for Spider. Don't be daft, he had nothing to do with it. Oh, really? So then it's just a coincidence that Spider gets a job at the benefits agency, and then, oh, big surprise, my dad gets done for benefit fraud. He's only just started, he swears he knows nothing about it. Yeah, well, he's obviously not doing his job properly then, is he? Because if he works there, he should know all about it. I know him. He wouldn't dob less, and he's a decent bloke. If you say so. But he's not doing much, is he? And what's he supposed to do? Well, I don't know. I don't work there. He does. And if he was that concerned, he'd try and do something to help. And on a good day, this is where the hard work is supposed to happen. Hey, if you've come to fix the machines, I've got an old one that needs looking at. You know, if I could sell all the hot air that comes off this lot, I'd be a multi-millionaire by now. Come on. Hey, Linda. Who's that lad? Is there something going on? He's a bit young to be a rep. He's a bit young for you. Give over. If they're big enough, they're old enough. He's Mike's son. Oh. His name's Mike. And he's come to visit for a few days and then he's moving on. All right. Does that answer all your questions? So, uh, what happened with you and Alma? 
It's a bit of a touchy subject, then. I was just curious. Well, things didn't work out, and she left me, if you must know. Shame. You seemed really happy together. She's still around? Yeah, she's still around. Now, look, no more personal questions, eh? If you would ask me about the factory, then... Yeah, OK. Tell me the secret of running a successful lingerie business. Are you serious? Yeah. I'm interested now my dad got to be so successful with women's underwear. <laughs> I offered to look after Rebecca, but it only seemed to make him more angry. I thought Billy looked all right. I think it was just a bump. To be honest, I'm more worried about Gary. He seems to think it's a sign of weakness to ask for help. I know. He gave me a right here for this morning. I think I'll go and see me before I go back fresh coats. Well, the best of luck. But someone needs to talk some sense into him. See you. Bye. Are you feeling any better, love? Well, the vodka helps, Betty. Ah. <laughs> Betty, my angel! What? Scotch and threat. Right. Can I get you another one? No, I'm fine, thank you, Fred. Are you sure, Rita? Yes. Uh, oh, I gave you a shot on a piece of my mind this morning. There's only one word for her behaviour. Despicable. Well, I was warned this might happen if I give her the shop, but I went ahead and give it her anyway. So, I might not like it, Fred, but I've nobody else to blame but me. Pipe, please, Betty. Right, on, love. You're back, then. That's right. Mm-hmm. Where'd you go? Somewhere nice? Never got a postcard. No way. Good weather. Well, do you mind if we talk about something else? Yeah, if you like. Got your holidays planned? That's funny. It's not just about the young guns. Fresco values all its staff and wants to see them achieve their full potential. And what would we be doing in this Ford and Fresco weekend? Teamwork, lateral thinking, that sort of thing. Oh, I don't think so. Look, I want to assemble the best team I can. And I thought you two could add a little bit more experience, worldly wisdom. Well, I'll do it if you'll do it. Go on, Anne, count us in. Brilliant. Oh, for Pete's sake. What's the matter with you? Have you not got a job to go to anymore? No, I like coming out so you can be rude to me. Well, I hope you're a glutton for punishment because I'm in a right foul mood. Emily said you had to take Billy to hospital. Is he all right? Yeah, he's all right. Well, they say he is anyway. He's upstairs having a kip with both her. They say kids are very resilient. Well, I don't know. The doctor barely looked at him. I could have rubbed his head and had a look for bumps. And they kept us there for nearly two hours. <sighs> Is there something you wanted? Yeah, there was. And you might not like this, Gary, but I think it's time someone said something. Emily was a bit upset. She said that you shouted at her just because she offered to look after Becky. And it's not on, Gary. All she was trying to do was help. <sighs> oh, I'm sorry, Judy. Gary. No, I was thinking when I was in the hospital. If I would have took her to get seen to after the crash, then nobody would have found what were wrong. I did tell her to go to doctors, you know. It... You weren't to know. I'm not doing very well, I... I, uh... I'm trying to bring up two kids on my own, and... I can't, I'm failing. I... I feel like I'm letting her down. Well, you can see, can't you? Look at this place. It's a tip. <sighs> and if you tell me that I'm not on my own, then I swear I'll let you. Will you let me feel like you're a cup of tea? <laughs> no. You sit yourself down. I'm sure I can bring a tea back. So, you were in France? That's what I said, yeah. 
And this was all Steve McDonald's idea? Uh, yeah. But what are you doing here? What's going on? Uh, don't you think you should answer our questions first? But seeing as you've asked, when you disappeared and left me in the lurch, I rang Deb to see where you were and he offered to help me out. All right. Well, you can go now. I'm back. <laughs> Excuse me, Dev and I kept this place going. That should have been your job, Vic. But, oh, no, what do you do? You swan off and spend the week sunning yourself in France. I told you, I would have been back ages ago if we hadn't had the van nicked. Whose van? Steve McDonald's van. I don't care about Steve's van, Vic. I want to know what happened to that thousand pounds I gave you to put into the bank. Ah, look, uh, it's complicated, OK? <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I was away longer than they intended. Yeah, and the money, I'll sort it out. I can explain everything, it's just a bit messy. Well, forget it. Hey? I don't want you to explain anything, Vic. You don't? No, because you've told me a pack of lies before and why should it be any different now? And to be honest, I just don't care anymore. But from where I'm standing, you've got three problems. One is how you're going to manage the shop without me. Why? Where are you going? Scuba diving in outer Mongolia. Hey? And number two is how you're going to pay back the money you owe. Au revoir! Hang on, you said I had three problems. Sorry. Problem three. Well, that is how to solve problem one and two before Dad gets back. Good luck. Welcome home, Vic. Nick's in Canada now, working in his uncle's firm. That sounds great. Yep. Yeah, he's doing very well. <laughs> so you don't work here anymore? No, I work at Fresh Girls, the uh, supermarket. Do you know, I I cannot believe how much you've grown. <laughs> <laughs> Dad won't say why you two split up. Oh, won't he? Well, that's no surprise. Was it Linda? Does it matter? No, I suppose not. Not to me. Look, Mark, it's all over now and it's not going to help anybody to wreck it all up again. We're both lucky to start a new life. Besides, come on, I would care all about you. <laughs> it's like I'm trying to prove something to everybody. I don't know what. You don't have to prove anything, Gary. I do think Judy would have been making a better job of it. I think they'd be better off if I would have died. That's daft. Is it? I think I'm going mad. I just spend half my time trying to remember her, right? How do you mean? The only picture I've got in my head is of her outside, in the yard. I want flags with the police and that stood round her. And I don't want to remember her like that. I want to... I want to remember me and her and kids having a laugh. It's just that, that's the only picture I've got. It's like I'm not in control of my own memories. I know. But there's lots of people round there who'd love to help you. If you just give them that chance, Gary. I'm surprised anybody's still talking to me. It's like you, you don't care what anybody thinks. You don't care what you said to them. You can be as rude as you like to people. Well, who's going to say anything, anyway? What time that baby's getting up? Oh, I don't know. About an hour, I suppose. Right. And me and you are going to clean this place up. Eh? No, no. No, you're all right. Well, it's a start, isn't it? We'll make them think they've woke up in a different house. <laughs> no, you, you don't have to do that, Ash. Yes, I do. Cos I don't want to have to have a fight with you just so I can do it washing up. Ash, thanks for... Thanks for being a real mate. Never mind that. Just get us some rubber gloves cos I'm not touching this one with my bare hands. Hey, you're a butcher. You're not supposed to be squeamish. I'm used to dealing with dead things. I think this is still alive. Yeah, I don't see anyone laughing. Oh, a large scotch. I bought the lager from my son. <laughs> well, I should have guessed, shouldn't I? Obviously, taking after his dad with the ladies. <laughs> Hello. Hiya. Uh, this is Leanne. Yeah, and uh, anything I can do for you, just ask. Hello. Kelly, I'm in. Hey. I am your woman. Hey, well, my love. I beg your pardon. The forward with Fresh Ghost Weekend. I can do it. Oh, oh, great. For a the minute, then, I thought... Yeah, you... and you know where that got you last time, don't you? Betty, can I have a gin and tonic? I'll find us a Would seat. I must say, it's dead good to have you back, son. Just wish you'd stop banging on about your holiday stories. It wasn't a holiday, it was business. Oh, business, was it? Well, not very good business now, was it? Huh? What was the crack? Uh, the van got nicked. 
The van got nicked. Huh. Where from? Brighton. Oh, Brighton? What in the name of God were you doing in Brighton? Well, it's getting me van nicked, wasn't it? The, uh, the trip was a disaster. Mm -hmm. um, do you want another drink? Yeah, I do. Mark seems very popular. He can handle himself. Chip off the old block, eh? Is it a problem? Why should it be a problem? Having Mark stay with. No. Listen, Mike, as long as you're happy, I'm happy. What's this? A peace offering? If you like. You can get a couple of forks. Saw my mum today. Yeah? She's in a terrible state. Never seen her so down. Did, uh, did she have anything to say about me? Why should she? Well, you think it's my fault. Les thinks it's my fault. Leanne thinks it's your fault and all. Great. You did start it. And cos of that, I think you could try and help him. How can I help? I don't know. But my mum's desperate. He could go to jail. Yeah, that's because he did something illegal. Oh, and he's the only one? Look, he's already got a record. They're bound to come down harder on him. Look, that's not my fault either. Can't you pull some strings? What can I do? I mean, I've only been in the office two minutes. I'm not asking you to do this for Les. Good. Or even me mum. I'm asking you to do it for me. Hey? Spider, it's my family. Yeah, yeah, I know. Look, no. We're in the office. You know how everything works. You could help him get off. Please, Spider, help him. For me. What are you doing today, then? Uh, just chilling. Ah, the boundless energy of you. <laughs> are we still going out for a meal tonight? Yeah. Have you got anything planned? No. Mike, it's a table for two. Well, they'll have extra chairs, won't they? Here, yeah, don't you think you'll cover yourself up a bit? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't think. He's a red-blooded male, you know. <laughs> You've got a girlfriend, have you? Not at the moment, but don't worry about that. So, apart from chilling, I mean... Oh, you know, look up a few mates. They'll all be back from uni soon. Well, make yourself at home. She was only winding you up, you know. She's got a great sense of humour. <laughs> yeah, I can tell. A real laugh. Yeah, I'll get you that knitting pattern on the way home. Oh. Have you thought about yet? Well, it'll have to be something good. What do you mean? Well, I can't just walk into Miss Finch's office and knit it, can I? Lunch. What, you'd have thought of the plan by then? No. When all the other good little civil servants have gone for the dindies, you get the file and flush it down the bog or something. I think we're going to have to think of something a bit more clever than that. Anyway, Les is far as thick as he is. Probably take me a week to flush it away. So what are you going to do? Think of something ingenious. My name's Bond. Spider Bond. Doesn't sound that good, does it? Oh, come on. You can't be late. You don't want to draw attention to yourself today. Mm -hmm. uh, hiya, Gary. Hiya, you all right? Hiya. Hiya, Emily. Uh, have you got a minute? Of course. Can I have a cup of coffee, please, girl? Yeah, I'll over. Hey, uh, I've been behaving like a prat. Oh, not really. Yes, I have. Look, it's perfectly understandable. I shouldn't have spoke to you the way that I did. Well, I'm sorry. Aren't they lovely, eh? Yeah, been up since four. Been walking them around in the buggy. Seems to be the only way I can get them off these days. Sarah Lou was just the same. I thought I'd never get another night's sleep again. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I, um, I've got the cheek of the devil, and if you think so, just say. Uh, but I was wondering if you would mind watching them for a bit later on. I'd love to. <laughs> you don't have to say that, especially. Oh, I've, Gary. I've just got a couple of things I want to do, and if it's inconvenient. If I were you, I'd drink your coffee and ask Gail to top it up. Because from the look of you, you need plenty of caffeine to get you through the day. I see your sieves back then. I is at last, I. Presume he took that sofa down to Alec Gilroy. Well, he went away with a van with a sofa in it and he came back with neither, so your guess is as good as mine, really. All right, mate. 
Mm. Bye. Cheerio, no. And I'll see you tonight. Oh, could you come home a bit earlier? Why? What you got planned? Well, I've got a bloke coming round about the shop, so I thought if you could take over here, I could show him the box round the back. Oh, I see. So you want me behind counter now, do you? Well, if you want me to sell it quickly, yeah. Well, you win. <laughs> and you're an artist. I usually do. Yeah. Sooner or later. See ya. See ya. Cramping your style, is it? Having Baldwin's lab live with you? No. It is. I've got a spare room. Right toy boy material, that one. And <laughs> what? He's now got a spot of you. What's he doing here? He's visiting his dad, all right? Come to check out the brass, more like. I can just see Baldwin now, smoking one of them long cigars. Looking through that office window, with his hand on Mark's shoulder. One day, my boy, all this shall be yours. We give over. <laughs> hey, yeah. Well, where will that leave you? Look, it'd take more than him to split me and Mike up, so you can just stop staring it, all right? Ooh! <laughs> Let's go to the car. I thought you wanted to go to the chip, eh? Nah. We could consummate out your mum, can't we? Yeah, and then I'll get it all flipping night. What happens to the money you gave you? What's wrong with school dinners? Mm. We'll just tell you spent it on drugs. <laughs> it shows me up every time. <laughs> you going to the party on Friday? Lucy's? I don't know. Well, Josh Arbuckle will be there. So? So, you fancy him? He is hanging. Well, he fancies you. So? No, he doesn't. Yeah, he does. Come to the party on Friday and you'll see. <laughs> Are you ready? Here comes the air, and go! Go? Tyrone, what in the name of God are you playing on, son? Well, she's got to get used to starting, hasn't she? Mm -hmm. I mean, once she's out of the trap and after the air, nothing will catch her. But starting is crucial. Crucial, eh? Do you think she should be chasing something? Oh, yeah. Never thought about that. Yeah, well, thank you, hon, son. OK. I know they speak a bit funny in Birmingham, Vic, but did it never occur to you that bonjour isn't brummy? How many times? Steve offered me a lift, said I'd save on the petrol, and said he'd drop me off on his way to Brighton. Brighton, of course! Well, it's understandable getting confused between Birmingham and Brighton. After all, they both begin with B, don't they? But what I don't understand is how did you end up in France? Anyway, like I said, when we were nearly in Brighton... Having missed Birmingham on the way. Anyway, when we're nearly in Brighton, Steve says we're making a detour to Calais. Where the van was nicked. At last, yes. But you never thought about going to France, did you, Vic? Well, I didn't intend to, no. No? So why did you take your flaming passport, then? Hi. Hello, Curly, all right. Yeah, I brought you some bump on the course. Oh, brilliant, thanks. What course? Well, Vic, it's a team-building thing. You want to understand it's all about pulling together and trusting each other. When? Uh, next weekend. I'm really glad you're coming, you know. I was yeah. frightened that I'd have to rely on Mad Malcolm from Wet Fish to take part. And how am I supposed to manage here all weekend without you? Oh, it gets better. <laughs> You've even got the cheek to ask that. Well, Vic, you'll manage how I did when you were gallivanting in France. With great difficulty. Or you could just pray that Dev isn't planning to go back to Birmingham just yet. Did you know, Curly, that the best way to get to the Midlands is on the cross-channel ferry? Hey. Never mind. Take me to lunch and you can explain more about the course. Uh, yeah, sure. What if they want to interview me? Well, what if they do? Well, they might not believe I weren't involved. They might try and make me say something incriminating. Yeah, well, look, I could go inside over this and I need to know that you're on my side. All right. Like tying yellow ribbons round every lamppost when you get out. There's no need to go that far. Les, the only thing I'll be tying round a lamppost is a flaming noose. Right, he's paying. Oh. Women. Here we are. The agenda for the centre after Christmas. Centre? The community centre. The senior citizen section. I still don't know why you're giving it to me. You'll have time on your hands when you sell the shop. I've seen so many folk give up work and drop dead within three months. Boredom. Now, look, we have line dancing. Boredom like that. Macrame. And we have a laugh and all, especially at bingo. Oh, right, two hot pots. <laughs> Betty? Yeah? Have you ever thought of retiring? No. Well, uh, thanks very much, Brian. I'll, I'll have a think about it and I'll let you know.
both of you doing? Uh, you asked to see me. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. I didn't. Yes, you did. There was a note on my desk saying you wanted to see me at one. Somebody here is making a fool of someone else. What's your name? Nugent. Geoffrey Nugent. Well, Mr Nugent, I hope for your sake it's not you, because crossing me would be very unwise. Yes, love. I think I've got an apology to make to you. There's plenty behave worse than you with far less reason. Wouldn't dream of saying sorry. Well, I am. I'm sorry. Ah, thanks, Annie Road, love. A pint, is it? Yes, please. Oh, hey, while you're here, you know, the folks round here, they've not got a lot of brass, so whatever they've put into this little collection, well, it was meant for you and the babies. Thanks. It looks like I've got a few more people to apologise to. Oh, love, we don't want your apologies. We just want you getting back on your feet the best way you can. And if they can help, well, they will. Hey, up. All right. Uh, now, here's a man who deserves a pint. Oh. He's helping me see sense. <laughs> ah, just a man, give his hand. Why, what's the crack now? Well, you said I needed something for Monica to chase. I hope you're not looking at me, son. No, what I want you to do is open the trap door and I'll do the running. Uh, well, no offence, Tyrone, but it seems to me you look more like a tortoise in a hurry, you know? Hey, I can run, you know. All right, suit yourself. You ready? Yeah. All right, hair's running. Go! Go! Hey, Monica! Oh, flaming hell! Eh, uh, well, fair play to you. Not a bad wee mover. You, however, are going to have to give up the fags and the chips. I'm going to have to go and get it now. You'll have to do oil change, right? See you later. Gah, been at the best job in the world. Oh, yeah. Being Cameron Diaz's personal masseur would probably just shade it. Oh, I love it. Yeah, I could watch it for hours. Shredding. Well, Spider, mate, if you want to finish these. Can I? Are you serious? Absolutely. Oh. To add to your pleasure, I'll get you a coffee after I've had a fag break. <laughs> Mr. Eugene, stop that! Uh, is there a problem, Miss Finch? That's a red file. It's pink, actually, Miss Finch. It's still a red file, but if it's printed on red, we can't read it, so we use pink. Oh, I see. So why are you shredding it? I don't know. I've warned you once about making fun of me, Mr. Nugent. I'm not. I I'm shredding these for Tim. He's out. Those red files are kept in my office, and only in my office. I uh, see. Did you read it? No. I, I don't believe I have the authority, actually. My office, Mr. Nugent. First thing tomorrow. If there are any files missing, you better have a good explanation. Hiya. Hard day. Cold. The heat went off at nine. So you really were chilling then? Well, you could have turned it back on, you know. I'll put a sweatshirt on. Listen, I was thinking, why don't you come down to the factory with me tomorrow, eh? What? Well, I've got some deliveries to get out, and I uh, bet you could do with a bit of extra dosh, eh? Uh, yeah, OK, why not? Good lad. Well, I think I'll have a bath before we go out. You sure you don't want to come? Um, I've arranged to see a mate. Some other time. Mm. What exactly are you doing here? Apart from getting in your way, you mean? Is that what you think? What I think is, you're a pretty girl. Might not be my type, but you could go to a pub or a club, pick up somebody your own age. And why would I want to do that? Because then people wouldn't look at you and think you were only after my dad for his money. And that's not what you're after? He's my father. I've come to see him. I want to get to know him. Yeah, well, I already do. And one thing your dad's not is a fool. If I had been a gold digger, don't you think he'd have sussed me out by now? Bill Clinton. You, uh, have heard of Bill Clinton. Most powerful man in the world. 
Risks it all for a fat girl with big hair. You'd have thought he'd have had more sense as well. Listen, me and Mike, we're an item. And I'll be here long after you've run home to Mummy. I wonder if he's in that bath yet. No, I'll take a sandwich for later. I'll cook you something. No, you've been cooking all day. Anyway, one for a drink. What's the point of football practice if you go drinking after? Because it's fun and relaxing. It makes me feel less guilty about boozing afterwards. Do you feel guilty about anything else? No. Why? Should I? Well, you're either working or out with your mates. Sarah Lou's always out with her pals, and Davey's always trying to get to the next level on his computer game. <laughs> Somehow that's my fault, is it? No. It's our fault. Ah. We don't do anything with them anymore. Anyway, uh, don't make any arrangements for Friday, cos I'm gonna do as a meal. And we can all sit down together for once like a proper family. Yeah, well, you're busy. I'll see you later about that. Do you two want something to eat, or is it one cup of coffee between the two of you? Um, yeah, it is, Ta. Hey, yeah, uh, how did you get on? I got the file, destroyed it. Oh, fantastic. You came up with a plan, then? Not exactly, no. But I waited for everyone to go for their dinner, then I sneaked in Finch's office. That was my idea. Yeah, well, I wish she'd come up for one for when she caught me red-handed. She knows what you've done? She's getting there. Now, she can't prove anything, but she wants to see me first thing in the morning. You'll be fine. If we get sacked for what I've done, then what would we do? We'd come up with another plan, and then another one after that. I'm really proud of you. Come on, let's go back to the bed set. It's warmer here. Not with what I've got in mind. Why? <laughs> right. Hi, Jim. How can I get you? Uh, it doesn't matter. I'm just here to see you, man. Do you know, I think I'll take that cafe sign down and put one up that says, meeting place, no purchase necessary. So why are you having your tea in here, then? Well, I prefer the company. Oh, really? Well, that's probably got something to do with the fact there's no one in here asking you difficult questions as to why you're saying one story about this van and Vic's saying another. Is that the crack? I said drop it. And I said I'm concerned, son. All right, you want to know why Vic's squirming? Because he's landed us both deep in the brown stuff. Oh, I see, so it's his fault. I went to Brighton. He took the van over to France, loaded it up with booze and brought it back. Him, not me. So this van was full of drink whenever it was nicked? It wasn't nicked. It was confiscated by customs. My van, so it looks like I'm going to get done. Uh-huh. Is this the truth you're telling me? Yeah. Looks like I'm going to get done for something I didn't do. No, no, no. If you didn't do anything, then, son, you're not in trouble, are you? <laughs> well, if you don't believe me, customs and excise aren't going to, are they? Thank you, darling. No, the great thing about these weekends is you're schmoozing with the high and mighty. Oh, I'd rather be watching the video on my feet up. Oh, come on, Alfred, it'll be good fun. Fun? Mm. You know, when I was your age, I had a different definition of fun. Well, come to think of it, I still do. Well, then why did you volunteer? Because she made me. Oh, come on. Did you hear that, Ashley? I promise you. Well, he went up... He was They're going away to together you. for a weekend. Who when... is? Girl in Eton Alma. Yeah, See, just get your mind out of gutter, lad. This is a works do with Fresh Go's finest. Good. Ashley, carpe diem. You are. Carpe diem sees the day, or in this case, the weekend. This could be an opportunity for us to spread the gospel of the quality meats. Curly, go on, man, well, you my friend. No, 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 I'll get these. No, oh, thanks very much. Now, I couldn't help but over here you talking about this weekend jaunt of yours. Oh, yeah? Well, uh, seeing as how Ashley uh, here and myself, we are part of Fresh Coast family, so to speak. Well, <laughs> only be marriage. <laughs> I thought it might be an opportunity... I'm sorry, for Fred, a... I'm sorry. It's immediate family only. Eh? Well, he's staff. Only staff. No concessionaries. I'm sorry. Well, he, he, he could go instead of me. No, he can't. Can't I? Well, yes, you could, yes. Excellent. Yeah, but it means you have to wear a dress and call yourself Alma all weekend. Thanks for the drink, Fred. Shut up, Ashley. <laughs> <laughs> Got a minute? Uh, no. No, I'm with you, Dad. Hey, don't you worry your head about me. I'm sure you two got plenty to talk about. Where's the doing? I'll get the drinks. I need two pints, please. Hey. What was uh, Tyrone up in today with that dog of his? Tyrone? Well, he calls it training, so he does. Only trouble is that wee dog's smarter than he is. She ended up down the wreck. Because I've done a bit with grounds in the past. Flattening, you know. 
The flapping tracks. Oh, I the dodgy ones. Ah, it was all about board. A bit of fun. I'll have a word with him. Give him a few pointers. The money I took from the shop. Yeah. I need to get it back before my dad comes home. And? Well, you're the one that got me into this mess. Hey, you're not seriously asking me to bail you out, are you? Yeah. Hey, I lost the van on top of the grand I put in for the boots, and I've still got the tax bill that made me do it in the first place. I need help, Steve. You're not getting it from me. No, but you still want me to take the rack with the customs and excise. We shouldn't have gone smuggling then, should you? Go in. <laughs> <laughs> Thinking at buying? Looks all right, little gold mine. Well, it certainly was for Sharon. Oh, you know Mrs. Bentley? I live over the shop. All oh, right. Might well be neighbours soon then. Go on. Ask him. Just get it over and done with. No, you can get lost. You do it. Useless you. Hey, Mister. Yeah. Did you get some bags? You are. Well, they're not for me, like, for my mum, but she's got the flu, so that's why she sent me. Her and her won't serve me. And they're for your mum? Yeah, honest. Give us your money, then. Hang on a minute. Oh, no. You can't do that. <laughs> What's it to do with you? It's illegal. Not to mention downright stupid, buying cigarettes for children. Come on, I was smoking it then, not done me any harm. It's addled your brain, that's obvious. And I'm surprised at you. It's not to do with me, Mrs Sullivan. Well, I'm very glad to hear it. Sorry, girls. Oh, thanks, anyway. You'll keep your nose out when I'm running the shop, Mrs. <laughs> oh, I think he's going to go for it, do you? Oh, I reckon. Mm. <laughs> Shall I make you a cuppa? Mm. <laughs> Hello, Rita. Can I help you? Instead of helping yourself for once. Got your buyer yet, have you? Uh, I don't know that that's any of your business. What's your asking price? 45000 for a quick sale. Oh, I'm sure you'd want a quick sale, cos the sooner you get the money in your grubby hands, the better. Oh, Rita, if you're going to come in just for a row... No, I've not. In fact, I think I've come to my senses. Oh, about time and all. Oh, I've not changed my mind about you. But I have changed my mind about the shop. Rita, you can't take it back. It's mine. Maybe it is, but I still want it back. Oh, Rita... No, no, let me tell you. When Sharon turned up here, I was over the moon. I thought, I've been living my life at this shop, and now here's the nearest thing I've got to a daughter. I can give my time to her instead. So you tried to buy her? That's not the way I saw it. But now I realise... I've had more pleasure standing behind that counter, serving folk, chatting to friends, than I've ever had from this selfish little madam. Yes, I made a mistake. And now I'm going to rectify it. I'll give you your asking price. I think you owe me first refusal, don't you? Not against selling it to her. As long as she's serious about buying. Yeah, well, she said she was. And I just think we should get full asking price, that's all. No discounts, eh? Morning. Oh, morning. Can I have uh, 20 minimum normal fags, love, please? Yeah. Ma'am. Oh, hello. You looking for me? Yeah. Listen, I just wanted to tell you that Spider's tried to help Les by getting rid of his file. Only this boss of his saw him and now he might lose his job. Uh, three pound forty, please, Ta. Well, I hope you won't be blaming Les for that. No, but it's proof, in it? Proof that it weren't Spider that set him up. Because now he's gone and risked his own job to get him off. Well, I suppose. Look, even I weren't sure. Even me that's living with him, I wondered whether he'd told on Les. Here you go, six sixty change. Tell her. But we all have to believe him now he's gone and done this. And when I say all, I mean Les as well. Come on, then. Just promise me you won't make a decision without speaking to me first. Oh, not that I would. But why are you saying that? Well, because we're married and it's important and I think we should talk about it. 
Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> so, if you see her and she says anything, call me. OK? OK. Right. Uh, you're not going to school today, then? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Martin? Yeah? Can I have a lift, please? Why? Oh, hey. You need one? Yeah. Oh, you said you were walking to school. Get some exercise. Got loads of stuff if you fell out heavy my bag is. OK. Don't mind. Well, can I have a lift then, too? Oh, you see, you give it to one. Yeah, they all want one. That'll teach me a lesson, won't it? Well, I'm going in five minutes. Anyone who wants a lift, they've got to be ready. So, can I just remind everybody that we're having a family meal today? Oh. Which means us all sitting down at the table together. But I might want to go out. Well, you can't. Not at least until we're finished. Well, we're not going to sit there all night, are we? I was hoping you were going to support me in this, Martin. Oh, I am, Gail. I am. But we're not going to have a 12-course dinner, are we? I take it we'll be having something resembling a normal meal. If anybody can remember what that is. Oh, right. But we're having a family meal tonight, everyone. Anyone wants a family lift? I'm going in five minutes. Put these in the car, will you, son? Yeah. Here. You can back it out if you're careful. Oh, thanks. Switch your radio on as well, can I? <laughs> I just want to make sure you two are getting on all right. And what if I told you we're not? Oh, don't be like that. Well, you're asking, so I'm telling you. The way I see it, Mike, there used to be two of us living here. Now there's three and I'm the odd one out. Of course you're not. Well, that's how it feels. And now you've got him working at the factory and I've just got to accept that. Well, he needs a job. And I can do with someone in that factory I can trust, someone I can give some of the workload to. It'll give us more time together. Couldn't you have talked to me about this? Oh, don't give me a bad time. It's as hard for me as it is for you. There are two people in this world that I care about, right? You and him. And if you're not getting on, then... I just don't know what to do. Well, have you tried talking to him about it? Telling him that he's got to try and get on with me? No, because I don't know him as well as I know you. I need you on my side. Please. Of course I am. Good. Well, let's all try and get on together, shall we? Mike, I'll get on with anyone, as long as they're prepared to get on with me. Hey, it's all going here. Not bad, you funny. Ah, it is indeed. That's no, because you're a dog, then you just lie about having the life of Riley, so you do. Well, she's saving her energies for racing, isn't she? Yeah, talking about that, I was wondering if you might want a bit of a help with the training. What do you mean? Well, it's just I've uh, got a mate who's into grounds. Sure he wouldn't mind you us tagging along when he takes his out. Sounds good to me, that, Tyrone, eh? Take it this afternoon, if you like. Well, I was thinking of training them myself, you know. Well, she can do that as well, can I, eh? Besides, it'll do her good. Give her some company, instead of lying about here on her own all day. Well, she's not on her own, she's got me. Well, it's up to you. Go on, get a lie, sonny. Where's the harm? Nah, I go on, then. Great. Collect the saft. You have any? Hey, Tyrone, don't you worry your head. I need to look after that wee dog for you. Morning. I suppose you've been wondering whether I was serious when I said about buying this place back. Well, the answer is yes, I am. Very serious. So, can I take it you're willing to sell it to me? Yeah, if you want. So, can I talk to you, or do I have to go through your estate agent? Um, would you mind if Ian got involved? Don't tell me it matters whether I mind about Ian. I don't think my feelings about that gentleman have counted for much so far. He is my husband, Rita. True. So, what? I have to talk to him as well, then, do I? Well, I'll tell you what, I'll give him a ring, shall I? See if he can get back at dinner time, and then that one can get all this sorted out today. Fine. Now, Mr. Nugent, I think you know what this is all about. Well, yeah. I first encountered you coming out of this office, then later discovered you shredding a confidential file. Matters which I've communicated to your line manager. Oh, but yeah, I What's just... more, when I check to see which file has gone missing, I discover it relates to an ongoing investigation and would be vital evidence should we decide to prosecute. Dear. Were you deliberately trying to destroy this evidence? No. Well, yeah. 
but only because I didn't know it is what you say it is. You know, what you were saying. Vital evidence. What did you think it was? Well, I don't know, really. So why were you shredding it? Because it was in a pile of stuff to be shredded. So you don't deny the intention. The question is, was this simply a mistake made because you were new and inadequately supervised? Or was there more to it? A mistake? Do you know... Mr Battersby? Leslie Battersby, whose file it was? No. You don't? Not at all, no. Strange. Since Mr Battersby lives at number 5 Coronation Street. Well, according to your own file, your previous address was number 3. Next door. Do you want to think about that for a moment? And then I'll ask you the question again. Right, then listen up, you lot. Now, you've already met my son, Mark. It's just to tell you he's going to be working here for a while. Now, that doesn't mean I'm retiring, so don't go getting yourselves all upset. Aww. It just means you'll be seeing him around here as well as me, OK? What's he doing? Sweeping up and cleaning bogs out like Ellie Andy. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be doing what he's told, which is a bit different for this place. Well, you can leave him to us if you like. We'll give him his duties. <laughs> Me too, right. Well, thank you for the offer, but no thanks. <laughs> Come on in. What's going on? Is he taking over or what? I've no idea. You're not right struck on him, though, are you? You've looked sick to back tape ever since he turned up. <laughs> They probably tried on at first, just because of who you are. But take no notice, they soon get fed up. It must be weird for you, having Linda working here. What, were they living with me? Yeah, I suppose it is a bit. Here, what do you think of her? Oh, well... I know she's younger than me, but I mean, there are lots of people with an age difference, aren't there? Hmm. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, what I should have said was that I, I used, used to live near him. Next door? Yeah, yeah next door, but I never really knew him. And then I moved away from Coronation Street, so I, I, I just didn't think there was any point in mentioning it. As it happens, the file you destroyed was only a copy. We still have the master. Oh, good. And you are new, so yes, I will accept it could have been a genuine mistake. This interview will go down on your record and you will receive a written warning, but I don't propose recommending any further action. Thank you. Provided, of course, you really do have no relationship at all with Mr Battersby. Oh, no, none at all. Or with any member of his family? No, I don't, oh, didn't even know he had a family. <laughs> right. Sit down. Right. Well, I've had quite a drive to get here since Sharon rang, so I hope we're all serious about this. I hope no-one's missing anyone around. If you mean, do I really want to buy it? The answer's yes, I do. And you got the means to? I believe I have. We know she has. Do we? Well, I hope you'll take my word for it. Or do I have to get references from the bank? No, it's OK. We know you want to buy it, and we know you can afford to. Right, well, I spoke to your estate agent, and they confirm you're asking for 45000 Uh, guide price. We are, yeah. Right. Well, I don't want to haggle. In fact, I'd like the whole thing to be over and done with as quickly as possible. So, uh, you're asking 45,000? That's what I'm offering. Well, yeah. 45? Yes. Right, well, thanks for the offer. I think what we need to do is go away now and talk about it and, um, get back to you with an answer. Well, what is there to talk about? Uh, I said go away and talk about it. Yeah, but Rita's offered 45. Yes, I heard. Oh. So how long is this talking going to go on for? Um, we'll give you our answer as soon as we can. Thank you.
Yeah, it's all right. Thanks. Mm. Go sit down, shall we? Mm. Oh, hello. Hi. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Have you got us down for this weekend, John? To yours, me and our Ashley. I told you, fresh go employees only. Oh, man. I'm dealing squarely with you. I'm talking to you in rectangular fashion. Have you got us down? And I'm dealing squarely with you. No, I haven't. And I'll give you the reason why. So do me a favour, will you, Fred, and stop going on about it. I shall go on as much as I like. Now then, Michael! And whatever this reprobate wants. Uh, scotch and threat. Thank you. Let me introduce my son, Mark. Fred Elliott, I'll tell you the truth about him later. You better not. I say you better not. How do you do, young man? Nice to meet you. Hey. Your dad's dead proud of you, he is. He told me so at this very bar, didn't you? Yes, I did, didn't I, yeah. What are you doing here? I thought you were supposed to be one of the workers. Oh, well, yeah. You should be sat with us, then. See if you can get Daddy to get us around him first. Well, he's a good-looking lad. Mind you think he's Daddy's. Look, it's Mike's son. It's not to do with me. Yeah, must be awkward. Come here, say. Go on. I won't tell others what's going on. Nothing, he's just come to stay for a few days, that's all. And how's he taken to you? Well, I don't think I was quite what he was expecting. Mind you, I weren't expecting him either. So you're not getting on, then? Well, it's not easy. Come on. I tried to get him to join us, but he didn't seem so keen. I think we frightened him off. Frighten anybody off you? Well, you won't want him hanging around for long, will you? For one thing, he'll remind little Mikey of how old he is. Listen, the only reason I don't want him hanging around is because suddenly he's the only thing that people can talk about. Oh, sorry. Well, he's not going to stop round here, is he? He'll soon get fed up of working in that place. <laughs> <laughs> what if we say we've had another offer? 47 grand. Well, we'd much prefer it to sell it to her. Can she manage 48? I wouldn't mind betting she'd say yes. What do you mean, lie to her? Well, everyone does when they're buying and selling property. She's probably expecting it. And we walk away with an extra three grand. Come on, you know she can afford it. There's no harm trying, and she still gets what she wants. No. No, I'm sorry. I, I'm just not going to do it. Come on. No! And you can argue all you like. <sighs> Maybe you're right. Maybe most folk would do it. They would? Well, good for them, but I'm not going to. Not to Rita. I think I've done enough to her already. I see. Well, if that's what you want. Yeah. As far as this is concerned, it is what I want. OK. Well, I'd better get back to work, then. Don't know why Bob come on over in the first place. Seems I don't have a say in the matter. Hi. Oh. Hi. It's my day off, so I thought I'd go and see my friend Gail. But you're busy, aren't you? Doesn't mean I can't find ten minutes. Coffee? Yeah, so there's the stuff for the eye, Jack. You've done your best. Hey, the important thing is that now what else is going to happen to you? Nah, just a warning. Well, that's great. Thing is, though, I had to deny knowing Les or any of his family. I didn't like doing that. It made me feel like I was denying us. Hey, that's OK. I know you'd no choice. No, not much. Oh, listen, you've got to warn Les as well. Cos if he ever lets on that he knows me, or more to the point that I'm living with his stepdaughter, my job's up to Swanee. So, how are you? Oh, yeah, fine. <laughs> Mind you, if you were to ask them at home, they'd probably say I'd gone do Lally. Well, what have you been doing? Oh, giving them a hard time, you know. Trying to get them to sit at the table to eat. Trying to get my husband to support me. Oh, it sounds serious. Why didn't you come for a drink with me and Audrey? <laughs> you think that'd cure it? No, but, you know, sometimes if you mix with thought as mad as yourself, it, you know, makes you feel better. <laughs> hey, look. Your mate's back. Here we are. Here we go. Fastest dog in Weatherfield. Is that right? Yeah, near enough. No, uh, my mate reckons she's a good prospect. Well worth spending a bit of time and money on. Hey, do you hear that? Might be worth hanging on to her in the long run, eh? Hey, I'm hanging on to her anyway. If she wins or loses. Hey, don't let her hear you say that. She won't try so hard. Oh, oh. hey, last one. Then look, Anna. <laughs> one for to look, please. Ta. Yeah. So, I was married life then. Yeah, it's OK. How was it for you? Oh, not bad. Well, we were just saying. Married life, it's not so bad, is it? Aye. <laughs> See you. See you, love. I'm not sure you'd agree with that, after the way I behaved at this time. Ah, oh, well, you're only thinking about our future. I can hardly blame you for that, can I? 
Yeah, but I shouldn't have pushed it so far. We shouldn't argue over something like that. Well, you're forgiven. What, again? Yeah, again. <laughs> so we tell Rita she can have it for 45? I'd like to. Yeah, OK. Well, that's been a hard week, what with one thing and another. But now it's the weekend, and I promise you, I won't go near that factory. In fact, I won't even open my briefcase. Mike, you always say that. Sometimes I mean it. I'm just going to nip out and get a paper. Right, out the flats, turn right, little shop. Suppose your friends had their say about him starting at the factory? I don't care what they say. I wouldn't be here if I did. All I care about is us. <laughs> We're OK, aren't we? And I know Mike's your son, you have to think about him too. I won't ask you to choose. Mm, right. Mind, if I did, I think I'd be the loser. Now, what the hell did you want to say that for? Because that's what I think. Don't worry, I'm not going to start a row. Like you say, it's the weekend and we're all three of us going to spend it together. How long's it going to be? Not long. I'm just go and watch telly with your brother. I want to go out. Well, you can't. Anyway, I'm not even hungry, so I'm not going to eat anything. Oh, yes, you are. You can't make me eat. Hey, now, that's enough, you two. You will sit at that table until you've eaten everything that's put in front of you. And if that means sitting there all night, then you'll sit there all night. <sighs> then we're going to have to, then, aren't we? Look, I? let's not start threatening one another, eh? This is supposed to be a nice family meal, isn't it? And I'm the one doing the threatening, am I, Martin? No, 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 my mistake. No one's threatening anybody. OK. Well, why don't you just sit down? That might speed things up a bit. Speed things up? Yeah. Is that what we're trying to do? I thought we were going to spend the evening together for once. Oh, yeah, right. Well, we won't speed anything up then, eh? OK? Well, why don't you just sit down, huh? It don't matter, does it, cos I'm not going to eat anything. Sit down right there. Yeah, nearly. It's on its way. Yeah, I'll sit down. Come on, come on, the man wants his money. There's no rush. Come on, darling. Oh, what good you evening. Out on town, are we? Well, we're out, but I don't know about anything else. <sighs> we're sworn to no men tonight. No. It's ladies only. Mm. Oh, dear. And what have us poor fellas done to deserve that? <laughs> Fred, nothing. We just fancy a change. Yes. <laughs> oh, hey. I see there are not many signed up for the weekend, then. Uh, no, not a lot, no. You sure to fall willing to go? Well, that means you can put me in our Ashley down then, can't you? Oh, I'm sorry, Curly. I shouldn't have it's said It's all right, Alma. Yeah. OK, Fred, you win. I'll put you down. Both of us? Yes, both of you. Good man. Speaking very squarely. Oh, Fred, spare me all that, will you? I'll put you down, both of you. Vinny, when you're ready, will you? You know why I do a tie your aunt for, hm? Oh, yeah. Well, you're lucky. You never lost Spider's job. I'm lucky. He's the one who's getting me prosecuted. No, he isn't. And what's more, he tried to cover up for you by getting rid of your foul. And that's how he nearly got the sack himself. I don't believe this. Well, you'll just have to. And another thing you'll have to do, don't be going in there talking to him. Because he had to make out he didn't know you, or else they'd have cottoned on to what he were up to. So all I have to do is walk in there and go, all right, spider me, old mate. And he gets the chop, does he? Les. Well, I'm glad you told me that. Cheers. <laughs> Well, um, I just wanted to tell you that, yeah, we're happy to accept your offer. Well, I'm glad about that. So I'll ring the estate agent tomorrow and ask them can they be as quick as they can. And what about Ian? Ian? Is he in agreement with this? Because, to be honest, I got the impression he wasn't. In fact, I thought if you did come back at all, it would be to tell me that the price had gone up. Oh, no. No, not like that. Hey, I feel bad enough as it is already without rubbing it in. So, anyway, uh, there it is. If you want it back, then it's yours. Oh, thanks, Mum. That was terrific. So can we go now? We'll wait for David to finish, shall we? 
Can you not eat quicker than that? No. Leave him alone. It's only me. Uh, Hi. Grandma! Oh, well, this is nice. Everybody's sat down together. Anyway, I've come to take your mum away because she's coming out for a drink with me and Alma. You are? After saying I can't go out? Yeah, but not tonight. Alma said she saw you at dinner. No, it wasn't tonight. Well, if you're going out, I'm going out. Yeah, well, we have all just about finished, haven't we? Well, can I go and watch television? Oh, no. Oh, come on, love. We have all just finished. Yeah, and what an effort it's been, hasn't it? Having to spend what must be what? 15 minutes together? Yeah, well, if it's been an effort, maybe that's the reason. <laughs> hey, flaming mood you've been in. Oh, dear, what's the matter? I haven't spoiled your meal, have I? No. Spoiled already. Spoiled before it started. Not just eating together. We don't even want to live together anymore. Good girl. Hey. Eh? So then, what do you think, Vinny, lad? Well, I'll uh, have to get my hands on a stopwatch to know for sure. Eh? Mm. Yay, Tyrone, you're a marvel. See, go and pop kettle on, there's a good lad. We can't have breakfast without lubrication. No, they're not for you, the monikers. They're a favourite. See, lad, they'll make her fat. And a fat greyhound is as much use to us as a... As a fat uh, greyhound? Exactly. If you give it too many of them, we'll be rolling around track instead of racing her. Oh, Vinny. Now, what I want to ask is, will I be getting in return on this investment of mine? Of course you will. I mean, you've seen how good she was. Mm. Hey, hey, let's not get carried away. I'm not denying she's fast, but she needs technique and all. How do you mean, Ben? Well, we need to find out if she can handle track conditions. And how do you propose we do that? Leave it to me. I'll sort some of it out. <laughs> what time will you be back? Don't know. Probably pop in for a pint after the game. Is that a problem? Why should it be a problem? I'm not going to make Sunday dinner. Not after my last attempt at a family meal. So, what are my two favourite girls up to today, then? I thought we'd go into town and get a burger. What do you say, Sarah Lou? Oh, can we go shopping as well? And what for? I really need some new shoes. Oh, yeah? And what's wrong with the ones you've got on? <gasps> no one wears these. It's embarrassing. Well, we're not made of money, you know. Martin? Oh, don't ask me. I don't know anything about girls' shoes. You're just tight. What? What did you say? Forget it, I'll buy them myself. What, with? I don't know, I'll get myself a part-time job or something. Oh, you will, will you? You're only 13, Sarah Lou. Oh, can't be that hard to get a job. You don't need a degree to bought a bap to make tea, do you? You little... I work my fingers to the bone for you, okay, Lotte. Okay. Oh, I'm not having a speaking to me like that, Martin. Come back here. Why is she so grumpy? I don't know. She's just tired. She doesn't mean it. Here. Go and spend it wisely. Thanks, Martin. Okay. Hey, and whatever you do, don't tell your mother. How was that on the phone? Mm -hmm. There's some tax problem with Uncle Roger's will, mm -hmm. and he's going to have to stay in Bombay and sort it out. So? We can cope. Um, Dev, he'd like you to stay on and manage the shop, if that's OK. <laughs> he what? Yeah, whatever Ravi wants, OK? Look, I'm just happy to help. Oh, right, listen, I better get to the cash and carry. Hold the fort, will you, Vic? <laughs> What's Dad playing at putting Dev in charge? You can hardly blame him, Vic. You've not exactly turned out to be manager of the month, have you? Yes, Mr. Elliot. What can I do for you? I want a large packet of your finest antacid tablets. Oh, dear. You suffering from indigestion? I'm planning to. Uh, forward with fresh calls. You know these corporate dues. Mm -hmm. Power breakfast, complimentary champagne. I think we might be expected to do a bit of work, you know. Oh, I've no doubt we'll be given a quiz on retail management or some such nonsense. Mm -hmm. and then, of course, there'll be the usual role-playing, won't there? Yes. Ham rolls, cheese rolls, and all kinds of bar snacks. How was these frescoes do you on about? Thanks. Yes, my love. Oh, she's been telling me it's going to be all work, isn't it? Oh, these business seminars, they're just an excuse for certain executives to have extramarital activities, if you catch me drift. You are? You mark my words. 
It'll be more like an extended Christmas party than work. Oh, she told me it was a training course. Yes, certainly. Three courses a night with wine. Oh, that reminds me. Has our Ashley got her dinner suit? Do you think this is big enough? Uh, 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 uh. Okay, love, see you later. Oh, hello, love it. Hi. Your dad and his girlfriend left you to fend for yourself, have they? Oh, well, that's all right, Audrey. I'm a big boy now. Oh, yeah, time flies, though, doesn't it, sir? <laughs> oh, you've got to meet Tom. Tom! Such a lovely boy, Audrey? Now, Tom, this is Mark. Uh, Mark Redman. He's Mike Baldwin's son. All right, mate. Hiya. Hi. Oh, fancy. Sit down and get to know each other. Honestly, you young folk, you've got no social graces, have you? I'll see you later. Bye bye. Can I uh, get you a drink then? Uh, yeah, cheers. I'll have a bottle of lager, please. Right. So. I don't suppose they found any buyers for a cabin yet. You know, shall I be lucky to shift it before spring? Oh, they've got their buyer, all right. They didn't waste any time, did they? No, I didn't. Oh, well, don't look at me like that, Fred Elliot. Well, what were you thinking of? I was thinking that. I don't want to spend the rest of my day shuffling between whist drives and jumble sales like the rest of the old dears round here. And if buying the cabin back from Sharon means back to the early morning, back to the graft, it's a price I'm willing to pay. <sighs> Do you know, when I first took over from Rita, I had such grand ideas for this place. Double the turnover, make it the best news agents in the area. Well, now, I just see it for what it is. A crummy little shop in a crummy little back street. That's a good job Rita don't think like that. Aye, she loves it. I just feel like I've been wasting my time. Oh, come on. You're coming away with a pile of money. It not be that bad. Aye, but it's leaving a really bad taste in my mouth. Sarah Louise, what can I get you? I'd like to put a card in the window, please. All oh, right. Well, 50 pence a week. It's blank. What do you want to do? Sell summit? Yeah, myself. Um, I like to do odd jobs or babysitting or summit. Babysitting? Well, I wouldn't price yourself too low, love. Oh, I don't really care what I do. I just need the money. Hmm. How old are you? 13. Well, I might have summit going, but it's not up to me now. Oh, please, Sharon, I really need the money. No, no, it's only a paper round, but... See, our lads have gone down with flu, so I'm a bit short. It'll only be a trial, mind. That's great, really great. <laughs> All right, then. <laughs> hey, you have checked this working thing out with your mum and dad, haven't you? Yeah, um, yeah, my mum suggested it in the first place. All right, good. OK, okay then we'll um, see you tomorrow morning, 7 o'clock sharp. Looks like you've got yourself a job. <laughs> All right, see ya. Hello. There you go. Thanks. And, uh, get one for yourself. Thanks. Well, she's a bit of all right. You can do better for yourself than that, son. So, come on, what's he been telling you? What a lousy father I've been. No, not at all. He's just saying I'm pleased just to be back. Really? He said that. <laughs> oh. That Michael's fit to burst me a prize over that lad. Funny, isn't it, Fred? Twelve months ago, I felt exactly the same way about Sharon. You've been out to break yourself so far. Maybe. But look where it all comes down to, Fred. Money. Do you fancy another one? I think I'm entitled to drown me sorrow. Oh, I'd love to, but my presence is expected on Red Wreck. What for? I'm going to see a man about a dog. Hiya, Maxime! Yeah, I want a word with you. 
Ah, oh, what's the matter? This luxury trip, that's what's the matter. You told me it was a training exercise. It is. That's not what I hear. You tell him, sweetheart, do you? Yeah, him and Nita have been talking about all sorts. Free bar, swimming pool, saunas. Don't be daft, it's a work thing. Kelly oh, Road, I don't want to go anyway. Here's the man himself. Ask him why he's dragging his employees away on luxury breaks. Yeah, really? What is this luxury holiday? How many times do I have to explain it's not a holiday, it's a leadership course dealing with effective managerial strategies and interpersonal relationships? Yeah, that's what I'm worried about. Want another? No, nah, I'm all right, on. thanks, mate. Go on, I'm on for the road. Nah, best not. Anyway, haven't you got home to go to? I bet Gail's got the roast spuds waiting. You're joking. Well, I best get off. Kevin's got the girls, and I promised I'd cook her a slap up supper. And I tell you, what a woman wouldn't do for my lasagna. It's not worth thinking about. See you later. Come on, Fred! Sorry, sorry, unavoidably delayed. Hello, little Monica! Yeah, Fred, Fred, we're just about to start, all right? Now, it's your job to release Monica. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. She's yeah. ready to go. I said she's got the window, but what's it? Right. Come on. I'll sell the corner right. before we start. Ready? Ready. Set. Get. Go! Go! Go on, Monica! Go on! Look at her! Go on! Go. You're going to have to go up that tree and get that. I'm not going up there. Did you see that acceleration? She was amazing. Look, Jack Tyrone's set up again. Yeah. This time it's got to go lots further because that dog is a flyer. <coughs> oh, look at the state of that. What's Alvira going to say? Oh, when Monica wins, we'll be able to buy hundreds of pairs of slippers for Vera. I knew you were the champion, girl. <laughs> Salmon steaks. I'm going to defrost them. Oh, Martin, I was saving those for a special occasion. Don't waste them. Well, this is a special occasion. Because I'm going to cut you something nice. You're going to put your feet up. And we're going to spend some time together. Is that wise? Yeah, of course it is. Oh, come on, Gail. Kids are out. House is empty. I've got no excuses. And anyway... I want to make things up to you for the other night. You don't have to make things up to me, Martin. Yeah, I do. I was out of order. I just didn't realise what what the other night meant to you. I just wanted a night without rows, that's all. Yeah, I know. And I should have realised. Why don't I nip out later? Get us a bottle of wine? OK. Sounds good to me. In fact, why don't you pop down to the Rovers and take your time? Because then I can transform this humble abode into a bistro <laughs> and be completely at your service. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, trot. Very <laughs> sense. There you are. I wondered where you'd got to. Yeah, that my love, this dog has got the makings of a champion. Monica? Uh, no. Oh, you should have seen her, Vera. At times, we were getting faster and faster and faster. I hardly believe it myself, but there's no doubt about it. This dog has real potential. I think this calls for a celebrated stiffener. Now, what do you say, Jack? I could just do with one. Got his all round. Leave it to me. Right. You're looking for something, Vera? Do you know, it's the strangest thing I could have sworn I'd missed. Vera like... loves sitting out and sit down and just thinking about counting the money rolling in. <laughs> Well, if you say so. Yeah, you've got a lot of pressure on you, Gail, what with the cafe and the kids. Yeah, but there's no point blaming Martin for everything, is there? Anyway, tonight I'm going to get things back on track with him. He's making an effort, so the least I can do is join him. I do love him, Alma. Well, of course you do. 
Even if I don't always show it. There you are. There's your red wine, and there's your bitter. 350. Thanks, Betsy, and one for yourself. I don't want your money. I know where it comes from. Sorry? Obviously, you're not, are you? I mean, you've taken the cabin from Rita, and now you're selling it from under her. Betty, you don't know what you're talking about. Don't kid yourself. She treated you like a daughter. You've left her high and dry. She's devastated. Oh, uh, but not too devastated to do business with us, eh? Here's a bit of gossip for you, Betty. Rita's put in an offer for cabin. Yeah, she's so gonna buy it back. So you can run on that for a couple of weeks, can't you? Did you want something, Spider, or is it the aftershave? Uh, no, no, well, we... Yeah, um... Look, if you want any help with your benefits and that, sorting them out, well, I'm your man, yeah? No, well, I'm fine, thanks. Y yeah, but, I mean, I, I could help you with them, you know. Or I could pick up some forms from work and drop them into you, yeah? Yeah, well, Yeah, whatever. Thanks, Spider. You just lost me a customer. I was only trying to help. Oh, that looks like the last of them. Mm. Where's Vic? I don't know. That boy could sky for England. I mean, there's no wonder Dad didn't leave him in charge of the shop, is there? Come on, he's a good lad. He's yeah. just a little bit spoiled, you know, younger son and all that. Mm. Look, once you get off, hmm? Oh, are you sure? Yeah, come on, you look shattered. Oh, Dev, thank you. I could do with an early night. OK. Mm. Mm. Take care. Take care. Listen, Nins, thanks for your help. OK. Where's she off to? Uh home. And what about me? I've been stuck in here all day too, you know. Yeah, yeah, you have, you have. But uh, your sister's been here out of the goodness of her heart, whereas you, my son, you work here. What are you doing? Cashing up. What does it look like? No, that won't be necessary, mate. I do the cashing up now. Look, I'll tell you what. Since you're, since you're looking for something to do, there's a broom in the back room. So why don't you give the place a quick sweep before closing? Hmm? Just you go home and enjoy yourself and remember. And let Martin do the work. I you will. Go on. Yeah. And thanks for listening to me. Yeah. Go on. <laughs> Hi, Mum. Can't stop. Oh, all right. I'll see you later. Hi. Oh, oh. Betty, Betty, please. A large TNT. My feet are killing. Oh. Hey, what's that? That, Betty, is the publicity for the Council Millennium Do. Come on, Spider Alma, right. Ken, grab a leaf. Hey, hey, hey. Can I give my pound a ticket? You must be joking. No, it's very good value, Betty. I mean, there's going to be fun. Works. Uh, live music, Tom Bowler. Nobody is going to go home empty handed. I've got more than a flaming raffle for that sort of money. Oh, it does seem a bit steep. Ken, this is a very high quality event. I mean, come on. If you want to see the new millennium in with a can of beer and a packet of old peanuts, that's your choice. Thanks, Ken. Uh, uh, yeah, but what if you can't afford the 25 quid, eh? <laughs> then you won't get in. And um, <laughs> don't mean to be rude, Spider, but there is a dress code. <laughs> Excuse me, Audrey, I, I don't mean to interrupt, but no, I do on. have a few concerns myself. OK. For instance, what, what kind of refreshments will be included? Well, I believe there is a finger buffer, Ooh. and, of course, the VIP tent will be offering a, a, a very good sit-down to A VIP tent? No doubt, full of the usual suspects. Mm. It will be invitation only, yes. Oh. I, well, I thought the Millennium was supposed to be an event to bring folk together. To to unite them in one big celebration, doesn't this go against all that? No, yeah, too right, Roy. We should be finding a way so everyone can come, regardless of what they earn or what they're wearing or who they know. An open invitation at a party for the world. Yeah, well, that's what I think, any road. Yeah, you know, this feels like the first time I've sat down all week I've been so busy. Yeah, I know. I've not helped things. Hiding away at football training. Huh. Well, it's not been a happy home for you to come back to, has it? With me and Sarah Lou. I know. Puberty, eh? It was just the acne I could cope, but, well... That's the attitude that goes with it. Well, it's like you say. She's a good kid, really. Mm. They both are. Although, in saying that... I'm really glad they're not here now. Me too. It's nice to be just the two of us. Talking. No. 
I missed it. I miss you. Me too. You were... You were fantastic, Roy. You had all the charisma of the great leaders, Nelson Mandela, the Dalai Lama. Roy Crawford. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I've been thinking, um, maybe we don't need the council to organise a Millennium Party for us. Maybe we could do it ourselves. Yes. It's only too easy to knock, isn't it? I mean, if we don't like their idea, we should come up with an alternative. Yeah, by the people, for the people. I like that. Yeah, but where would we have it? Well, we should have a street party, because that's where everybody ends up New Year's Eve anyway. Yeah, yeah, an open okay. air celebration with, with, with the bonfire and bunting across the street. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, well, you know, Roy, when yeah, he's got permission to be stupid, he's not the bonfire. Oh, no, no. Hey, where have you been hiding since you got back? Hiding? I've been working, like I always do. Yeah, well, then you can take me out. Forget all them hours slaving over a hot till. I think it's funny, do you? Me being stuck behind that counter day after day, being treated like some kind of skivvy. Oh, poor Vic. See, you're all the same, you lot. None of you take me seriously. It should be me running that shop, not Dev. Yeah, all right, calm down. <laughs> we'll just get off my case, then. Hey, don't you have a go at me, unless you're out for a drink. <laughs> yeah, we'll save your breath, don't you? Coffee? Couldn't manage another thing. Mm. It's just perfect. You know, um, something to be said for all this football training. Oh, yeah. You mean? Sportsman's muscles? Mm. Oh. Well, apparently some women say it's a turn-on. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Great timing, Sarah Lou. Hiya. Hiya. Have a good day. Yeah, it's all right. Um, I'm going to go and have a bath. OK. What are those? Shoes. I can see that. Where did you get them from? Oh, I went um, shopping this afternoon. And who paid for them? Martin? OK. So I gave her 20. I had some saved up already. You gave her 20 pounds? He only gave it because you... Was I don't want to hear another word from you. Get to oh, bed. It's not I fair. said get to bed! You gave her 20 pounds behind me back. Gail, get her a grip. It's only a pair of shoes. It's a lot more than that, Martin, and you know it. You deliberately undermine me. Oh, come on. Let's not spoil tonight. It's already spoiled, Martin. We spoiled the minute you gave her money behind me back. Gail, don't start. Let's think I'm crazy falling for this. Candles, a nice meal, a bit of affection. What are you on about? It's all part of the same problem, Martin. The vasectomy. <sighs> you sneaking money to Sarah Lou, deliberately making a fool of me. How can I trust you when you do things like that? Ah, the vasectomy. I might have known you'd have brought that up again. And I'll keep bringing it up until you do something about it. <laughs> and until then, you stick to your side of the bed and keep your hands to yourself, because mm. nothing's changed. Yeah. Do you hear me? Martin, call Sarah Lou, will you? We're going to be late. She's not upstairs. She's not in the garden. Do you know where she is, David? David, I'm talking to you. No. Well, where is she? Hmm? Uh, ring Candice's house, will you? What for? Well, she might be at Candice's. She could be anywhere, Gail. I know that, Martin. That's why I'm worried. She might be at the shop or something. What's this? Want to work? Back at breakfast? Do you know what this is, David? I said to not tell you. Hi up. Panic over. Here she is. Where have you been? Did you find the note? I've got a paper round mornings and evenings, 20 quid a week. Oh. Well, I'm sorry you can forget that. Why? Because I don't want you wandering the streets in the dark for a start. I wasn't wandering. Well, I'm sorry. You should have discussed it with me and Martin first. Shouldn't she, Martin? Yeah. Your mother's right. 
Hey, yeah, love. And your toast is to follow. Thank you. <laughs> mm. Is that else you want, Cobb? No, thanks. No, right, right. What are you doing? I'm looking for my slipper. Your slipper? Look, I think somebody's pinched my slipper. It'll be somebody with one leg. Look, there's some very funny people knocking around, you know. The pinched clothes off washing lines, you know, women's things, you know. No, no, you, you look funny in the bin by mistake. Well, why would I do that? Because your memory's going. Look, there's no wrong with my memory. Somebody's pinched my slipper and I'm going to get to the bottom of it. Morning. Morning, son. Here, come here. You haven't seen it, have you? Seen what? My slipper. No, he hasn't. You've not seen those of it, have you, son? No, I haven't seen a thing. We can't wrap her in cotton wool, can we? She's got mates that do paper hands. Yeah, I know that, and I can see why she's upset. So what's the answer? <laughs> Drive around in a car? <laughs> I'm not the only one who worries. I never said you was. No, but I'm always the one who has to voice it. Why don't you ever back me up, Martin? Oh, I do. Only when I ask you. <sighs> you know, I might have known it'd be my fault. Every time we have a discussion, it always ends up the same. Anyway, it's got nothing to do with the kids. This is more to do with last night. Morning. Morning. Cheers, mate. Stephen. Could that be what you're waiting for, young man? Customers and exercises, is it? <coughs> yep. <sighs> There's not the good news or the bad news. Well, I'll tell you the truth, I've forgotten what good news is at all. Well, the good news is they're not going to prosecute. Well, I'd say you're a very lucky boy. I haven't finished yet. You want me to give him 600 quid to get me van back? Well, so what? Compared to being banged up, I don't call that bad news at all. It is if you haven't got 600 quid. Hey, before you ask, the answer is no. See you there. Well, it didn't just walk off on its own. Look, we're crying out loud. I'll buy you another pair. Just stop going on about your flaming slipper. I'll find out who took it. I will, you know. Uh, I'm going to work. Thanks for Bracky. Right, Here, yeah, there's somebody at the door. I'll get it. This'll be Prince Charming. You're not funny, you know. And you saying I've lost me marbles don't help. Is it Monica you wanted to see? Yeah, if you don't mind, I'll need to identify the animal. What's the problem? RSPCA. We've had a complaint. Complaint? Complaint about what? A member of the public witnessed an incident yesterday afternoon. The people involved were in a butcher's van. I've been to Elliot's and the young lad behind the counter gave me this address. Incident? You know, the Royal Corgi's out better threat than our Monica. You've only got to look at her, she's bursting with health. Yeah, I can see she looks in good shape. But that's not the point. Apparently, she was being encouraged to cause suffering to another animal. Can I give you a lift? Precinct, any good? Hop in. Actually, Fred, I'm on my way to the solicitor to sign the contract. Well, I must say you're taking it all in your stride, considering. Well, been doing a lot of thinking this last couple of days. Think I know where I am now, where I'm going. Well, as long as it means you stop here and you don't let anybody take advantage of you. Don't worry, that'll never happen again. Spider? Yeah, um, look, I hope you don't mind, but well, I've been racking me brains to see whether you're eligible to apply for one-off payment. How do you mean? Well, social fund, you know, to help towards the cost of funeral expenses. Oh, I don't know about that. Y yeah, well, listen, anyway, look, it's all in here what you're entitled to, so if you're not getting it, well, you know where I am, and I'll sort it out. No, thanks, Spider, I appreciate it. <laughs> all right, love, I'm coming. So what it was, it was a training session. Aye, right, right, just clocking the time, that's all. And there were no other animals involved? Oh, no, no, I wouldn't say it's a fly, ask her, she'll tell you. 
He played murder with me when he had to get rid of his pigeons. Still not over it. I'm like that myself. I mean, I might look hard and everything, but I wouldn't hurt a living creature. Not an animal, anyway. No, he's right. You see, look, what this is all about is Monica were astray and he adopted it. Mm. Weren't my idea. So, if she weren't tearing a rabbit apart, what was she chasing? Um... I know what it was, you lying toad. It was my slipper. Look, I said I'd buy you another pair. And you were saying I want right in the head. Do you wonder, living with a liar like you? Hello. Here. I believe Sarah Lou did the papers for you this morning. Oh, what a smashing lass. She even came ten minutes early. <laughs> um, nothing wrong, is there? No, no. She was full of it. Ah, good. So, is there a problem? Yes, there is. I think she's a bit young to be out on her own. Oh, I thought you'd sorted all that out with her. I didn't even know she'd asked you. Well, she told me that you'd said it was OK. Well, I wish you'd checked with me first. <laughs> How am I supposed to know if you're on speaking terms with your own daughter? Well, perhaps if you had children of your own, you'd be a bit more understanding. Okay. What were all that about? Oh, you tell me. Haven't a clue. Oh. Do you want a copper? Aye, right, go on, though. Why not? <laughs> <sighs> So, uh, did you get to see the solicitor, then? All sorted at my end. So, in a couple of days or so, my cheque should be in your bank account. Oh, thanks, sweeter. I'm just sorry it has to be like this. Like what? Well, you know, this bad feeling between us. We're both adults. Let's just behave as if it never happened. So, you won't bear a grudge? Life's too short. Well, it is for me, anyway. Thanks, Rita. Anyway, you might as well have your inheritance now as wait until I pop my clogs. My inheritance? Hmm. So I took the opportunity while I was at the solicitor's to change my will. Oh. Right. So what you're saying is that's my lot? That's it. Exactly. I see. Well, you can't have it both ways, Sharon. Like I say, you're getting the money now, just when you need it. And you're cutting me out of the will? Oh, I'd say you've cut yourself out, Sharon. So what do you say? About what? The Millennium Celebration. Is it definite? Well, not yet, but it will be if I have anything to do with it. Shepherd's pie, chips, table food. I mean, look at it this way. We don't need any outside help. We've got everything going for us. You want bread and butter with that? Thanks. So, you see, we can supply the food. Uh, the rollers can supply the alcohol, which regrettably seems necessary to the occasion. The cabin and the shop can make their contribution, and if we can persuade Baldwin to chip in with a healthy donation, then we'll be self-financing. We won't, we'll have done it all ourselves without any interference from the council. Toast, butter, ear. True democracy, you see. Entertainment of the people have you for... Have finished? Well, uh, what we're getting round to is, uh, will you put yourself up for the committee? No, sorry. Is this because you're signing with your mother? I don't have to give a reason. No, no, no. Of course you don't. Two bacon sandwiches. Yeah. Cheers. So when are you going to get it back, then? Thanks, girl. I haven't got the money, have I? Don't look at me. I am looking at you. It's 300 each. Me? Yeah, we're in this together, remember? Yeah. Only when we started. What happened after that is down to you. Uh, what are you doing in here? Having me lunch, the same as you. How many of them have you had? That's me second, isn't it, Vinnie? Yeah. You were supposed to be seeing that solicitor this afternoon. Yeah, well, I was a bit worried about it. So I thought, you know, I'd calm myself. Blaze, it's that stuff that's got you into this mess. Oh, don't go on, Jan. Yeah, well, don't have any more. I mean, if he smells that on your breath, you might think you deserve everything you get. Yeah, well, if he takes that attitude, I'll report him to the citizen's advice. He's supposed to be on my side. 
Yeah, well, why don't you let him try? And listen to everything he's got to say and don't start arguing. Right. <laughs> I'll suck this and I'll be off. Right. Well, good luck. Sir. Uh... Listen, can I ask you something? You know, when you were at college, did you do, um, computer studies or whatever it is they call it? IT, yeah. Why? Oh, I don't know. I mean, maybe it's something I'm not doing right. Maybe I've loaded it wrong, but whatever it is, I've got myself in a right mess. Do you want me to have a look at it for you? Oh, would you? Maybe sometime this afternoon. Oh, do it now if you like. Or have your lunch first. Oh, I'll get something later. Drink up. Brilliant. <laughs> Hey, Listen, you've time for a pint? Hey, I suppose I've got two minutes. Emily ah. took them right past. Good man, didn't he? Two pints here, mucker. Hey, you know, if it weren't for people helping out, I'd never see the inside of this pub. Ah, behave yourself. That's what friends are for. Besides, you've helped me out enough times. Yeah. Uh, do you know that uh, spider? Uh-huh. You know, I won't call him a mate, but uh, even he's fallen over himself to help out. Good. Glad to hear it. I know, but I don't think I want these benefits that he's talking about. Gary, right, cut yourself on, will you? He's only telling you what you're entitled to, so he is. Yeah, but I've paid for Judy's burial now, and I don't want that back. I don't want to make a profit out of it. No, of course you don't. And another thing, I've had a letter from the Building Society about the market saying that we had a joint mortgage, and now it's all paid off, all of it. Mm -hmm. Well, that's only fair. I know, but it don't it don't feel right. Gary, listen to me. Look, everybody knows you'd rather have Judy back rather than have the money. Well, that's it. Well, that's exactly how I feel. Well, unfortunately, it's not going to happen, Gary, is it? Eh? So just you go on ahead and get what you're entitled to, eh? There's nobody in this street's going to think any of the worse of you. Besides, don't forget them two wee children. Right. Yeah, I suppose you're right. So? Is it true, then? Is what true? 190. That you've got Rita to buy back her own business. Nice one. My business, you mean? I don't know how you've got the neck. <laughs> I really don't think it's any of your concern. Well, you know, when you work in a pub, you have to get involved in conversation, don't you? So who told you? Mm, can't remember now, but everybody knows. Well, I hope they also told you were Rita's decision, not ours. Mm, I thought Rita was keen to retire. Well, obviously, she's not. Well, must be like winning lottery. <laughs> For you two, anyway. See ya. No, I'll take a notice. Well, didn't you hear, right? Everyone's talking about us behind our backs. Oh, we saw me yesterday's news. Do you know, I can't even go out in the street. Hey, why don't we go away? You what? Now? Yeah. Why not? What's to stop us? It's not fair. Why can't I have a paper round? I've told you. And you should have asked me first. I would have said no. Not necessarily. Well, you did. For very good reasons. I'm going to Candice's. Tea's at six. Don't be late. Hiya. How was school? Oh, that good, was it? And as usual, I'm getting the brunt of it. Uh, now don't blame me. I'm going along with what you say. Whether you agree or not. Uh, actually, I do. I do worry about Sarah Lou being out in the dark. Of course I do. She's got her own point of view, hasn't she? She wants to make her own money. And another thing, teachers have a bit of responsibility. I know that. But if anything were to happen to her, it'd be our fault. Well, OK. Let's see if we can find a compromise. I can't think what. Well, why don't we just let her do the mornings, but put our foot down about the evenings? What difference would that make? Well. It halves the risk for a start. And anyway, we don't want to give her any more excuses not to do her own work. Seems like quibbling to me. Yeah, well, we either compromise or we don't. OK. Will you tell her or me? Um, I'll leave it to you. You didn't just say that on the spur of the moment. Well, maybe I did. But what's to stop us, eh? Well, and just leave Rita in the lurch. Don't give over. She can't wait to get back in charge. Aye. And do you really think she bought this place back just for our benefit? <laughs> I suppose you're right. Anyway, I don't know why I'm bothered. She's as hard as nails. And what have I been saying? Hmm. Isn't there loads to do, though, moving into a new house? 
Hey, hey, hey. It's all been arranged, hasn't it? <laughs> Mortgage has come through. Mm -hmm. Rita's paid her check into the bank. So, why don't we go on that honeymoon we never had it? <laughs> no one needs us round here. No one wants us round here. Oh, come on. It's us that counts, not them. Forget them. Right then. Honeymoon, it is. <laughs> shall I tell her, or shall you? I think it's a great idea. Yeah, so do I. Oh, you why get ripped off at somebody else's party when you can organise your own? It's a bit late in the day, though, isn't it? It's all the more reason to get a move on. So when is this meeting? Wednesday. In the cafe? Six o'clock. We'll be there, won't we? Yeah, of course we will. Is that right what Deirdre's been telling me? Oh, it didn't take long. Oh, only his lunch hour. Anyway, I owe you a drink. <laughs> she popped the old block. Job's worth doing. There's no time like the present. You taught him that, did you? In the blood. Did with a few more like him in the factory. Well, if he carries on like this, he'll be running place next. <laughs> You're right, he will. Do you know what he said? His solicitor. He reckons I should plead guilty. Does that surprise you? Plead guilty? I'll end up in prison. They're not so harsh when you come clean. Yeah, well, I reckon they're the right actor. Just because he talks posh, thinks he knows it all. Well, just deny it all then, Les. See where that gets you. Hey, do you fancy going to the casino at the cosy? Sorry, I haven't got that kind of money. Or somewhere else, then? No, not tonight. You know what it is. No, actually, I don't. Wouldn't lose any sleep over it. Oh, don't you worry. I don't intend to, not anymore. Can I have a whiskey, please, yeah? Oh, like father, like son, eh? <laughs> Plenty more fish in the sea. <laughs> no chance. I'm not talking about me. I'm not that stupid. Mind, there's many a good tune played on an old fiddle. There you go. Thanks very much. And uh, get yourself one. Thanks. Yes? Hey, oh, yeah. you're dead about it. He's just gone. I'm sure you wanted to see, actually, is, yeah, uh, told you about my letter. Yeah, said you're off the hook. Uh, no, no, I mean about my van. I uh, need to get my hands on 600 quid. Oh, sorry, mate, I can't lend it to you. Well, it's in good nick for its age. L Reg, LDV convoy, about 90,000 miles on the clock, worth three grand easy. So? So I'll let you have it for two and a half. 600 quid up front. I don't need a van. We can sell it. Yeah, and so can you. Not if I can't get my hands on it. Look, Steve, I'd just rather not get involved. No hard feelings, OK? Just in time. I've had my take candy, sis. Right, well, more for the rest of us, then. And before you dash off upstairs... I've been thinking about this paper round. Suppose we come to an arrangement. How about doing the morning papers to start? And we'll see how it goes. Well, why did you say I couldn't do it in the first place? Because I was concerned. Because it's dark? Well, not just that. I mean, it's, it's heavy work to be doing twice a day. And there's your homework. All right. Good girl. And then, in a couple of months, when it gets light, we'll think about the evening papers. How's that? That's great. Thanks, Mum. But it was Martin's idea, wasn't it? Remind me to give Reuben a bell later. He's been pestering for us to go around for dinner on Friday. You didn't say. I didn't fancy it. Neither would you. Be shop talk all night. Afraid I'll show you up? No, of course not. It's just that... Well, I just didn't think it was your scene. It might be a laugh. Go on, I'm up for it. <laughs> you won't enjoy it. I'll leave my roll-ups at home, I promise. Go cool, and then how can I resist? But don't blame me. I'll do you proud. Mm. Oh, count me in, definitely, oh. yeah. Uh, yeah, and me and Auntie M as well. Absolutely. One of us will take notes. And uh, when I get back, I'll give you all the help I can. Oh, you've got that fresh coat on, haven't you? Yeah, they were quite white, I'm not sure, just to make up the numbers, I think. And then Deirdre's got her appeal, but when that's over, well, I'm, uh, I'm at your beck and call. Well, I, I hope it goes well. Yes. Well, it should just be a formality. <laughs> I think Ken's got more faith in the legal system than I have. Don't worry. All right, let me drink it. No, let's just get it over with and make a quick exit. Okay. 
Rita, are you joining us? Oh, no, no, we're not stopping. I, I just wanted to ask a favour. Go on. Well, Ian and me, we've decided to uh, go away for a couple of weeks. Why not? Yeah, so I was wondering if you could see to things for us, like... Yeah, cheeky beggar. No, let her say what she has to say, Fred. What things? Well, this sounds stuff from flat. Yeah, so if you could let the removal men in and... and the cabin. Oh, yeah, the cabin. Uh, it's yours, so I'll, I'll give you the keys at another time. So, when are you going? As soon as we can. Right. Well, there's no more to be said, is there? No. Well, it's not. But... Thanks. Thanks for everything. You know what I think? They've toot you for a ride. They taught me a valuable lesson. They have that. I said they have that. How much has it cost you? £45,000. Damned expensive lesson, I'd say. <laughs> oh, thanks, Ob. Uh, are these sugar-free? Yes. Are you on a diet? For Christmas. Daft, isn't it? Oh. Dieting so I can stuff my face, <laughs> silly. <laughs> Cheers. See you. See you later. Hiya. You're not going to court with me, Dad? No. I couldn't afford to lose a day's pay. Well, what if you get sent down? Well, he won't. Not today, any road. It's only his first day you're in. Oh, great. So he's got that hanging over him over Christmas. Look, it's his own fault. At least he'll get bed and board in jail. I'll still have to pay all bills on the pittance I earn. I mean, what am I going on a diet for? I won't be able to afford food soon enough. There you go. How does it feel to be back in charge, love? There like I've never been away. <laughs> and now she's left you in the lurch. Typical. I don't suppose you want your old job back, do you? Thanks, but not in this lifetime. See ya. ta -ra. Sharon's gone then, has she? No, today. Oh. I don't know what I'm going to say to her, Betty. Well, good riddance would be the first words from my mouth, love. <laughs> well, I know what folk think, but it was that fella she married. Oh, Rita, you're far too forgiving, love. Maybe. I'm still half hoping she'll walk through that door today and say she's changed her mind. Oh. Well, I suppose the first item ought to be the appointment of a chairman. Person for chair. Yeah, yeah. Well, I wasn't intimating that a man would be any better as a chair, chair, chair than anybody else. You'd be a great chair. You think so? A comfy chair. Oh. Morning, all. <laughs> oh. Where's my poster? Oh. Ah. Huh? It's, um, it, uh, here. Uh, it's not going to do any good there, Roy, is it? Come on, give it here and some sticky tape. Morning, ma'am. I'm sorry. It's not going up. I have a nurse. Uh, morning, yeah, love it. It is not something that, that I feel, that, that, that we feel that, that we can promote. Oh, dearie me. Honestly, Roy, it may have taken a thousand years, but the millennium is going to happen whether you promote it or not. He means the council, do. What? We're organising our own. Who? Local people. The community. Yeah, but the council represents the community. I mean, I am your councillor. I'm her mother. Hey, it's got nothing to do with me. We didn't like the sound of what the council were planning, so we thought we could do better ourselves. Who is this we? Me, Hayley. Spider, Janice, Toya, Ken Barlow, Emily Bishop. Thank you. Cup of coffee? I don't know. You work your fingers to the bone trying to represent these people, and what do you get? The biggest moment in history, a knife between the shoulder blades. You're very welcome to join the committee. <laughs> so, what do you fancy doing for the millennium? Ooh. Curling up in front of a fire with a bottle of champagne mm -hmm. and you. Ooh. Well, I think you taught me round. <laughs> and what Rita will be doing? Get to help me to... I know writing you out of her will like that. I mean, that was just... That was just spiteful. Me, I know. What are you gonna do? But... 
but nothing. Listen, this time tomorrow we're going to be in Spain. Okay. So we won't ever have to see Rita or this street ever again. Not this millennium, nor the next. Mm, great. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> hey, Fred, you've got to be on your best behaviour this weekend. We're being visited by Evelyn Hunter Roche. Who's that? Area director. Ooh, there's Bosch. Good chance to turn on the old Elliot charm there, Fred. You never know, Michael. I've got a feeling in my water about this little trip. And what pleasure the weekend got in store for you? Are you going to do some bonding with your son and her? No, I've been invited by a business pal for dinner, something I usually avoid like the plague. You're not going. Well, Linda wants to go. <laughs> what can a man do? There you go. Gives a pint of meal velvet. What do they call a Battersby in the suit? The defendant. <laughs> and who told you I was in court? You are. Now, why should that surprise me? So what have you been up to, then? Oh, just a bit of a mix-up of the benefit claims. Because this tight beggar pays slave rates to our Janice. Well, I notice the lack of money doesn't stop you knocking back the pints. Do you know what sickens me the most? I get done for a misunderstanding. Pennies it's about. Where's a bet these two? I bet they got two sets of books. One for the taxmen and one for themselves. Up to their armpits and scans. You know, Michael, when Mr. Battersby here, when he's done sewing mailbags for Her Majesty, he'd be well suited sewing knickers at your place next to his missus. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got that money? I said I'll get it. Yes, but how? Give us a minute, will you? Hiya. Hiya, just that thing. Hello. Hello. Am I uh, interrupting something? No, I'm just waiting for my change. Right, yeah. I um, wanted a word. Thanks, that's a word, innit? it? See ya. Oh, two more. <laughs> Watch the shop for ten minutes. Hey, I've got to get back to work, Vic. Ten minutes? <sighs> what was all that about? Oh, you don't want to know. I tell you something, I'm really looking forward to this weekend. Oh, I'm glad someone is, apart from Fred, who thinks it's one big jolly, arranged solely for his benefit, of course. In fact, he's even planning a romantic assault on Evelyn Hunter Rochford. The area director? The very same. <laughs> and you don't think you should have told him that Evelyn's a fella? I think you'll find out soon enough, will you? <laughs> Fancy a drink? Fancy, yes. I've got time, no. Working for Dad is not a doddle, then. I think he's trying to prove to the world I'm not some spoilt middle-class brat. I never thought I'd be sick of the sight of knickers. <laughs> hey, tell you what, let's go into town tonight. Uh, yeah, great. Good man. Uh, see you when the rovers have to work. Smash it. Oh, come on, Kev, you're my last chance. All I need is 600 up front. Yeah, for a van I haven't seen yet. I've told you, I'm not interested. Yeah, but I'll let you have it for two, and that's miles less than what it's worth. You'll sell it in an hour and pocket the difference. Thanks. What? No thanks. There's got to be a catch. Dad. What? How much is my van worth? Van? Well, I don't know. What? Three grand or something? Thank you. Right. We'll come and tell Kevin because I'm offering it in for two, and he thinks it's a catch. Ah, oh, well, there you are. Now you see, even your friends think you're trying to trust them up, eh? Just tell him, Kevin. Ah, oh, go on then, mucker. Eh? It's got to be worth more than two grand, isn't it? See? Yeah, it's two grand I haven't got. I'll give you fifteen hundred. <laughs> you must be joking. I'll give you 600 now and 900 when you deliver it. You'll make a fortune, over a grand. Indeed you will, and it's legitimate as well. You ought to think about getting into this line of business, son. Look, if I say I'm sorry, will that make a difference? No, that's all you're saying it for. I can't win then, can I? Look, I know I've been a bit off recently, but I've had things on my mind. No, what you mean is, some other girl's blown you out and now you're coming back to me? No, no, there's no one else, Lee. Come out with me tonight, please. I'm working. Then we'll go out later. And even if I wasn't, I won't go out with you. Now, <laughs> can I get a mummy dinner, please? <laughs> with you in a sec. Come to gloat. No. Come for Sharon's checkbook. And a couple of other bits and pieces out the back. She was happy here, you know. She had friends, folks she could trust and rely on. Rita, do you remember why I came back here in the first place? Because you can smell a vulnerable woman like a shark smells blood in the water. 
because you were drunk in the middle of the afternoon. Out of a skull, talking to my answer phone. A machine. So, where were all those folk that she could talk to then, eh? And by folk, I'm also including a sad old lady with no friends who tried to buy her. Now, if you'll excuse me. Search me on the way out, if you want. You've already taken what's worth anything to me. Sharon. <laughs> no, you don't care about Sharon. Not really. You wouldn't have written her out your will otherwise. That's all it ever comes back to with you, isn't it? Money. Me? No. I want Sharon because I love her. And because I love her, I want her away from you. Tell me. How long before the novelty wears off and you start running after the next Natalie Barnes that flutters her eyelashes at you? <laughs> oh, Rita. No, it's not going to be like that. Because, you see, unlike you, I learn from my mistakes. You hurt that girl and you'll have me to deal with. And you're wrong. I do learn from my mistakes. You'll not get the better of me next time. Uh, spider, all, all set. Mm -hmm. Oh. Oh no, not that flipping millennium meeting. Come oh, on, quick. Uh, <coughs> uh, excuse me. Um, we, we still have room for further contributions if you. Ah uh, no, I hear your horses, Roy. I'm not a committee man myself, but I will be with you in spirit. Oh, don't be soft. I have to declare my allegiance to council celebrations. Is that because you're on a promise from Audrey Roberts come the next millennium? <laughs> Councillor Roberts and I are just good friends, you cheeky monkey. Oh, never mind. Well, uh... I'll give you your apologies for absence. <coughs> Spider. Mm -hmm. oh, mm -hmm. Has he gone? I never thought I'd see you two run away from Dozy Roy Crocker. The well, one thing I did learn from my ex, never volunteer for anything. Ah, you're right there, so you are. Especially when he's got the look in his eye that Roy had, eh? He's on a mission, that boy, eh? Cheers! <laughs> <laughs> ah. <clears throat> Looks like a distinct lack of community spirit, if you ask me. Well, actually, I think that too many voices Create more heat than light. Yes, it's commitment we want, not just people turning up for sandwiches. Well, even that would have been nice. Um, have you, um, have you got any veggie ones? Mm, yeah, of course. Um, I've got a tomato salad, tomato and salad. Yes, help yourself. There's plenty. There's even enough for a doggy bag or whatever it is that vegetarians have. Well, don't despair, Roy. There's still plenty of chance for people to turn out. Uh, is Toya coming? In college. Sorry, mm. apologies and all that. Janice and Gwen, they'll be coming. Oh, no. Well, I, I had a speech that started to uh, thank you all for coming. You saved it for my wedding. Hi, <laughs> <coughs> hey, Tom. Hi, Martin. Hiya. Right. Oh, two That's bitters, right. please. <laughs> so, uh, what are you two up to tonight, then? Uh, going into town. Yeah, a drink or two, see what happens. We'll maybe go to a club, something like that. Or, in short, we're on the rats. Oh, you mean you'd rather do that than stay here? Well, I'd rather go into town with you, as soon as you're working. I, she can have the night off. Hey, we don't start trying to pull till we hit town. Just practising. Hey, you know, lads, if it's lasses you have to foot, is the best place to start. Sorry, gents, as we're young and incredibly good-looking, we don't need artificial aids like football and sweat to pull. We'll uh, leave that to you. You know I've heard the strength of smacking one round the head. <laughs> as it is, I think I'll sit down. <laughs> Where are you two going, then? Any suggestions? Are you asking me where you can go and pick up women? Well, OK, then. Where could I go to pick up somebody like you? Or even better, you. In your dreams. <laughs> <laughs> What's up with him? 
I think he's just realised he needs to take up football. Uh, you know, Sarah reckons she's going to get down to see a match. You want to get Gail to come along with her? I can't get Gail to do anything nowadays. Never mind freeze her socks off at a football match. She's, um... She's a bit older than you, isn't she? Yep. Ten years. And, uh, is that the problem? Oh, I don't know, Danny. Everything seems to be a problem nowadays with Gail. I don't understand. People wanted us to do something. <laughs> You've hit the nail on the head, Roy. They wanted us to do something. Well, it's only half past. I mean, maybe some people will still come. If they were going to come, they'd have come by now. Ah, change your mind, Councillor, about joining us. This Millennium Party of yours, where did you say you were having it? Phone box in Rosamond Street. <laughs> Right, I, I've had enough. They wanted a Millennium Party, they wanted to organise it themselves, let them. Oh, Roy. No. No, if the people won't come to us, we'll go to the people. What do you mean, exactly? The pub. We'll go to the pub. Ah, now you're talking. <laughs> Cheers, buddy. So, have, um, you not thought about agreeing to this respect to me? You're not thinking of having any more kids, are you? No, I'm not planning. But, well, in my job, you get to see some pretty gruesome things, you know, people's lives turn upside down in minutes, seconds even. So, no intentions of having any more kids, but I don't want to tempt fate either, do I? Sounds fair enough to me. Yeah, so you can see my problem. What problem's that? Oh, well, all right. Oh, well, we're just talking about football, weren't we? Yeah, look, I'll just uh, leave you two to it. Don't go on my account. Oh, I'm not. I've um, arranged to meet Sally. See ya. All right, see you, mate. So, can I get you a drink? Well, I've not come in to drag you back home. Okay, sit down then. Well, I better go and see if our Les is back. Oh, don't leave me. Any old Les is more likely to come in here than go home. Good evening. Uh, will we just come in? No need now. Kelly. Oh, hello, Roy. Uh, meeting over, is it? Not exactly. I'm sorry I couldn't make it. Pressure of work and so forth. Could, could I just have your attention, please? I mean, the millennium is now barely, what, more than a month away. Uh, many of you said you'd like to celebrate together as a community yeah. to show folk what you're capable of. But tonight, you couldn't walk 50 yards to a meeting. Well, I I'm sorry, but apathy is no longer an option. Hey, regular tiger when he's roused, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we have a chance. We have one chance to create something that will, that will live in our memories, in our hearts, for the rest of our lives. Something that those of you lucky enough to have children will be able to share with them. Tell your grandchildren about. Is, this, is there a point to this, mate? <laughs> The point is, the point is that the people are here. That the people that will, that will make up this party, or pageant, or whatever you decide. Tonight is his chance to make a difference. So, let take it. So, uh, does that mean you're going to get a rounding, Roy, for everybody taking part? I, yes, Leanne, I will. Yes. I've ju just got to get on for my purse. Come in. I uh, hope I'm not interrupting you. No. What's the matter? Did you leave something here? Oh, no, no. Um, I just came to give you these. I... Uh, I had all these things that I was going to say to you. And now I'm here. I know that, um... I can't make it up to you, Reed. Then don't try. We ought to put it in some sort of historical context. Oh, boring. Well... 
I hate to mention it, but it is also marking 2,000 years since the birth of Christ. Oh, Janice is right. It's boring. I thought the idea was a party. Yeah, sex and drugs and sausage rolls. No, I'm serious. It's supposed to be a laugh, isn't it? What about karaoke? Yeah. Why? Look, I'll tell you what, if we want to put it in historical context, well, why don't we have a fancy dress where everyone comes as historical figures? Mm. Oh, yeah. Hey, Roy make a perfect Hitler after tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a bit unfair. It's only a joke. Oh, all right. Well, I think we've got enough ideas here. I I'll put something on paper, ladies and gentlemen. I I'll come back to you. All right. Yeah, well done, Roy. Well yes. done. I don't know about Hitler. I think Henry V and Ashley would probably be more appropriate for someone who can galvanise this lot into action. Well, Danny's a nice lad, you know. We should invite him and sell it around for a meal. We don't have a meal on our own, let alone with other folks. OK, then, well, let's make an effort. You and Sally fix it up. Yeah, OK. OK. Uh, Les, where the hell have you been? Court. Court finished hours ago. Yeah, well, I bumped into an old mate. You remember Jimmy O'Hearn? Oh, no. Not him you shared that cell with. Went to prison for his beliefs, he always said. He believed the night watchman was asleep. We were worried. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm up again in the new year. Making fake declarations or something. Solicitor reckons I need some character references. Who do you think I should start with? Oh, let's see. Curly. Oh, yeah. Who you nutted. Um, Emily Bishop, whose house she broke into because she wanted to watch the telly. Roy and Ailey. I mean, I'm sure they won't mind that you called them both perverts and tried to ruin the wedding day. Uh, Martin and Gail. What's your point here, Jan? Well, there's all us can. Oh, yeah? Yeah, who you accused of trying to have it off with our toy. Oh, forget it, Les. You're going down for life. Right. Last one. Fit in. Yeah. <laughs> Rita! I knew you'd come and see us off. Actually, I'm on my way to the Rovers. Oh. Have a safe journey. Please, Rita. I think we said everything we had to say. Look, you're still my mum to me. And I don't know if everything works out. This time next year, you might be a grandma. If everything works out. No, I mean... You know what I mean. And you know what I mean. Rita, please. Please be happy for us. Me and Ian were right together. Then you won't need my blessing, will you? Oh, leave it, Sharon. Look at her. She's loving every minute of it, milking it. You are a nasty piece of goods. Oh, I'm much the phrase, Rita. Takes one to know one. Come on, love. There's no like the smell of fresh country air and five-star luxury. Very impressive, Curly. Very oh. impressive. Wait a minute. I don't think this is right. This is Benbury Manor. We went Benbury Lodge. Manor Lodge, same difference. Oh, look. There's the golf course. Oh, this is fantastic, Curly. <laughs> I mean, it must be costly Fresco's a bomb to put us up here. Three cheers for Curly Watts. Hey, Bip! Hooray! Hey, Bip! Hooray! Wait a minute. Hey, <laughs> Bip! Hooray! <laughs> <laughs> Right, everybody inside. I have an overwhelming need to be pampered. <laughs> I wouldn't bother getting your case out yet. I'm sure this is the wrong place. I told you I would have been happy to read the map for you, Curly. Are you all right? 
You look a bit ready in face. How come you brought so much luggage? I'll have you know, I've packed only the essentials. My lounge suit, my smart casual, my plus force for golf and my dinner suit. Swanky hotels like this can be a sartorial minefield if you're not prepared. Good morning, sir. Welcome to Benbury Manor. Oh, I'm sorry, would you excuse me a moment? Certainly. Oh, you know, Mike used to bring me to places like this. You still miss him? Well, you know, sometimes. I mean, not that I ever saw much of him, not with his rounds of golf and business meetings at the bar. <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. How may I help you? You may help us, my Blossom, by allowing us to book into your fine establishment. Do you have reservations? We do. May I have your name? Frederick Elliot, Master Butcher. We're with the Fresco party, actually. That's right. Forward with Frescoes. Did I hear Fresco? Yes. What are they doing here? Obviously, our Weatherfield branch is run by staff who can't read simple directions. Leave them, James. I want to keep a low profile. Let's get out of the way before they recognise us. You go on. I'll join you in a minute. What do you mean, the wrong place? Oh, it's an easy mistake to make. Benbury Lodge is about three miles further up the main road. Thank you. Listen, could you have a word with someone and get some decent signposts put up? So what's he like, this lodge? Like this place, only a bit smaller? Fred, we're gonna be late. Come on. Go on, Ashley, we're loading up again. So, do they have a golf course at this lodge, or do we use the facilities here? Fred! What? Out! Oh! oh sorry. Come on. Um, excuse me. I came in with the Freshco party, but they seem to have disappeared. I think they went that way. Oh, right. Thanks. My pleasure. Have a good weekend. I will. You too. Bye. I hesitate to blow my own trumpet, but I, I felt that after a shaky start, our first Millennium meeting was a great success. I felt a lot of energy, commitment. To... I think we might be on the cusp of something rather special. So are you feeling confident? Bursting, actually, with confidence. Ah, uh, good morning, Councillor Roberts. What can we do for you? No, no, don't want anything, actually. Thanks very much, Roy, no. I uh, just popped in to see if the Roy's Rolls think tank <laughs> had come up with any wonderful ideas for the Millennium celebrations. Oh, uh, yeah, yes, we, we had a very fruitful meeting, actually. Fruitful? You only had about three people here. We relocated to the Rovers. Uh, you mean it was abandoned through lack of interest? Oh, quite the opposite, actually. There was a lot of encouragement, people chipping in with ideas. We had a brainstorming session. Yes, there were many suggestions as to theme and tone, but the, the basic thrust was that uh, we were going to organise the best party that Weatherfield had ever seen. Oh. <laughs> Answer. <laughs> no, no, Curly, you've got it wrong again. Well, the sign said Benbury Lodge, Fred. But this isn't an hotel, it's a bunch of cow sheds. You know, I agree with Fred. I like the other place better. Let's have a vote. Who wants to stop at the hotel and who wants to stop here with this load of cattle? We are not having a vote. It is not up for debate. We are all staying here together and as a team. How come he's so bossy all of a sudden? No, it's not bossy, it's leadership. Uh, fresh, cool Weatherfield? Yes, that's us. And you must be Norman Watts. Team leader and store manager. Yeah. Jock McCall. I'll be your team trainer, facilitator and assessor during the course. Will we be using the golf course at the hotel, or have you got one here? Very good. Yes, Schumer is one of seven essential building blocks for creating a positive team dynamic. <laughs> you're 20 minutes late, Mr Watts. Uh, yeah, yeah, we went to the manor by mistake. Right, you're not getting somebody to check the map? Um, Curly was actually reading the map. Yeah, all right, we're a bit late. Is that a problem? <laughs> Look, competition is an integral part of this course, Mr Watts. All the other teams have arrived before you. I would suggest that gives them an advantage. Right, if you all like to get your bags, I'll show you to your quarters in a minute. What are you writing? You'll be constantly assessed throughout the weekend. Uh, is that about me? That's right. Yeah, but I didn't know we'd started. We started as soon as you arrived. 
Is uh, Mike coming in? I don't know. We well, always mate, aren't you? We've had a drink together. We're not joined at the hip. So how did you get on the other night? Cop off with anyone? Me or him? Either. Yeah, you did all right. I thought men liked bragging about the conquests. <laughs> Nothing to brag about. I used to look for grabs. Did I say I was interested? So you're not interested? Well, I didn't say that either. Right then, this will be your uh, home for the next three days. Fred, you're catching flies. Come on, man, let dogs eat rabbits. Oh, yes! Bunk beds. Can I have top bunk? You can have all four. I'm not stopping here. I say I'm not stopping here. Now, I suggest you get some lunch ASAP. First exercise starts at 1,400 hours. Ah, lunch. Do we go up to a manor and have a slap of feed there? No, no, we have our own kitchens here. Oh, good. What's on the menu? Er, uh, chicken stew, I think. Well, I expect it'll be hot and nutritious. Mm. So they stopped serving ten minutes ago. You well, I'm starving. You were late. Might be a few sandwiches left. Er, uh, you better be quick, mind. I want you all outside in your tracksuits in 27 minutes for the first exercise. And what is the first exercise? Well, it's a problem-solving exercise to assess spatial awareness and interpersonal communication. I think I'll give it a miss. Look, all our exercises are specifically designed for a six-person team. Ah, well, I didn't pack a tracksuit, you see. I mean, uh, uh, to be frank with you, uh, Jock, is it? I don't actually own one. I mean, oots, mon, do I look like a tracksuit person? Oh, we've got plenty here. I'll, uh, I'll get you one. Extra, extra large, is it? I do not like that, man. <laughs> So there we are. You have the river with five islands. Now, the object of this exercise is for each of the three teams to take the uh, five planks of different length to transport yourselves and the six sacks from one side of the river to the other. Uh, excuse me. Uh, if there's five islands, then we're going to need six planks. We seem to be a plank short. No, we are not. So this is a mental test as well as a physical one. That's right. Now, does everybody understand what's required? Right, get the planks, we'll go down to the river. Uh, hang on a minute. Uncle Fred's coming. <laughs> what does he look like? Well, he did say he wasn't a tracksuit man. <laughs> look, look, it's all right, we can do this. I once saw this on the back of a matchbox. Oh. Liam, all I'm asking is which would you prefer? The official council celebrations, or some amateur affair cobbled together by Roy Crow. Well, they both sound like rubbish to me. Oh, yeah, I'll put you down for the official do then, shall I? Hey, you're not putting me down for any do. Oh. Vinny, now, how about you? I take it you are going to support the council's effort, eh? It's 25 quid, isn't it? Yeah, but it's very good value for the money. I reckon you've had enough of me already in council tax. Oh. Come on, move it. Come on, let's go, 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 go. No, I'll get it back, Ken. Get it. What is the problem? The plank's not long enough. What do you mean it's not long enough? It's too short, it won't reach bank. Yes, yeah, it's, it's the wrong plank. We must have made a mistake somewhere. No, I don't want to cause trouble, but could we hurry on? What's happening up front? I could probably jump it. No, don't jump, because we have to use the planks. All right, then, come on, then. What do you suggest we do? Will you just give me a minute to think? Hey, Napoleon, what's the hold up? Do you mind not shouting while I try to work out where we went wrong? Hang on a minute, Curly. Listen, if we swap the blue plank with the red one, the red one will reach the bank, won't it? Do you know, I think you're right. Well done, Nita. Shall we do that then, Curly, or what? Come on, Curly, make a decision or we'll miss us dinner and all. All right, all right, do that then. Right, come on. Right. What, what can I've got it? You want me to give you a character reference? Well, I'm going to need all the friends I can get when I'm up in court. What I mean? Well, you're a regular church goer. You're a volunteer at the hospital. You're an upstanding citizen. And you are a self-centred, 
devious, conniving, out for all he can get, con man. Now, how's that for a character reference? Well, it's not exactly what I'm looking for. Frankly, Mr. Battersby, I'm amazed you have the gall even to ask. I mean, since you moved here, you've done absolutely nothing for this community. And I, for one, think that now that you've been caught stealing from the taxpayer, you deserve whatever punishment the court sees fit to throw at you. I'll tell you what. I've obviously picked a bad time. We can talk about this again. That's it! That's it! Now we're cooking with gas! Right, Fred, come on, come towards me, come on! Fred, come on! That plank will never hold me, it's too fragile. Fred, it'll be all right, come on! If I walk that plank, it'll break! Fred, shut your big gob and get your big fat bum moving now and walk that plank! Please. You're the leader. Right, come on, Fred! Come on! Come on, Fred! Hang on, on second thoughts. Well, it's made my day. And I'm wearing my best brogues. Fred, you all right? Oh, I'm fine. As soon as I saw this freezing cold river, I thought, I do hope we have a chance to go for a paddle. I didn't see you at lunchtime. No, I had a delivery to do in Warrington. Ooh, keeps you busy over there to see you, Dad. He's telling me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lady Mock's arrived. I'll have a dry white wine, please. Right. Go on, give us a tour. Oh, oh very smart, Mike. Yes, very stylish. <laughs> you make a lovely couple. <laughs> A large scotch and a dry white wine, please. Do you want a top up? No, I'm fine, thanks. What do you think, then? Will we pass, Master? Yeah. You both look very smart. Thank you. you never believe how much this dress cost. Well, you can wrap a brick in fancy paper, but it's still a brick, isn't it? <laughs> do you know what? What? I love it when you're jealous. It's the only reason I came in here tonight, cos I felt great when I put the dress on. But I feel even better now I've seen your sour face. Enjoy your evening. Of course, it, it's only a few weeks away and so much to do. Well, I, I feel that the key is, is um, delegation. Mm. Well, I, I mean, I'm sure people will chip in with ideas. It's a community event. The more people put in, the more they'll get out. Excuse me. Sorry for interrupting. But did I just hear the word community? I suppose you did, yeah. Only it's just that I feel it's about time I made my contribution. Uh, and what, what contribution would that be? Well, I'm an ideas man, really, but I'm also a man of action. It's just that what gives me the most pleasure is getting the chance to help the community. So, shove up and count me in. <laughs> You won't believe this. There's no hot water. No. Well, you arrive late. You're playing catch-up all day. Now I suggest you get an early night. Big day tomorrow. Good night. It's only nine o'clock. I say we head off up to Manor for a decent drink. Fred, it's a three-mile walk. All right. It'll have to be plan B. I always have one for emergencies. Anybody fancy a night, Cap? So, uh, what did she say? She wanted to know if you'd copped off with anyone the other night. Right. You think she's interested? Yeah, I reckon. Right. Are you interested? Yeah, could be. Dad might not like that. You going out with a Battersby? Why? What's a Battersby? Leanne's a Battersby. Mum Janice is a Battersby. Janice who works in the factory? Yeah, that's the one. Oh? Her dad, Les, is king of the Battersby's. Right. When we got married, I might start taking it for granted. I miss her more now than I've ever done. 
Well, you make the most of Maxine. I lost Deirdre once. I'm just lucky I got a second chance. Do you want to see a picture? Of Maxine? It's not that I'm worried I forget what she looks like. I just like carrying it around with me. Very nice. Very nice. Have you got a picture of Deirdre? Yeah. She looks much younger. Well, she was younger when the photograph was taken. Right. This scratchy old blanket is making me itch. I should be all tucked up in freshly laundered Egyptian cotton. Listen, Fred, uh, I'm sorry that I shouted at you today. I, I didn't mean it. Oh, well, you were under stress from that Nazi commandant. Hey. What's news about the escape tunnel? It's no joke. If we do as badly tomorrow as we did today, I reckon Jock McFascist might recommend me for the chop. Give over. He knows out about now, that one. I say out about now. No. He's only acting under orders. Well. You top bunkers ready for the light out? Ah, uh, shattered. Yeah, fine by me, Fred. And thanks for the whiskey. Never let it be said that Fred Elliot is not a team player. <clears throat> Good night, then. Good night, Fred. Good night, Curly. Good night, Ashley. Good night, Jen. You look like a million dollars. I was the envy of every bloke in that room. Am I just your trophy girlfriend? <laughs> you're my real girlfriend. Anyway, what's wrong with being a trophy? It means you're the winner. When you walked in that room, Oh, blimey, no. What's up? There's a cop car behind us. Well, hadn't you better pull over? Yeah, well, I'm looking for a convenient spot, aren't I? Yeah, all right, all right. Let me do the talking, all right? Evening, officer. Is there a problem? Are you aware your offside brake light's not working, sir? No. No, I'll have it fixed first thing in the morning. Good night. Yeah, have you, uh, have you been drinking alcohol tonight, sir? Well, uh, yeah, I had a couple of glasses of wine, that's all. Look, would this take long, only we're on our way home? No, not long, sir, but I can smell alcohol on your breath, which gives me grounds to breathalyse you. Would you mind getting out of the car, please? Time for the next exercise. Have you gone start raving mad? It's 1.30! That's right. Well, it's still dark. Look, what exercise is this? Oh, I'll explain all the details outside in the minibus. Well, we're going somewhere. Hmm, you'll see. I'm not, I'm stopping here. Well, this is a team exercise. If he doesn't come, you all fail the course. Good. Everybody back in bed. Oh, come on, Fred, shake a leg. I'll be waiting outside. You've got five minutes. Fred, come on, we need you. No, you don't. Come on, Uncle Fred. I don't want to fail this course. Well, we're awake now. <sighs> Might as well do it. Fred, I thought you said you were a team player. Well, I'm going to have nightmares about this. That is if I'm not having a nightmare right now. Look, I told you, all I had was a couple of glasses of wine. Yeah, I was with him all night. I wouldn't have got in a car with him if I thought he were drunk. 
I want you to provide me with one long, hard, continuous breath into the tube. Look, I would like to get home tonight. The lights turn red, which indicates you've failed the roadside breath test. Look, uh, is there any way we can make this go away? I'm arresting you for providing me with a positive roadside breath test. You don't have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention, when questioned, something you later rely on in court. I don't believe this. Can I have your car keys, please? Oh, this is ridiculous. I mean, do you know what's going on? I haven't a clue. I'd hate to know what you do for fun. Mr Watts, map and compass, torch, Emergency first aid kit. I suggest you delegate each item to a suitable member of your team. Thanks, but what's the point of this exercise? Well, the point's simple. Breakfast is served at the lodge between 8 and 8.30. Hey, you can't leave us here. We must be miles away. If you get back any later than 8.30, miss your breakfast. I do not like that man. Shut up! You can't do this to me. Have I been violent? Have I thumped anyone? Just step inside, will you, sir? I've been waiting for two hours out there for your doctor to come and give me a blood test. Yeah, well, he's a busy man, and so am I. And you going off at the deep end's not helping me get through what's turning out to be a very unpleasant shift. I've enough to do without taking abuse from you. All right, all right, you can forget the blood test. When can I go home? All in good time. What do you mean? I mean, I've other things to do than run round after you. So stay here, keep it buttoned, and we'll see how we go. You're <laughs> seriously thinking of leaving me here, are you? Listen, pal, you brought this on yourself. But what about my girlfriend? You should have thought about your girlfriend before you started mouthing off. Look, I just want to get out of here. You'll get out of here when you've calmed down and when I've done the paperwork. You're not the only problem I've got to deal with tonight. You want to be out catching real criminals? Instead of picking on easy targets like me to keep your rest rate up? <laughs> hey! Hang on a minute, will ya? The old club Fred needs a breather. We can't keep stopping every time he's short of breath. No, but really, he doesn't look so well. Well, he shouldn't have drank all that whiskey then, should he? Oh, Carly, we could all do with a break. No, if we keep stopping, we'll never get back on time. He won't be getting back at all if you don't. Yeah, come on, Curly, ask this right. Fred needs a breather. Look, if you can't hack it, you shouldn't have come. I don't need you to tell me that. My feet are killing me, and I'm so through to my best. I'm too old to go yomping round the moors. I'm a butcher, not a member of Three Para. Look, will you stop arguing and pass the water around? I'm as dry as a duck in the desert. No, no water, not yet. Eh? Well, we've only got one bottle between the six of us. So? So it's got to be rationed. Curly, if Alma needs a drink, just give her a drink, all right? I could do with a swill and all. No, it's too early. It's another 20 minutes before the water stops. Right. Wait, what do you think you're doing? What does it look like, Curly? I give the water out. Oh, come on, let's not fall out. We've got enough to cope with as it is. Exactly, Ken. So all those in favour of having a drink, say aye. 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 Well, go on, then. Die of thirst. See if I care. Hey, Genghis Khan. This is Derbyshire, not Gobi Desert. More likely to drown before night's out. Curly? No, I'll wait until the right and proper time. Fine. All right, then, folks, what do we say? Five minutes break and then we get going again? Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. I'm taking you to be officially charged and cautioned. And you had a couple of glasses of wine. Listen, we're not talking borderline here. The intoxilizer showed you a well of her. So what happens now, then? Well, you'll have to appear in court tomorrow morning. Well... What about my girlfriend, Linda? 
Your girlfriend's gone home in a cab. You'll have to call one yourself. We'll be keeping your car keys. You can arrange to pick them up tomorrow. Come on. Now, if I'm right, there should be a barn or a farm building just ahead. All right, all right. And then there should be a cart track that goes to the left. And we follow... Yes, to the left. And then we follow that all the way down, and then we should hit the main road. Keep up. Keep up. Let me read them up. Is this some kind of wind-up? Uh, no, it's not a wind-up. What are you talking about? You can see he's in pain. He's not the only one. Oh, for goodness can sake, have some compassion, Curly. Oh, is it broken? No. Look, can you do your toes? <laughs> well, try pressing against my oh, hand. Oh, oh. No, it's not broken, it's just badly sprained. Brilliant, that's all we oh. need. You say one more thing against him and I promise you'll bop your one. Hang on a second, Dusty, just calm down. It's obvious that Fred can't go on like this and we need to assess the situation. I already have. We leave him here. We go on and we send someone back to help him. Uh, leave him here? Well, yeah, that way we only lose ten points. Is that all you care about, losing points? That's the reason we're here. Well, I'm not leaving him up here on his own. He could die. Oh, leave off. One night on the moor's not enough to kill him. I've warned you. Hang on a second. Look, we started as a team and we'll finish as a team. The only way we're going to finish as a team is if someone carries him. Exactly. Oh. You've oh. got to be joking. You still up? Yeah. Where's Dad? In the nick. Eh? Weatherfield nick. You winded me up? No. Coppers stopped us on our way home and breathalyzed him. He was over the limit and you let him drive? Listen, you, have you ever tried telling your dad not to do something? No. So what happens now? I don't know. He made it worse for himself, though, by getting stroppy with this copper. That's when they banged him up. They did what? They locked him up. So I don't know what time he'll be back. Yeah. No! No, we're too far over to left. We're on the wrong path. Well, we should be over there by yon trees. See, are you not listening? We should be over there by yon trees. Right, hang on a minute. Put it down. Put it down. Is that enough? I can't go on. I need a rest. Rest? Rest? We can't be resting. If we're not back by our fate, we'll miss us breakfast. I don't care. Don't care? What kind of an attitude's that? I thought you were the one who was supposed to have leadership qualities. I swear to God I will swing for you before this night's over, Fred. Oh, Curly, please, that's enough. I have no stamina. That's what's wrong with the young folk of the day. I say no stamina. Just think of all that bacon, egg and sausage sizzling in that pan waiting for us when we get back. Please, Uncle Fred. Don't talk about food, please. Hey! What's that you've just put in your gob? What? Come here. What is it? Come well, on. You no. No, it's you lying no. to me. I warned you. Up. Hey, don't no. warn me. Warn him. What no. you got in here? Go, here. Go. Ah, no. Nothing, nothing. No, 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 I'm now doing it. What's this then? Oh, Uncle Fred. I can explain. Don't bother. I needed sustenance. We carried you! It seems like miles. I mean, we carried you because you were part of the team, because we cared about you. I mean, I mean what, what sort of team spirit is that? Well, there's, there's some left. I mean, I mean, you're welcome to it. No, thank you. I'd rather starve. I'll have it. Give it here. Right, now, each of you, take a piece. We're going to need all the strength we can get if we're going to carry him back to base, aren't we? Back to base? Are you suggesting that we drag this sack of spuds back to base after what he's done? Well, Curly, yes, I am. And if you've got a problem with it, then fine. Anyone else? Well, I don't deserve it. 
Look, we've still got a way to go, but if we take it steady and we take plenty of rest, we'll get him back at the lodge before breakfast. So I say we go for it, OK? Spoken like a true leader, spoken like a veritable true... Oh, Sorry. Hey! Right, come, come on. on. Right. Come on. Right. Hey! Morning, Rita. Good morning, Blanche. Hi, uh, hello, love. You're still struggling on, as long as people need their papers and their fags. Oh, you don't want to wear yourself out, you know. You could do with some help. I know. I don't suppose Ken would fancy doing a few hours for me. I'm sure he would, but he's away on a course at the moment. Are you looking for somebody, then, Rita? Well, it's a bit too much for me on my own, Blanche. I could always give you a hand. Well, that's very kind of you, Blanche, but I wouldn't even think of presuming on your good nature. I'm not offering to do it for now. Mom! Now, listen, a job's a job. We all need to make a bit of extra cash. Hey, well, I'm willing to pay. I don't want out for free. I don't think she's serious, Rita. Are you saying I'm not up to it? No, no, nothing like that. Well, it'd only be for a few days, until I can get somebody permanent. A few days would do for me. When shall I start? Well, Monday morning, if you're serious. I'm serious, all right. Monday it is. Look, uh, make it as quick as you can, will you? What? Bourbon. Name's Bourbon. OK, bye. What are you doing? Well, I'm ringing a cab, aren't I? Got to get the police station, pick my car up, then I've got a bit of business in Berry before I go to court. Will they let you drive? I haven't been found guilty yet. Do you want some breakfast? Nah, I haven't got time. Dad? You OK? Yeah, I'm OK. What time do you get back? Oh, about uh, four o'clock. So? What happened? They charged him. He's due in court at 12. Today? Mm. I'll go with you. No, no, no. Look, uh, I've got to see this bloke in Berry. Then uh, I'll go straight from there to the court. You wouldn't even let me go with him, Mark. Look, don't worry. It's the best way. I'll see you both in the Rovers at, uh, what, half one, two-ish? All right? Oh, and uh, have a drink waiting, OK? So it's a nice, cosy foursome, is it? Yeah, cos Martin and Danny get on really well, don't they? Oh, he's a lovely bloke, Danny. But Martin's a lovely bloke. No, do you know, you are a very lucky couple, you two. Yeah, I suppose we are. Right, well, I'll see you tonight about eight, then. Right. Brilliant. See you later. Bye, Audrey. Bye, sweetheart. You see, you see, the plan would be to have all these different activities in, in, in different areas. Mm -hmm. We split the street into different zones on, on the big night. What if it rains? Remember, it'll be the middle of winter. Well, maybe we could hire a marquee. Now, now, that is a very good idea. To cost a fortune. We mustn't dismiss an idea until we discover how feasible it is, Gail. Be cheaper to get a bit of tarpaulin. Do you know how much it'd cost to hire a marquee? Do you? At least three grand. Well, we just have to raise the money, won't we? Oh, good luck. <laughs> You're going to need this. <laughs> three thousand pounds? Why? It's impossible. We'll never raise three thousand pounds. OK. You all got back for your breakfast. Some of you even managed to grab a few hours' kip into the bargain. So it's time to reflect on the night's events. And as usual, we'll be noting your comments. So feel free to tell us anything of importance. You can speak openly and without restraint. Now, there's one thing I'd like to mention before we start, and that is the Weatherfield team's performance. Now, they had real problems up there last night, but they showed true grit and resource. They turned what might have been a disaster into a success, thanks to what must have been excellent cooperation, teamwork, and some very fine leadership. So well done. There we are. Two seventy-five, love. Please. Great, thanks, Rita. So you're managing all right, so far. Blanche is coming in tomorrow for a few days. Blanche Hunt, Deirdre's mum. Well, I think she finds herself at a bit of a loose end. And she's honest and hard-working. Well, you can't ask more than that, can you? No. 
Hiya, Mark. Hey, you've not seen your dad, have you? He's in Bury. Bury? Mm. Oh. He was supposed to be dropping last month's VAT figures off to me. I was going to go over him at the weekend. Yeah, well, he's been a bit busy. Hi, uh, Deirdre. Hiya, love. Hey, he could have rung me. Not really. He spent last night in Weatherfield, Nick. Oh. I'm sure he'll tell you himself. Drunk driving. Him and Linda got stopped on the way home and he tested positive. Has he been charged? He'll be in court about now. So let's get this quite clear. You're saying that Mr. Watts wanted to leave you on the moor before you had your accident. Correct. Our progress was being severely restricted by Mr. Elliot's very slow pace. I mean, I didn't mean to leave him out there. No. I meant for us to, to carry on and then for Fred to follow at his own pace. That's not what you said. No, it's not. I was proved right, though, wasn't I? He showed his true colours in the end, didn't he? How do you mean? Nothing. He doesn't mean anything. Well, I mean, we got back. I mean, that's what's important, isn't it? No thanks to him. I say no thanks to him. We only got back because that young lady there showed the true spirit of natural leadership. Only because she wouldn't leave you there. Mr Sy, would you like to add anything to this? No, only that we worked as a team. We carried him for miles and miles, despite the fact that he scoffed a whole bar of chocolate in secret without offering it to anyone else. Oh, you may laugh now, but it wasn't funny when we were up there. But you were in favour of leaving, Mr Elliot. Uh, chocolate bar or no chocolate bar? I thought it was the right decision given the circumstances. I see. Oh, do you? Do you? I mean, whose fault was it that he was out there in the first place? Yours! Sending an old man, unfit, out there into the cold and dark. Hey! I take exception to that. I didn't force anyone to do anything. You could have objected at any time on the journey. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then you can make your little comments on your notebook. And I didn't choose the team, Mr Watts. You are the branch manager. If your team was unsuitable, that is your responsibility. Oh, I see. So it's all my fault again now, is it? Besides, it must have been a group decision to allow Mr Elliot to go on night manoeuvres. No, it wasn't. Curly forced him into it. Hang on a minute, Ashley. We've all got to take some of the blame for that. Jock's right. We should have seen that Fred couldn't hack it and said something straight away. Besides, we can't blame Curly for everything, can we? <laughs> So, where did you say Baldwin were? Borre. Oh, on business, is it? Yeah. It's all going, isn't it? Well, it's better than being bored. So, where did your night go, then? Oh, it was great. Smashing do. Oh, your new dress. Went down well with coppers, did it? What do you mean? Well, you know, when they took you down police station. Did they say it were nice when they looked, or were they too busy breathalyzing your boyfriend? Who told you? Oh, I keep my ears open, I do. So is he still down Nick now, then, or what? No. He's in court. Baldwin's in court? Yes, love. Seems like life in the fast lane is finally over for a bit, doesn't it? <laughs> there you go. I've left it outside the garage. What's you doing business with you? Had a right bargain there, you know. I hope you're right. See ya. So how much, then? Enough. Jammy. Jammy? What's the packet on that deal? I'd have come out of it smelling of roses, mate. Hey, yeah, but you're out with the red, aren't you? I still love the shopper grand. What am I gonna do? Here's your initiative, mate. No answer. He must have it switched off. I knew I should have gone with him. Well, it's early yet. Just hope he's all right. You can get prison for drink driving, can't you? I don't know. I'm not sure. Mike? Guess the lives got to me. Yeah. Where have you been? Trying to get a cab. But I thought you went to fetch a car. I did. I came home by cab. They did you. Yep, here's Ben. 500 quid fine. <gasps> what? Look, I could do with that drink if you don't mind. Sure. Was it horrible? It was humiliating. I thought they'd sent you to prison. Still, you're here now and you're free. That's all that matters. Yeah, well, it's a disaster, whichever way you look at it. Come on through. <laughs> Give us your coat. Lovely. Thank well, you. I only got them because I like them. <laughs> Beer, Danny. Yeah, that'd be great, yeah. Where's Martin? Uh, not back from work yet. Anything to get out of the cooking, eh? <laughs> It'll not be long. I'll get you the beer. Sally? Um, I'll have a glass of white wine, girl, please. All right, well, make yourselves at home and I'll be with you in a minute. 
So, any potential captains of industry, Jock? Mm, a few. Uh, Harry Greaves from uh, Burnley, Thompson from Wigan. Uh, the young Weatherfield girl, she did well. Oh, need to decide. Sorted out a pretty sad set of misfits. In fact, I was surprised when they arrived. I mean, these, uh, these weekends don't come cheap. You're telling me? I like to try and give value, but it's hard when the raw material's mostly past it. Well, I'll be having a word with our Mr. Watts, don't worry. Mm, hardly a man of vision, is he? No. But then I suppose we have him to thank for at least one success. Mm. Excuse me. Yeah. Mr. Sai. I believe we've met before. The manor? I'm James Kitching, by the way. Nice to meet you again. I've been hearing good things about you. Really? John McCall was just singing your praises. Very impressed by your handling of what could have been a tricky situation. It wasn't just me. It was a team effort. Well, according to him, you're a born leader. And that's what these courses are all about. Finding talent. Mm. That was delicious. Mm, it really was, Gail. <laughs> Glad you liked it. Coffee? Uh, whenever you're ready. Hi, folks. Look, I'm sorry I'm late. It's been a crisis in casualty. Big road accident. Couldn't get away. Didn't you tell them you had visitors? Well, there were seven people with multiple injuries, Gail. Didn't really have a choice. Are they all right? Oh, well, there's two people in intensive care. Well, in a day's work, you know. You could have phoned, Martin. No, I couldn't. Anyway, you could have phoned. I'd have told you what was going on. I did. They said you were off duty. Oh, did they? Oh, it was chaos for a bit, I suppose. I was worried, Martin. Yes. Well, I'm back now. And I could really use a drink. <laughs> Here, mate, have a glass of this. Oh, cheers. Look, I'm really sorry I missed everything. It's not a problem. Just relax and enjoy your drink. He deserves it, doesn't he, Gail? Oh. What's that now? 1911 for me. My serve. <sighs> right. You're not really with this, Curly, are you? Well, it's hardly been a raging success, has it, as far as I'm concerned? No, I suppose not. There's no point in getting upset about it. The whole object of the exercise is to evaluate what's happened. 2011. I was singled out, you know. Well, that's one of the drawbacks of leadership, isn't it? You have to take the plaudits with the criticisms. I told him not to come. I begged him not to come. Game. Ashley, fetch us another cup of tea. There is a good lad. Get it yourself. Now, see, that's no way to speak to your father. You really let me down with that chocolate bar, Uncle Fred. Yeah. Hi. So, what did James Kitchen have to say then? He didn't tell you how our team were getting on by any chance, did he? No, not really. Um, it's just making small talk, you know. So who is he then? Evelyn Hunter Rochford's nephew. So who's he when he's on there? Only Fresco's area director, that's all. Oh. Oh. What was I supposed to do? Say, oh, I'm sorry, everybody, I've got a dinner party. I'll leave you lots of bleed to death. <laughs> At least you could have made an effort when you did get here. Yeah, well, I've been working, Gail. Yes. I was tired. And I've been working, Martin. I'm working to entertain Sally and Danny for two hours on my own. And then having to pretend I was perfectly happy when you finally did get home and just... Sat there drinking. Oh, so that's what you were doing, was it? Pretending to be happy? I thought you got indigestion. Morning. Hey, love, you right. Morning, Sarah Lou. Um, hope you're gonna have some breakfast before you do your paper round. I'll be late. Yeah. I'll have a banana or something. Anyway, I assume there are other nurses. I assume it's not just you stopping people bleeding to death. Well, what was this? An accident last night which produced seven casualties, Gail, which meant that we needed everybody. So I'm sorry, but if you're lucky for me to apologise for doing that, and not dashing back here for a chat with Sally and Danny, you've got a fairly long wait on your hands. 
I suppose you think I'll let you down? No. No, I don't. I just think the whole thing's been ridiculous. Only I don't suppose I'm allowed to say that, am I? You say so if you want to, Alma. I wish I was brave enough to do so. Why don't we all just get up, walk out and go home? Well, for me, I would probably get the sack. But don't let that stop you doing it. Well, you're the one with the motor. Well, I'm not walking. You'd have to carry me again. You can forget that. So it's plan B, is it? Stick it out for one more day. And then vow never to do it again. I've vowed that already. Morning, campers. Oh. Hmm. It's a beautiful day out there. A bit cold, but it's all right if you keep moving. What have you been doing outside? I've been for a jog, Fred. Only a couple of miles just to get the blood circulating. Very commendable. Thank you. What are we doing today? Does anybody know? Mm. Um, well, I'm told it's lots of things, but I do know that one of them, for definite, is abseiling. Is that when they push off a cliff on the end of a piece of rope? That's basically it. Well, don't look at me. If I go to the edge of a cliff, it'll be to admire the view, not so they can shove me off it. Yep, mind you push them papers right through. We don't want any left sticking out of letterboxes. You've never come to start already, have you? I certainly have. Coats go in the back, do they? But I never meant for you to be coming in this early. I was up anyway. We are at our age, aren't we? So, you just tell me what's what and you can leave me to it. Well, I won't be doing that. Really, all I want from you is to cover for me for the odd hour while I go for my lunch or to the warehouse. Well, now I'm here, you can go for a bit of breakfast. Oh, not a cigarette in the house, can you believe? Rita, you better give me two packets. Six, eight, till love. Ta, love. Thank you. There were a, never a cigarette in my house, either. They put you in an early grave, them things will, you know. Thanks. I'll remember. They make your hair smell. And your breath. There's nobody will go near you. 3.20. Cheers, Rita. I don't suppose there's many go near you, is there? Whether you smoke or not. You know, I've always had the attitude that we're, we're not here to dispense advice. Just sell them whatever it is they want, as long as it's legal. Oh, and you're right. Such as her and never listen anyway. No, what I mean is, it's best not to say anything. Cos we'd be wasting our breath. Mm. I agree entirely. Don't worry. You and me, I think we're going to be like-minded on most things. Twelve months ain't that bad. And we can just get taxis, can't we? Oh, yeah. And how much is that gonna cost? We can charge them to the firm. And you can drink what you like, when you like. Although I don't know why I'm bothering to say that, cos you do any road. Hmm. Yeah, I know. You're supposed to be working for me, right? So why don't I just extend the insurance so you can drive the car? Bingo! The job's a good one. I've got a living driver. Oh, come on. Why should he want to do that? Why? Because he's getting paid. That's why. OK, so if we go out for a meal or something, or you go out like you are doing tonight to your golf do... Yeah. Well, then Mark has to drive us, does he? And then what? He'll sit at the table with us? Or wait outside for three hours till we're ready to go home. No way. No way for me, either. No, no, no. Something like that, I'll get a cab. But in the daytime, on business, you drive me. Then something like tonight, well, uh, you drive me there, and then for the rest of the night, uh... Oi! Hey! You listening? No. He has the car for himself. Honest? <laughs> I thought you'd like that bit. Yeah, why not? He drives me in the day, and then at night he pretends the car's his. Use it to impress the ladies. <laughs> I don't have to wear one of them caps, though, do I? No, but, uh, well, you could smarten yourself up a bit. And for God's sake, get yourself a haircut. Uh, yeah. OK, then. Good. I'll sort the insurance out when we get in. So that's the uh, programme for today. Now, I want you to enjoy it, but remember, you are still being assessed, both in terms of your own individual commitment and how you relate to your colleagues and work as a team. Well, I'm not working without me. I'm stopping here. That's not my problem. Speak to your team leader. He's already spoken to me, and I agree with him. We all do. Mm, fine. Mr Kitching, do you have anything you want to say? Just that I'm very impressed with your commitment so far. 
And I'm sure today is going to be no exception. Good luck, everybody. Meet outside in seven minutes. I do not like that man. I envy you, Fred. Well, they can't stop me, can they? Huh? Uh, I own my bit. Any road. Our Ashley here will be upholding the honour of Elliot's provisions and meats, won't you? Oh, I'm not absolutely. They're worse than flammable lats. Oh, don't worry, Ashley. We'll go down together. All right, come on. Have fun. Ah, ah, ah. All right. Hi. Hi. I must say, you have my sympathy. Why? Being part of a team like that. <laughs> Don't worry, we shan't let it reflect upon you. I... Oh, why, yes, I'd forgotten you were starting today. Here at the crack of dawn. Never mind me. What are you doing absconding from your work? I'm not absconding. I've just come out to buy some tissues. Yes. Thanks, Rita. Sixty, love, thank you. I'm glad I'm not your employer. You can understand why she's never got on, can't you? Half an hour till her dinner time, and she's leaving her work to buy tissues. That's right. Just keep your hands where we can see them, and then there'll be no misunderstandings. Yes, you. We've got our eyes on you. What was he doing? Oh, we don't want to wait to find out, do we? Be too late, then. I think he might have been going to buy something. Right. Ah, uh, I'll see you then, Rita. Yes. Yes, I'd better get back before they sack me. Ah, you better had. Now, look. You know you can take your dinner time whenever you like, and for as long as you like. I'll be all right, left in charge. Well, I, I don't think I'll go just yet, Blanche. No, but whenever you feel like it. Yeah. That's uh, 260. There you yes. Go. Bit cheaper than the one I had over the weekend. How much is that then? 500 quid. You what? So that'll clip your wings a bit, won't it? Can't go to fancy restaurants if you've no car. There are such things as taxis, you know. I know. I've seen them going past. Oh, I know. I know. Although, I will say this for him. He didn't have that much to drink. He was very unlucky. I was with him. You mean you were drunk as well? There were nobody drunk. This is what he needs. What is that? Here you are, Mr Baldwin. Present for you. Oh, yeah? It's a bus timetable. You can keep it if you want. I've got a spare. Only I thought you might be needing one now, won't you? Car's ready, boss. Hey. Oh, uh, well, you did say one o'clock. Yeah. Give me a second, will you? All right. Hiya. Can I get you anything? No, I can't. I'm driving my dad about. I'll drive you about tonight if you fancy going out. Only, you know, he's lost his license. Well, I've taken over his car. Are you serious? If you are. Right. What time? There you love. One pound sixty. Oh, thank you. And can I have a ham sandwich, please? Of course you can. It won't be long in coming, will it? Only, I don't know whether I've been wise. I've left Blanche in charge of the shop. Oh, I better run then, Ada. Please. <laughs> Otherwise, I don't know what I'm going back to. <laughs> we need an awning to cover the street. Yeah. Catering, lighting. It's all going to add up to thousands of pounds, which we haven't got. And quite honestly, I can't see we ever will do. Hello, Martin. Hi, right. Hi. Hi. Look, you know when I said it would be a long time before I apologise? Well, actually it's about four hours. Because I am. I'm sorry. We shouldn't have invited him on a day we Oh, no, normally it would have been OK, but... Well, I just couldn't get away, Gail. I just couldn't. I know you couldn't. It's Look, just out. Look, I'm off today, so why don't we just go out for a drink tonight, eh? Just you and me. And I mean the other thing. Yeah. Well, I don't like asking people for money. I, ne I never have done. I mean, if I'd have thought I'd had to, I, I wouldn't have got involved. No, I I've, I've a good mind. I've a good mind to cancel the whole thing. The millennium? Yes. Well, I'm not the millennium itself. I should think you'd need government approval. I don't mean cancel the millennium! What, what I mean is, is, is cancel everything we've got planned for around here. I, and I've a good mind to do it today. <laughs> Oh, 
woman came, paid her paper bill. Ah, uh, put it in the book? Uh, I did. Uh, which is when I couldn't help noticing. You've got a lot of slow payers, haven't you? Slow, but sure. So what I've done, I've made a list. I think we should drop them a letter telling them that if they haven't paid by the end of the week, they can get their papers somewhere else. Uh, uh, well, no, hang on a minute. What? Uh, well, I'm grateful to you, Blanche, for all your help. Really, I am. But stuff like this, you've got to let me decide. Really, all I want you to do is serve as and when necessary. Oh, don't worry. I'm not trying to tell you how to run your own business. Thank you. But you haven't the time to see to everything, so some things you've had to let go. But not any longer. Not while I'm here. So, I'll see you tomorrow, then. Yes. We'll get there. Don't worry. Well, I don't think we should give up yet. I just didn't think we'd need to raise this sort of money. Why don't you ask the people with businesses on the street? Like Mike Baldwin. Well, Mr Baldwin isn't as black as he's sometimes painted. Can't be. <laughs> Even so. Anyway, I wasn't thinking of him. I was thinking of the shop and the cabin and the hair salon. You could ask me, ma'am. I think she's rather against the whole thing. But, yes, I think we should give it a try before we start talking about giving up. Do you know what the real trouble is? The real trouble is I'm not the right person to be doing this. The minute something goes wrong, I'm hopeless, always have been. No, no, I, I think I should give it up. Yes, you are the right person. And no, you mustn't even consider giving up. I mean, remember, you don't have to do all this on your own. There's me, and there's, um... Les Battersby? Well, yes. Now, have you all enjoyed yourselves? Yes. yes! I know I have. I've not set foot outside. Now, this weekend has not been about winners and losers. Hopefully you are all winners. I don't think that includes us, somehow. But all the same, we do have a couple of awards we'd like to give out. Jock. Well, top team of the weekend for showing motivation, coordination and commitment is the Burnley team. Yeah. Team of the weekend. Refusing to obey orders. And keeping a sense of proportion. The Weatherfield team. Right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shut up, I'm getting more. I don't care. I'm the mob happy. Yeah, I think we all are. I'm starving as well. You know, for a company that owns umpteen supermarkets, they haven't a clue about good food. I say, not a notion. And the second award is for individual effort and achievement. Because, all right, teamwork's what it's all about. It's what Fresh Co's success is built upon. But we're also always on the lookout for the individual who might make all the difference. The one who stands out from the crowd. So this weekend's individual award goes to... Nita Desai from Weatherford. <laughs> Let's go to the manor for a drink. I'll meet you in my car in ten minutes. OK. Well done, Nita. Thank you. You've Everybody. saved Weatherfield's honour. Not only for your time and energy, but also for your pain and suffering on this Forward with Freshco's weekend. So what was he saying to you while I was gazing into your eyes and talking your hands out? Just congratulations. Well, it didn't sound like congratulations to me. What's been having a drink with him in the manor? Well, I hope you think yes. <laughs> so, thank you. Don't have to come in with me. Don't worry, I'm not going to stay with you. Oh, OK. And thanks for the lift. Pleasure. Hiya. Hiya. Oh, hiya. Get when you drink. I'm going to. Uh, pint, is it? Yeah. Don't see you in here very often of a night. No. Mike's gone to this golf do, so Mike dropped in there and gave me a lift in. Betty said she's going to cover for me, so soon she gets here, we can go. Great. Well, would you mind if I waited outside in the car? I mean, I feel a bit conspicuous to there. No, what you really mean is that you don't want people to see us together. Well... It's all right. I don't want people talking either. Where are you back? Just around the corner. Right. Hello. Oh, hello, <laughs> Emily. <laughs> can I get anybody a drink? Um, no, we're, we're all right, thanks. <laughs> did, did, did you manage to get to the corner shop? Yes, and they were very obliging. They said they'd be more than happy to, uh, well, anyway, to think about giving us some money. Oh, well, that's good, then. 
think about him and his son money. I don't call that commitment. All right, at least it's a start. You've got to start looking on the bright side. I don't see why. I never have. Well, congratulations on your well-deserved award. Well, thank you for giving it to me. Hmm. <laughs> Honey, I have to ask, why are the rest of your team such a bunch of no-hopers? <laughs> I mean, they're the biggest collection of misfits we've ever had. Oh, they're very nice, really. It's just not their sort of thing, that's all. Hmm. Well, forget about them. Tell me about you. Well, I can hardly tell you about my job, can I? You know more about it than I do. And are you happy in it? Yes, for now I am. Ambitious? Oh, yes. Ruthless. Well, um... No, you're far too nice for that. <laughs> so, intelligent, ambitious, and beautiful. I have a feeling you're going to go a long way. Thank you. Better, I owe you one. Yeah, well, just take care of yourself. Yeah, well, see ya. See ya. You know, she's a nice girl, really. She just tried to burn the candle at both ends, which you just can't do. She's like all of us. Nice when we get in our own way. Yeah. Yep. Same again, please, and one for less. All right. So, uh, is Mike like he's driving now, then? Not my idea, but Mike seems to think it'll work. Yeah, and whatever he thinks, has to go. Well, it's what he's used to, isn't it? At home, at work, it's always been boss, hasn't it? Well, I don't mind asking people for money. Well, I, I think it might be best left to Roy. Why? I thought he didn't want to. Well, well if, if, if I have to, I'll... Well, perhaps if two or three of us went together. Yes, 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 that might be best. Well, what you want me to do, just say. I've no qualms about holding my hands out. These shops only have it because they've taken it from us in the first place. Excuse me. Have you got any money for us, Betty? Look, we're collecting for the Millennium Dew. Yes, but not from individuals. Why not? She must have plenty. Oh, yes, I'll give it gladly. You know what for? What? Guaranteeing you keep it this shut. Oh, charming. What a good idea. What is? You keeping quiet and people sponsoring you for doing it. What can I get you? Got any vodka? I should imagine we've got more or less everything. So, how long before you get the flat as well as the car? I'm not sure how long I'll be staying. I'm only here till I decide what it is I really want. Vodka, yeah. Large one. We shouldn't stay too long. They'll both be back sometime. So, so we had a drink. And? And, um, talked about this and that. And uh, did he make a pass? Oh, wow. Well. well, I'm sorry to go straight to the point, but I'm never going to get there if I don't die. Yeah. Um, well, not as such, no. But, uh, but he was interested. I think so. Great <laughs> design. You are a fast cat, and no mistake. I mean, here are the rest of us just trying to get through in one piece, and there are you copping off with Mr. High and Mighty, who owns the whole shooting match. He doesn't own it, does he? It's his uncle. Oh, it's a pity he wasn't here. It might have been my type. <laughs> <laughs> well, I really think you deserve that medal. What was it for? Most promising newcomer? No individual effort. Wow. I think you deserve it in more ways than one. <laughs> <laughs> there we are. That's just three pounds. Well, thanks, Betty. Thank you. Shall we sit down? And are you serious? Well, we hope so. He said he'd do anything to his money. Yeah, but come on. No one's going to sponsor me just for not saying out. Uh, I will. What's it going to be? So much an hour? How many hours is that? That's what I want to know. Fifty. Fifty? You can go and chase yourself. Uh, shall we say ten? Then you could start at dinner time and you'd be finished in time for last orders. Yeah, ten hours. Yeah, but hang on, hang on. I've not said I'll do it yet. No, we're saying it for you. And you did say you'd do anything to help. Yeah, yes. You're yes. not chickening out. All right, go on then. Yay! Yay! <laughs> see you later. Oh, I'll see you later, love. Well, now we need some sponsorship forms and to decide when all this is going to happen. Yeah, and somebody to keep an eye on him. Yeah. <laughs> They're getting all excited about. I think it's something to do with the Millennium. I heard Roy talking to Emily. Yeah, I suppose we'd better decide what we're going to be doing. Ooh, nothing special, just joining the party. Yeah. 
Yeah. Should be something to look forward to. Who is it? Me. What's going on? Uh, just a minute. Uh, Dad's not with you, is he? No. Who have you got in there with you? Hiya. Hello. Nice flat. I'm glad you think so. Look, uh, we're just leaving. Yeah, and Mark, next bit of stuff you pick up, find somewhere else to take her. <laughs> of course. This is where his dad brings you in, Tit. I can see you don't want the competition. Get out. When I'm ready. Look, uh, don't tell Dad, will you? Please? I don't know. I might have to. <laughs>